All right, here we go on a Wednesday. It's Cody and Gold, Alex Gold, Cody Tap, Drew Nixon with you. Make it five in a row. Going for six tonight. Royals stay hot with the win against the Astros. We'll be talking Royals baseball throughout the show today. Our guy Josh Vernier is going to join us coming up at 1230 today as he does at each and every Wednesday. You know what's great about last night and really the five-game winning streak is with the exception of maybe like one or two players, you can go through all five wins in a row and definitely all seven on the season. And my contribution from every single player, you really, I mean, you really can. And last night, let's start with Cole Reagan's look. He clearly didn't have his best stuff. It nope. wasn't dominant. Cole Reagan's gave but, him like 10 hits. He kind of got but, slapped around a little bit, but he found a way to still find a way into the fifth inning to still find out uh, how to get five strikeouts and keep his team in the game. And that's why ultimately the walk-off was still possible. Didn't let it get out of hand. Didn't get uh, ran out in the third inning. And all of a sudden it's a really long bullpen game. No, he still, still got you to where you needed to be, kept you in the game. That's why you were able to have the walk-off ultimately from Salvador Perez last night. So five in a row, man, let's just keep this thing. It's been a long time since we could say the Royals won five in a row. I think they did last August. Yeah, but in August, nobody was paying attention. Um, Yeah. And that was still a long time ago, you know? It's supposed to count as, like, you have to (laughs) remember them actually doing it. Yeah, can you tell me exactly what was going on when they won five in a row last year? I don't know. They were 40 games under 500, and then they won seven in a row or whatever. And that's the point. Yes. August and April are different times, especially considering the difference. Last night was just one of those, like, this is back-to-back games where, and I was texting a, a little bit with, Um, some people last night about it. And I think that this is what stands out about it. It's not just like a random April win. It's showing actual fight and skill. So yeah, Cole Reagan's your ace of the staff. Didn't have it. Like you said, gave up 10 hits, but only gave up three runs. Then the bullpen came out and tossed five scoreless. So the bullpen came through. Okay. But you're down three, nothing. The office was quiet for five innings. Can you get a little something going? Okay, Bobby Witt's going to absolutely destroy a ball on a triple. He's going to come around to score because the Astros made one little mistake, opened the door. And then when the moment mattered, Astros couldn't get a run across in the 10th, and Salvador Perez massacred a ball to the left field gap. So it just felt like they have more fight. They, it's, a, it's a good team. I think they have talent. I don't think that they're just playing well now. I am starting to think, This is a talented team who has a chance to win games that last night. And the last couple of nights is where my like mindset is starting to shift a little bit. Yeah. How can you not be excited about what's ahead for this group for all the reasons that you pointed out? We mentioned the word confidence yesterday, just when we were talking about MJ Melendez, but that is a word you can use for the entire team right now. How can you not be confident when, especially when you have walk-off wins and come from behind wins? Sure. That is a huge confidence builder. I mean, it was the it, entire it, it, 13, 14, yeah, 15 Royals I mean, there, was just like, it didn't matter what the score was. There's going to be so many games this year where late in games, you're down. I mean, that's just baseball. You're, you're plenty yeah. of times you're going to be down and getting a come from behind win this early in the season is massive from a confidence standpoint. And we'll talk more specific about the bullpen. I think, you know, ultimately what we're now seeing after the the first week and kind of a little bit of the freak out with where things are at, everything's stabilized a little bit. And that's a credit to uh, to Matt Quatrero, by the way. And one thing he did over the weekend, I thought, and, and he joined the guys this morning. We'll, we'll uh, talk a little bit more about that later on in, in the show. But go through the moments this season already. And it's only April 10th. And other than... Uh, really Vinny right now, who is still starting off uh, with, with some struggles, you go through everybody else. I almost has come up with a big time play, big time moment, a big time out. MJ has for four, for sure. Salvi has multiple times. He Bobby's the team. been great just throughout. Bobby, yeah, just <laughs> literally the whole time. Multiple starting pitchers. Like when they had those losses in a row and then JJ mentioned Brady Singer coming up mm-hmm. big with a 10 strikeout game to get them the win. They have the fourth best run differential in baseball. It is not a mirage. They are actually winning games. And I think the text line's like, it kind of seems like a team without a major deficiency. Like an a well rounded rounded, balanced team. Not a bad, not a, like, are they the world's best offense? No. Are they good enough? Yeah. Well, they're on pace to win over 100 now. So actually, yes, they're uh, yeah. they're, they're going to win over 100 games now. That's how this works. That'd be the strength behind their pitching. <laughs> but the starting pitching seems really balanced and deep. The, ro- the bullpen seems really balanced and deep. You know, Pete actually sent me a text last night. Pete. Uh, known gambler Pete Sweeney our uh, Chiefs insider over at Arrowhead Pride he sent me a text last night he needed an RBI from Vinny in order to win a parlay 
He came up short on that. But then this is what he told me. He said, look, if your guy, Vinny, is going to struggle in the early part of the season, I need you to make me a promise. <laughs> so, okay, what's that? He's like, I think you need to do a live rendition of Pasquantino to get him out of the slump. Oh. And I was like, I don't, wow. I didn't know if I could do it because like some of the lyrics are in Spanish. And I feel like, can, can I, can I do that? Like, can I, can I do a live version of Pasquantino? I don't know, man. It might be rough. I'm not gonna lie to you. Do you think that that would help Vinny? I'll do it if it'll help Vinny. I, if everyone thinks it'll help Vinny, I'll do a live um, version of Pasquantino. Still too early in the year that we need for us to have, uh, you know, uh, live renditions or any, you know, voodoo stuff to, to try to switch things up. It's still too early uh, for that. I think so. Huh? I think if, if this goes on for another two weeks, then I'm then I'm open to everything. I don't even know if we still have that in the, the, the original song in the system. Let's see. Pasquantino. And look, I told you yesterday, same thing applies. Man just wants to win. He does the, the it, it appears the final song is in here, but I don't think that the unedited version of the song is in here, although I imagine I could get that. So I just just think about it, text line 913-586-7610. If what it requires to give any what if I sing a live rendition, then he hits a homer tonight. Then we'll just know. Things are <laughs> meant to be. We haven't supported him the same way as we had in the past. Came on for the football season, struggled a little bit. Haven't had only had him on one time before the season. Might just have to might have to figure it out. But yeah. outside of Vinny. Yeah, and text we, line, there was immediately a couple no text. Or at least one. Huh? At least one. Yeah, you know what it is, though? The problem is the hate fuels me a little bit. <laughs> the, the hatred, the like, please don't do this, sometime encourages me to do it. I'll, I'll be honest. I think the toughest part would be the, the Spanish part. But quiero sound to bad boy. Que las enseñas a tu ritmo. Tu educación favorita. I'm not totally sure I can sing that again in Spanish live. I mean, I wrote it in Spanish, so I mean, maybe. So you're saying you're not a live performer. I've never done a live rendition That's, of any song on this show, except for the time I gave you a 15-second preview of the George Karloftis song that never aired. Yeah, text line said they just want us to give them a heads up. If you're going to do it live. Oh, okay. So then get a few seconds that, to turn that, the radio that off. That seems like it's terrible for our ratings. Uh, if, if we give well, people a heads only up. Only if they've got a meter. You know, that's probably fine. We don't need to give them a heads up. We'll just go right into it. Okay. I think we're a couple weeks away before we need to worry about doing anything special. It's still April 10th. If this thing drags out to the end of the month, then, then all of a sudden we got to switch some things up. But we're, we're not there yet in my I'm mind. I'm not guaranteeing I won't try to sing it live later now that the text line really <laughs> doesn't want it. But... Yeah, it does seem a little rushed because the bullpen is a part of that, too, which we're going to get to in a minute. That's why you don't rush a lot of these baseball type decisions where it just doesn't feel that way. I thought I'll be honest. I like when a starter like I, I don't know why sometimes it's more encouraging than the dominant ones. I like when a starter just straight up doesn't have it like they're just bad that day. Cole Reagans was not good. He was wild. He was in the middle of the zone. He wasn't getting the strikeouts we're used to. He was giving up he's runners on base the entire damn night. But when he handed the, the keys over, it wasn't a disaster. It wasn't nine, nothing or 12, nothing. Vin Mazar, right. I mean, it could have gone a million different ways when you just don't have it. They just stayed close enough to That's show what really some good fight. pitchers do though. Like you, even, oh, when, even when you don't have your stuff, you find a way to still give your team, you know, five innings and, and you know, yeah, you're going to give up three, four runs. Let's say in this case, three, uh, it, but you, you don't blow the game. You're, you're not forcing and, and basically taxing your bullpen, not only for that night, but then it impacts the rest of the series. You know, they're they're in a stretch now. I don't think they have an off day for a little bit. Uh, they, they, they play the Astros and they go on the road. I mean, you, you didn't want to put your bullpen for this weekend already in a bad spot or Thursday in yeah. a bad spot, and he didn't do that. And then they just got, as you said, a fantastic backup from, from the bullpen. Plus, I, I know the Astros offensively, haven't been hitting well to start the season. No. But, I mean, you're not Alvarez. The night before, I think he had four or five hits. Last night, he was four for five. I mean, they, they, let's not forget what the Astros lineup is capable of. I know when you play them in April, it probably feels different if you're playing them in July. Sure. My guess is the Astros are still going to be one of the better teams in baseball and have one of the better lineups in baseball by the time uh, things get going. And so it's, it's a really good lineup. And, yeah, today the Royals will go up against a guy making his MLB debut. Maybe that's why you want the Vinny song today because you think that he'll, he'll get the rookie today anyway. Again, might have to be – it's on the table. It's I, not, I think today's a good day for it anyway. He's going up against a guy that hasn't pitched in the majors before. Well, then I want to get ahead of it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> 
I, I can't if I like if I don't do it now, there may never be a chance to do it this season. I'm facing a lot of pressure on the text line saying I cannot let you do it. Don't there's, let him do it, there's, Alex. There's a lot of pressure. But then the person above says my body aches like tigers when we don't <laughs> hear it. So, you know, mixed <laughs> mixed results. Only a text we would get during Masters week. That's only a text yeah. we would get. We'll get to the Masters next hour. It is say his body hurts uh, every day. I feel we, the exact same way, Tiger. We uh, we'll build out our, our betting card. We uh, we did a lot of work on this earlier for the Masters and so uh, we'll we'll get to that a little bit later on as we're just getting started here on a Wednesday edition of Cody and Gold. We know that we're at 15 days away from the NFL draft. Is that right? My goodness. Yeah. 15 days away. And so more and more mock drafts are coming out and more and more of them have the Chiefs taking a corner. Yeah, I figured out why it is, or at least why I think it is. Because a lot of times when you start seeing these mock drafts take corner more and more and more and more, they're under the assumption that like some people have inside information. Maybe the Chiefs are trying to make it seem like they want a corner. After letting go of Legereus Dean, I actually don't think it's as simple as that. I think the reason why is the Chiefs might actually be entertaining it goes back to a conversation we had last year and the way in which this team is built. I like that they brought back a huge chunk of the defensive line. Michael Dana signing became official this morning. Chris Jones got paid a hefty lump sum of cash. But I think the reason why they might entertain corner at 32 is they want to be able to use Trent McDuffie as the guy who locks down wide receiver after wide receiver day after day. And if you're going to do that, then you do need an extra corner to replace the blitzing areas and some of the areas that you forget about when it comes to Trent McDuffie. And I think that they realized that the entire, like as good as their defensive line was last year, their entire defensive identity was tough-nosed corners. It was the foundation of everything they did defensively, and I don't think they want to let it go. I actually think the Chiefs might be considering a corner at 32. Doesn't mean I think they'll take it, but I do think that they might actually be considering it. I don't think it's an accident that a number of important people mock drafts, not, I don't know, some of the silly ones we get on this show occasionally, but people who seem to be in the know are suggesting corner for the Chiefs. I just think how many years can you go without addressing the offense of one of your premium picks? You know, and it's tough. The, the defense was last, the last year. Clyde, I guess. Yeah, first round pick. Yeah, I think that's that. That's right. Obviously, they spent a second round pick on Rasheed Rice, which turned out to be a great pick for the for the Chiefs. But I I, I wonder how many years you're going to go without spending a first round pick on an offensive guy. We talk about making sure you keep Mahomes happy, building around Patrick Mahomes. And as much as I love the Hollywood Brown signing, I think we would all agree the wide receiver room isn't like that much better right now. I mean, <laughs> they, they've, lo- better, they, they've lost yeah. they've lost MVS and they added Hollywood Brown. That's an improvement, sure. But it, it's it's MV- I mean, that's that's the swap. That, that's all they've done. They need to spend certainly one of their top two picks, but that would be or the offensive tackle suggestion that I've been making for a couple of years, which is improving and the that's, offense. That's in an offense. Way. So I, I just, are you going to go defense again at, at pick 32? I, I wouldn't personally, I'd be a little surprised. I mean, at, at pick 32, would I rather have a corner than them taking another defensive lineman at this point? I would, I, I think going for a third straight year, defensive lineman in the first round to me is a little bit too much. Um, if you're going to say, hey, no, they're taking defense at pick 32, I probably would lean more towards corner than actually a defensive in, defensive lineman. Think about how many years you'd be kind of set up on the defense. And look, again, I, I would still, I would take a wide receiver instead. You know where I lean. But I think there's a reason why it keeps coming up in conversation. Because think about the way you would then be built. You would have long-term answers across the defensive line. Chris Jones, Mike Danny, each got multi-year contracts. Felix Anudike Uzama is just in the second year of a four, or depending on you pick up the option, five-year deal on the defensive line. At linebacker, you just gave Tranquil a contract. Presumably, Nick Bolton will get an extension somewhere along the way. So maybe you're not sure on linebacker. But then long-term, you would have McDuffie, that guy, and two other guys with two more years on their deal behind them in Watson and Williams to immediately set up. You're set for years. And I know in the NFL, you don't want to think more than about two, three years in advance. But that would mean you were two or three years in advance across the defense. And then maybe you can spend your free agency dollars or spend your focus on offense and try to go through that cycle a little bit. I think something depends on your confidence. And two guys that unfortunately had some injuries or just didn't play as much. You know, Brian Cook is a safety, but how confident are you him continuing to develop? Uh, and, And then Shamari Connor. It, who they drafted, what, out of South Carolina, I think it was, last year. Yeah, sounds right. And, and so that, that to me, would also dictate, like, if all of a sudden they – the same thing you and I go back and forth on about Felix. Like, if you spend your first-round pick, in my opinion, on uh, a defensive end or you spend your first-round pick this year, even on corner to a certain extent, it tells me a lot about how you feel about the young guys coming up and, and your belief in them. 
you know, the same way, if, if they do spend pick 32 on an edge rusher, then that does tell me a ton about how they feel about Felix. If they spend sure. a first round pick on a corner, it does tell me a little bit of how they're feeling about Williams and uh, Jalen Watson. Watson, big time. Because if you draft one guy's coming off a sh- shoulder surgery, although he played great the entire or played pretty well, played the whole the, year with the yeah. torn labrum. Think yeah. about that. That's hard to argue. That's nuts. That is crazy. <laughs> but you know, like. Wear and tear, body, yeah, surgery, tech, all that someone stuff. said, yeah, Vod, Vod tech, I think. Look, they college. are in a position, and again, this is why I think corners coming up more. They are in a position that they've, I don't think that they've necessarily been in, at least not frequently been in lately, which is best player available is not off the table for them. And the best player at 32 might be corner. Could be. And, and it can strengthen one unit to make sure that you're not having any guessing games going into a season about it. And there is a certain amount of, I think Mahomes will cover some of your woes like he does. I'm not saying go that way forever. I'm not saying not draft a wide receiver at all. And again, if I were the person making the pick at 32, odds are I'd probably take a wide receiver. Let's be honest. But I'm just telling you, I don't think it's an accident that these keep coming up in this regard because like the best player available stuff, we have to consider that at least real for the same conversation we had yesterday. There's only one glaring weakness, I think, on this team, and that's offensive tackle. And they might not see it as a glaring weakness, depending on what they think they can do with Jawan Taylor this offseason and how high they are on Wanye Morris. I think that the, the thing that, and I've we, we've, we've talked about this before, the game that they're playing, though, I think, by not addressing offense at the wide receiver position is you're playing the game that the Packers were. The thing about the Packers is they weren't winning Super Bowls. The Chiefs were. So if, if they... Like, if the Chiefs yeah. don't win the Super Bowl last year, the conversation is they have to take a wide receiver sure. this year. There is no excuse to not. And then if they didn't again, then it's the organization's turning into the Packers conversation where they need to help out Patrick Mahomes because he he can't, as good as he is, he can't do it by himself. Where now you can couple it with, they just won the Super Bowl, give him the wide receiver help, and then trust that you can get a corner in the second or third but round, or just that you have the development with Spags. You're also, but he's not wrong. Like, the... It is 100% the conversation. Like, no doubt, no questions if they lose. You'd be like, you're not going to help out your guy? You're not going to do this for your boy? And you'd be like, he's won back-to-back Super Bowls. They haven't been hurting him all that bad. Yeah, that, they, that's, you know? that's the difference with the Packers. It's just that the, they haven't won. Mahomes yeah. already has three of them. Rodgers only ended up getting the one, right, yeah. With, yeah. With, with Green Bay, and that's the difference. But otherwise, I agree with you because we know we, we were all sitting right here in October, in November, and ev- every text we got, heck, I think we probably said it as well, like, oh, yeah, of course they have to. Of course they're drafting a wide receiver next year. Of course they have to. And then they started winning some more games. They, they, the offense looked a little bit better. Uh, and Rasheed Rice, let's not kid ourselves, also started playing even better, got more playing time. And now I think people are willing to waver a little bit. I'm like, well, do they have to? Before it was like, you're a complete idiot if you don't. Now it's yeah. like, I can I can see a couple I other I can options. hear your argument on the and other that side. Is definitely, to your point, Drew, what happens when you win a Super Bowl. And also... What happens when Rasheed Rice uh, ends up playing at an even higher level as the yeah. season went on compared to October? Well, I think that's why people are encouraged for them. To, if they can to just take the tackle to provide that competition, the draft class is deep enough at wide receiver where you you can take guys in the second, third round to build up the room a little bit. And maybe you hit again on the second round pick like Rasheed Rice. And maybe he's not your number one, but he can provide yeah. a number three spot that is much better than what you currently have or better than a lot better than what you had last year which right. is different reminder with the uh, nfl draft first round coming up on thursday april 25th we'll have our 610 sports radio nfl draft party at the landing in liberty it's brought to you by hy V, the proud official grocery sponsor of the kansas city chiefs so we'll all be up there bank and chris will and the uh, character concerns crew will be doing their show live uh we'll also give you a chance to win 610 dollars plus autographed Chiefs merchandise. You just got to fill out how you think the first round of the draft is going. There's a form up on the 610sports.com website and uh, just pick how you think the first round's going. You get more points if you get the team and the player right. Then drop off the form on Thursday night. Hang out with us and someone's winning some money. Someone's winning some Chiefs merchandise. So it's going to be a ton of fun. It's coming up in about 15 days. Can't wait. Always a good time out at the landing. We had great time last year. Plus, it's fun to try to see, figure out if you can predict. Same thing we're getting ready to do with the uh, you know the Masters when we announce our betting card for that. Somebody did recommend, Devin over on YouTube says, maybe in addition to the song, if you do that, they'll bring in a bucket of KFC and some rum. We could do Joe Boo. Wakes up, bats. <laughs> just get some rum just to, just to go ahead and get all that voodoo out of the way. I'll, I'll tell you like what, it. if someone will bring in a bucket of KFC for this show and some rum, then, yeah, I'll sing the Pat I Quintino th- song. Again, I, we'll do I, everything to wake up the bats. I think we, during the winning streak, here, here's, here's my take on it. Oh. 
I don't think you want to do that during a winning streak. I'm just saying. You don't want to. Wow. Be- I don't want to mess with Mm-mm. the vibe, huh? Why would you do that? I, I know we want to see Vinny's bat get going here a little bit. Yeah. Uh, one, it's still April 10th. So yeah, I think we got some time. We got some time. And then also, I don't think you want to be bringing in some voodoo hex stuff when the team's won five in a row, man. It's not voodoo hex stuff. It's positive vibes. Oh, yeah, but you, don't mess with the, uh, you know, the. the don't cur- mess with what's currently working? The current rhythm of, of, of mm. baseball, mm. you know? The baseball gods are treating them very well right now. The, it's, uh, you know, the little stitious part of it. I'm not superstitious. I'm just a little stitious. <laughs> yeah. I don't, you know, I don't need to be messing if with all this. If the team was also not performing well, then I would be with you. But they've won five in a row. Let's just let everything play out. This is what maybe this is what's supposed to happen, you know? If they're 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 th- they're three games above five hundred, while their number three hitter is not hitting, let's just let this play out for a little bit. You're saying maybe, the, yeah, you know, but maybe they, you know, he he starts hitting with the rest of them, and then maybe it's, we can keep this sure. thing going. My you know, my guess is that'll happen. My guess is that'll happen. Someone says they'll buy KFC to not hear you sing. I it's like not, that. I, Drew, you like that idea? I think that's good. For every actually, watch, like, you don't have to hear me yeah, sing. Yeah, like, yeah. It'd good? be the first ever live version of a song in this show's history. Yeah. We'll ask Vern. We'll get Vern. Before before anything happens, we'll ask Vern at 1230 what he thinks. What he thinks I should do? If he thinks it's okay. too early for that or if we need to hold off. Someone also uh, watched it on the stream pointing out we are the blue man group today. I, we did not coordinate this. We are all wearing blue. Well, you know, I would take my jacket off, but I'm also wearing blue under that. So I'm yeah. wearing blue underneath. Whatever the reason, it's, well. it's, what the hell? Why do we Royals, all wear Royals? The, the Royal, the town, paint the town blue, man. Royals. Hmm, interesting. It's already Royals fever already. It's April 10th. It's fired up. <laughs> That's what it is. How, how, was, uh, how was dancing last night, by the way? Weren't you supposed to start dancing? Yeah, so we had a 50-minute um, rehearsal. 50 minutes for the, for the dad dance yeah, last night. Um, there were like six of us there with oh, more coming six. next week, more coming next week. You know, people have schedules. Sometimes they can't make every rehearsal. So yeah, there were six of us last night. I'll be honest, man. I, I didn't do great. I might have to practice in the run up to it. There's a couple of parts that keep getting me. Are you age wise? What are we talking like? They're all dads. So, but what's the, I'm on you, the younger end. Okay. Like, I'm not the youngest, and here's the problem. Next week, they're adding more choreography. Because That's usually how it builds up. There's, <laughs> well, I understand. Like, we handled a majority of the strictly us part of the choreography. I am told the older kids who are in, like, the higher levels of the dance classes will have a portion of this song where we're supposed to do other stuff, like do dances with them. So there's, like, a whole other layer of this choreography that involves another human. And I didn't think that I was covering my end mm. great last night. I wasn't the worst. It was I'll the say first that. rehearsal. You got you got five more of these? Should I practice on my own free time? I might have to. But you got what, five I don't more? Want to embarrass. No, two. Oh. Okay. Two more rehearsals, oh, and then we were on a stage, dude. <laughs> two. Two more rehearsals, and I have to and lie. Not all the dads were there. I feel like this is a this is gonna this is, there's gonna be people going in different directions here. I gotta be honest, because I know there's gonna be video of this, and I know eventually you're gonna see this video of that. Yes. And I don't <laughs> I need to make sure that my level of performance is at least adequate all right so let me just first would you like to know the song sure yes classic of course it's this the song we'll be going with it it's raining men <laughs> okay yes so <laughs> all right just an immediate start the moves include me having to do like uh hands on my hips dip down maneuver there's at least one i would declare is a ass waggle situation okay. that involved in this okay so that's that's immediately mm. embarrassing I have to do a spin. The one, honestly, this like step punch move is what's getting this like step arm move. I can't do it. I'm lost. I'm the worst person at it. My, cause you're supposed to like move your leg to the right. Just step, touch, step, touch. Right. You, you, you were dance enough, but you're supposed to move your arm at the same time. I can't do it. Couldn't get it the entire damn time. I am going to have to practice or it's going to be bad. What did, uh, what did your daughter say? Cause she wasn't, she wasn't at the rehearsal. No, right? she wasn't at the rehearsal. Right. She has to watch a video of it this morning, but uh, I haven't, the, the video hadn't been sent to me yet. So I'll have to. Oh, I there's know. video of the rehearsal. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, we, oh, you don't need video of the rehearsal. I you guys can wait for the real thing. I watch feel like, film. We, yeah, we need to break, let, let Bink break down the film of that too. Let Bink break <laughs> down the film of our rehearsal. Yeah. <sighs> Look. So basically it to ra- it's raining men for 90 seconds to two minutes on stage. You guys are twerking. Hey, that's a, a small portion of it, you know? Okay. I would also say there was a, uh, a sassy, like, hand on hip, arm up snap vibe. Mm. So, like, mm. there's there's a few different moves. I mean, I imagine. Honestly, it was more moves than I was anticipating. I'm not going to lie. It well, was, I thought maybe we would just, like, 
I mean, the goal of it is they're, five, they're, six dance moves. They're hoping people will be laughing throughout. Yes. That's my the goal only of job it. is yeah. that people laugh. Yeah, that's what they want. So. I think that's why you're good. This is so. If there was this one, would be less. I would feel this is less pressure because if you're watching it. Everybody know the whole point is like it's supposed to be hilarious. It's not supposed to be, you know what I mean? Yes. It's a but bunch also, of dads up there dancing. But I would also you know? like my dance moves to be somewhat in order and on a scale of 10, 4 out of 10 coordinated. You yeah. know? 5 out of 10 coordinated. Look, the text line's correct. They said, "Guys, we saw your basketball video. We know you guys aren't coordinated." Yeah, that's, that's, fair. that's accurate. That is that is very accurate. That's fair. All right, we'll continue to get updates on that throughout the next couple of weeks. Up next, though, now that we are 11 games in, how are we feeling about this bullpen considering the early panic with the Royals? Hey, it's Brady Singer. You're listening to Cody and Gold. Weekdays starting at 10 on 610 Sports Radio and the Odyssey app. Brought to you by Heartland Men's Health, the leader in men's sexual health. Thousands of men have been successfully treated for low T, ED, and more. All with discretion and compassion. Make your appointment at heartlandmenshealth.com. Hey everyone, it's Ted from Consumer Cellular, the guy in the orange sweater, and this is your wake-up call. If you're paying too much for wireless service, you don't have to keep having that nightmare. Consumer Cellular has the same fast, reliable coverage as the leading carriers for less. And for a limited time, new customers receive their second month free when they sign up and use promo code MONTHFREE by May 31st. So why keep spending more than you have to? Seriously, wake up and call 1-888-FREEDOM or visit ConsumerCellular.com. Taxes, fees, and other third-party charges will apply. See website for additional details. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required price varies based on product and subscription plan hey guys did you know there's a generic form of viagra that works just the same but is 95 percent cheaper and you can get it online go to hymns.com joy through hymns you'll get a free medical consultation discreet shipping if prescribed and the process is 100 percent online to start your free online visit go to hymns.com joy that's hims.com slash joy Hey, Kansas City, it's Brian Pringle with Victory Ford and KCK. Get ready for our hail sale at Victory Ford right here at the Legends in KCK. We're slashing prices on new crew cab 4x4 F-150 starting at just $39,988. That's right, hail savings of thousands of dollars on every vehicle. Visit VictoryFordKC.com to browse through hundreds of new and pre-owned vehicles with hail damage, all discounted thousands of dollars. Remember, at Victory Ford, our first price is better than our last. Victory Ford, where the deals are always legendary. We all hear the radio ads about the IRS. They tell you to be afraid, to be scared, and they try to frighten you into calling. I'm not here to do that. Tax Relief Advocates is different. TRA is here to tell you that if you owe money to the IRS, whether it's $5,000, $50,000, or $500,000, we have a solution. It doesn't matter if you're sitting in your car, at work, or with your kids. No matter where you are, call now. 800-583-5795. Don't lose hope. TRA can eliminate or reduce what you owe to the IRS. There is zero risk to you. If we can't reduce your tax debt, then you pay nothing. Our passion is taxes and helping individuals fix their IRS problems. We have a five-star rating on Google and an A-plus with the Better Business Bureau. You don't need to be afraid of the IRS any longer. End your tax nightmare today by visiting us online at tra.com or call 800-583-5795. That's 800-583-5795. Tax Relief Advocates, real solutions for real people. Drowning in IRS debt? If you can't afford to pay your IRS debt due to economic hardship, you can now be free of IRS collection efforts by taking advantage of a special IRS tax hardship program. This program allows Americans who owe the IRS to resolve their delinquent tax debt once and for all. In some cases, maybe even reducing what you owe significantly. An open phone line has been established by Community Tax for consumers to call and see if they qualify. Simply dial 800-485-7220. If you owe back taxes to the IRS and cannot afford to pay them back or have years of unfiled tax returns, help is standing by. Just call the Community Tax Helpline today at 800-485-7220 for the help that you need. Don't take on the IRS alone. They can attack your wages, savings, pension, home, and even your social security check. Call 800-485-7220 to see if you qualify. That's 800-485-7220. I can't believe tax season is here already. Look at all this info I have to enter. Phil's small accounting firm is growing in numbers. Why didn't I take that typing class in high school? A data entry specialist could really help him in a crunch. I got blisters on my fingers. Indeed can help him hire great people fast. I need Indeed. 
Indeed you do. You can schedule and conduct virtual interviews all from your employer dashboard. Visit indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. QC Kinetics announces the arrival of National Medical Director Dr. Mitchell Scheinkup, an acclaimed orthopedic surgeon with two decades of experience and extensive research in regenerative medicine. I was one of the first orthopedic surgeons to do it, and at the same time, I integrated clinical research that's resulted in several publications that are really directing the future of regenerative medicine. I was drawn to QC Kinetics after I reviewed their protocols, and everything they were doing is consistent with my own approach. Today, Dr. Scheinkup leads the entire team of medical professionals at QC Kinetics, taking this exciting medical breakthrough to a whole new level. What we are doing at QC Kinetics is transforming lives. Get lasting joint pain relief. Call QC Kinetics now for your free consultation. This is the future of medicine. Call QC Kinetics, 816-412-6299. That's 816-412-6299. 816-412-6299. What does it mean to be the official information technology provider for the Chiefs? It means everything. Technology Group Solutions makes sure everything runs flawlessly for the millions of fans that attend games and the hundreds of millions of fans that comprise Chiefs Kingdom around the world. Technology Group Solutions can deploy that same dedication, problem solving, and incredible service to ensure your business runs smoothly. Technology Group Solutions, powering Chiefs kingdom and ready to do the same for you all right can, I, can we talk about something real quick because it's driving me crazy today it's been driving me crazy for weeks you know that yeah i, I think most people understand it and so it, it's it's a select few talking about how can you be excited because i can't even watch the team first of all yes there's the Odyssey app. You can listen to the game for free whenever the or hell you want. Or in Sports Radio. You or, can hear the Royals play baseball literally any time okay. you want for free. But let's say, you know what I want? So let's pic- just start there. Someone else said, you know what? I want pictures. Okay, fair. Fine. Whatever. The idea that you can't watch the Royals is just false. It, it just is. You may not like the app, and I'll admit the app sucks. It just does. The Bally yeah, app it's sucks. Not a good app. It's not a great app. It crashes. It's not great. It crashes less for me than it seems yeah. like everyone else, it, but it, it still crashes. The app stinks, but the, the idea you can't watch the Royals, though, is laughable. It is just as accessible as any other ball club. Yeah, it's not in 2005 where you could just flip on the TV. Like I, I wish it was on YouTube TV as well. I'm right there with all of you guys. Sure. But the idea you can't watch the games. I mean, maybe you don't like the 1999 so it's a form of entertainment. I mean, it, it is what it is. Like, you, but th- this notion of like you just can't watch the Royals game, so I can't enjoy it because I can't watch a single pitch. That's just wrong. That's your. You are choosing not to watch the games. Not the Royals preventing you from watching the games. Correct. Um, it, I, I continue to get in this argument with people, and I will point out again a couple of things about this. One, yeah, I'm not saying twenty dollars a month is not nothing, but I just promise you, man, if you really broke down. What you spent money on every month. You'd be shocked to find out the things you spend twenty dollars a month on. So if you really want to watch them, if you if you want to watch them, you can. But also, I've told you, you can share the password with a person. Two concurrent streams. It doesn't even have to cost you twenty dollars a month. Go find a boy on social media or a buddy of yours at work, and it's ten dollars a month. Ten. That to me is the exact same thing as being like, like ah, oh, everyone's talking about Ted Lasso. I wish I could watch him. Nobody says that about television shows. You can watch Ted Lasso. It's because, as we know, back it's, you know, it's on back, a streaming. App. It's just because back in the day, you were able to just flip on the TV and watch, and that's just not reality of how streaming and how baseball and how sports in general are going. And the NFL is the exception. That's what like the NFL is the one exception with live sports that you can still flip on. It's the only see, one. Remaining. And, and by the way, and it's trending in the other direction. Hence, yep. the reaction to the playoff games being on Peacock. If you weren't in Kansas City. Or if you want to find other streaming options because you think $10 is too much a month. Yeah. Okay. I, I, the, Look, there are other streams available to you. They are sketchy as hell and technically illegal. But if you want to watch the Royals, there are You choices. can watch. No, again, I will fully admit, the app stinks. Like, a lot of people are texting. Oh, yeah. Saying, hey, if you, you want to complain about the app, that's different. The app cuts out. It happens three times a game. Oh, last night, twice. I had to, like, just, re, you know, click back out and click back in. And I have, and it's not an internet, you know, like bandwidth thing. Like I had to get better internet. No, I'm right there with all of you. It's the same thing uh, that you don't have any other problems on any other streaming app. So I know it's the Bally app. 
Uh, but you can, yes, watch the Royals if you really want to watch the Royals. It is there. It is not. So someone hard. says, hey, I can't listen on Bally's because of the blackout rules if I'm out of market. Baseball already gave you a way to watch Royals games if you're out of market. It's called MLB TV. Guess what? It actually costs more than the Bally's app. So, like, or the same. Yeah, I think it's. Depending on, it's about yeah. the same. Depending on where you buy it or what deal you got on it, or if you're a T-Mobile customer, got it for free. So, like, it. I think that the, the cost price point always really kind of gets me because like $10 a month, as I've pointed out, because you can share it with someone. You can definitely find yeah. someone to share this with 10 bucks a month. I'll just tell you right now, um, I use somebody's league pass password. It is almost, and Drew, it's almost triple that, double that. The NHL available. Like if you're at yeah. a market and you want to watch a team you like, it costs more than what Bally's is offering you to watch it in town. Much more, yeah. I missed it. But like the other thing is, you were paying for it still before. It just seemed it more convenient. Built, it was built into your cable It was cable built into package. your cable, but you were paying something for mm -hmm. it. And we all went to this, like, chop down versions where essentially we're paying the same amount as cable. I get it for, like, seven different streaming apps. But, like, what I would suggest, honestly, if you want it, is, like, if you really want to watch the Royals every night because they're exciting right now, and I do, then just cut out the app that you would, like, no Netflix for the summer. And instead, you get Royals baseball. Like, I don't think that's that crazy to me. No Peacock, no pro, whatever one you pay for monthly that you don't think you're going to use as much in the summer because you're watching the Royals, do that. Or just don't watch. But, like, I'm telling you, the excuse of I can't watch them, they're not available to me, I just think, like you do, is just factually untrue. All right, let's talk about the positive stuff. Yeah, I just please. That was driving me crazy because I saw a ton of it, like, in reaction to, like, the great walk-off win last night and multiple people were, were upset because they said they can't watch the game. And it's just, that's just not... Accurate. But anyway, yeah, uh, you're just choosing not to the, the bullpen, though. This time last week was a real, real concern. And I'm not saying that it's just going to be great the rest of the year. But last week, the bullpen was definitely the one thing that everybody was somewhat panicking about. And look, your closer, Will Smith, was really struggling. I, I think now you fast forward to today mm -hmm. and how we're feeling. MacArthur comes in for two innings yesterday, ends up getting you the win. I think it all switched over the weekend when there was an outing in which Will Smith was once again giving an opportunity, given an opportunity to close. And didn't go great. It didn't go great, and they didn't just let it play out. Q pulled them. They end up winning the game. They get one more out, and I think that was a huge deal for the bullpen the rest of the way, uh, for the confidence of the team, and Will Smith has since got a save set by, by, uh, on his own since then. Yep. Um, but that, to me, when you look at five scoreless innings from the bullpen yesterday to pick up Cole Reagans, all of that is key. Like we want, can, can you trust the bullpen to have to do that when inevitably you're going to get an outing? That's not what they were before. The whole starting pitching staff is not going to have a below two ERA all year. <laughs> not going to happen. Uh, so you're going to have some outings where the bullpen's going to need to give you five or six. And last night was a nice step in the right direction to proving that they're capable of doing that. This goes back to the Vinny conversation and why you should not be concerned right now, 11 games into the season. Do you remember the conversation three days in? I think, I think Bob in the morning was talking about like cutting people like, no, 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 let's, let's just relax a little bit. The bullpen looks like it's found its groove again. Like you said, five straight games with no run went five scoreless last night. They were perfect. They were the reason the Royals won that game last night. Look, I know they still have to get timely hit. Salvador Perez has still got to club that ball into the gap. They still got to do other things. That's how wins work. But if you're ranking out primary reason, the Royals won the game last night, bullpen. And over the last couple of games, bullpen. Because they are keeping this team in the game, even when guys like Marsh or Reagans might struggle a little bit, give up a few runs, and then they have to inevitably claw their way back. They can't claw their way back. Unless they're throwing up zeros. They are now league average, by the way, in ERA. They got a sub four ERA out of the bullpen. They still have the, I think it's like the fifth best or fourth best ERA team ERA in all of baseball. I like the structure. I think what's important here is I like the makeup of the bullpen. I, I still wish they had a little more velocity. But when you start looking at stuff and effectiveness, I can see why this unit still works as a whole. I don't think that they're ever going to be the league's best bullpen. But I do think that there's some parts in there that work. And I don't think you go five games without giving up a run or go five innings last night without feeling at least some portion of that. And like you said, the Astros offense has struggled a little bit to start this year. But, yeah, I mean, I feel a little bit – I feel great about the starters still, and I feel a little bit better about the bullpen after 11 games, which is nice. Yeah, this uh, – the, the bullpen, if it gets to a point where we're, we're lucky enough to, to be talking about a team finally that is in it in the summer months for the first time in a very long time – 
look, if you need an extra bullpen arm, that's the, you know, the beautiful thing. That's the one thing that's actually easy to acquire mm-hmm. at the trade deadline. Uh, so if we're at, that is a conversation for three months from now, uh, but that's why I'm not as concerned about that. If, if you're telling me that the one missing link at some point is that, man, they need one more guy in the pen. Okay, that that actually is something that they can go out and, and, and try to fix at some point later on. It's in also the year. sometimes something you can solve through the minor league system, depending on if one guy shows up and is doing really well. A lot of starters like uh, Chris Sale, right? He started in the bullpen. Uh, Brad Keller, before he had some success with the Royals, he first came up in the bullpen. Sometimes you can find success that way, too. It's a good bullpen. J.J. did a nice job rebuilding a pitching staff. Like, this is a uh, – look, he's not Brett Veach because Brett Veach's success is un- unheralded. But when you look at what he was tasked with this offseason, which was, hey, you've got one of the five worst pitching staffs in the entire league. Your bullpen. It's garbage. Your starting rotation. Can't get a win. You guys have – Zero pitching. Would you like a plan for that? Halfway through the year acquires Reagans, completely reworks the bullpen, shuffles around the rotation where there's only one guy in there who was in there last two once you get Reagans, but he had to do that midway through the year. They had to rebuild an entire pitching staff starting of like June of last year, and they did it. It appears successfully through at least, I don't know, as J.J. Piccolo put it, essentially one game of an NFL season, which I don't think is crazy because – I mean, do the math. 16-game NFL season, 162 games. For every 10 games, essentially, you're getting through a game. Uh, equivalency of a percentage. It just works a little bit different in baseball where you can lose five games yeah. in a row and you're not buried. We'll talk more Royals baseball throughout the day today. Again, Josh Vernier will join us for his weekly visit coming up at uh, 1230 and the Royals back in action tonight uh, trying to secure a guarantee a series win. If they can uh, continue the winning streak against the Astros tonight. I got to figure out what I'm going to bet on tonight. I'll be on Vern's on deck show. I'll be okay. making a, I, I went, so I've only done it one time. I gave him two wagers for that and I won both. So I'm off to a hot start and I want to make sure that that's three, you know, if I live seeing Vinny later, there's a 99% chance my bet will be on Vinny. 99%. Hmm. Text line still seems uh, real mixed on that. But, and by the way, I think it's too early. No, nowhere too nowhere early in the gray just... either. Either people who love it and definitely want it, and the people who would rather um, careen themselves into a brick wall than listen to it. So, real tough, real tough crowd. So, we'll, we'll talk more about that later on. I did see that the numbers came out for the, the final four for both men's and women's. A lot of people were wondering just what would the, the difference be between the two, all the extra intrigue this year with uh, the women's game and Caitlin Clark, a huge, huge reason, if not the sole reason for that. And the numbers, I mean, the numbers are the numbers, man. There's no denying that anybody that wants to doubt like, okay, well now our people really aren't that interested. Well, the numbers came out yesterday, the women's national title game that was on at two o'clock central time in the afternoon on a Sunday on ABC and ESPN, 18.8 million viewers, the men's championship. Now it was on Turner, but I'll explain why that doesn't matter as much as you think. I was on Turner. The men's only 14.8. So over 4 million more people watched the women's game than UConn. For the first time ever. It outranked the men's game. For the first time ever. Now, if you're going to say, well, the men's game was on Turner, as in TBS, and the women's game was on ABC, that's why. Well, last year, the men's championship game was on CBS. So it wasn't on cable. It was over the air. 14.6. More people watched it on TBS this year, barely, than the game on CBS. So this isn't just a clear... And they had a powerhouse matchup in a way, not like, I don't know. San Diego State was in it, which was part of the problem yes. for that, Agreed. I will say. But again, I can the year before, it was, so it was 3 million more the year before, it was 17 million, which still would have been less. The last time that the men's game would have had more viewership than the women's game was back in 2019 when they had 19.6. Other oh, yes. than that... Five years ago. It was five years since the men's game drew a number... Better than what the women's game just had. Yeah. Now, I'll admit, I, I don't think next year we're seeing 16 million people or they even eight. They quadrupled their ratings yeah. from last year. They had nine, 9 million last year. Doubled, I guess. And and that was still with still with some intrigue. The year before, 2022, 4.8. I don't think it's fallen all the way back to 4.8. No. But next year, the women's game might fall back to 8 to 9 million easily. Like, but that's I, still yeah. a big number. It especially is. Especially because the men's one went down, 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 down for years and are now fallen stagnant. At about 14, 15 million per. How do you keep the people that just watched because of Caitlin Clark? Like, I'll be honest, on a Sunday, and I enjoyed the hell out of the tournament, okay. on Sunday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, if it wasn't for Caitlin Clark, I probably was not watching. So what's gonna, there, what's the storyline for me 
next year during the tournament. It's the big issue with the men's tournament, too. What's the story? Sure. That's why their ratings are down. We don't have a Zion Williamson-type player where you're like, hey, I got to watch. If you're the women's team, the one big advantage you have over the men's team is the transfer portal hasn't done the damage it's done to your sport as it did to the men's side. So, for instance, Juju Watkins, who will be one of the biggest names talked about next year in women's college basketball. She'll still be the same team. You already know who she is, Gold. She'll be with this, she'll be with USC, and you'll know that, and she'll be a name, and you'll recognize the jersey and the team she plays for, et cetera. On the men's side, I mean, I don't know. Any of the biggest stars in the entire sport could end up anywhere at any time in that sport. And that's that's still part of the men's problem is that no one is hooked into it that way. Look, they still draw flat numbers. They'll get a certain number of people. It's the men's national championship game. They'll do it. But they miss star power. I think men's – I, I, it's weird. Because NIL will help star power in college basketball for men's. But how do you convince these kids to sometimes stay at the same school? Well, I, I think – Do they, you limit the number of transfers to two? Or, do you, you know, like, is there – like, I don't think that they should never get a chance to move, but is there a way to finagle it so there's a better chance that, like – Four-year J.J. Redick is playing at Duke the entire time, you know, where you you grow to get to know the guy and hate him over time. I think the big problem with the the way that that works, Cody, is that you're making more money as a women's college basketball player than you do in the WNBA. There's they're going to stay all four. They're going to stay all. I don't know. Not every team. Like Paige Beckers has been on multiple different teams. I mean, Caitlin Clark has a year of eligibility left, right? And she's she's still leaving a year early. Paige has been at UConn the whole time. Has she? Yes, I think okay. so. Yeah, I but but I, I, but I and I don't know the WNBA's requirements, but it's not one and done at all whatsoever. So you, they stay one because I think you have to stay, and two because they're it, with NIL. Why, why would I leave to make less money when I can stay in college, get my degree, and do all that? We're in the in, in the NBA. Yeah. A lot of it is if you're Grant Nelson for, is a great example of that. He was in North Dakota State, uh, was gonna be drafted in like the second round. He goes to Alabama, has a great year. We don't even know if he's leaving yet, but he could go to the draft, and he's probably selected at least 10 to 15 picks higher. That That's the incentive for guys to bounce around all the time is it doesn't – it matters where – it matters how you play, but it but it matters also kind of where you go because of the one-and-done rule, that there's a more ur- sense of urgency, I think, to transfer and jump and leave in the men's game than there is in the women's game because – you don't have that. You're making more money in college, and you have to stay in college anyways because there's no such thing as the one and done. I think that that impacts the the movement, if you will. Yeah, I, I just I just think from a ratings and intrigue point on the women's game, and unless there is another player, you mentioned a few names. Yeah, it have that to people, be Juju. Yeah, like there 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 has to be somebody that is as fascinating and intriguing as. Caitlin Clark to replicate the exact ratings. The question is, all right, 19 million. Can you, how do you get to where you're stable at like 11 million people or 12 million people are watching? And that's Which is what the, the men's name. team has done. Yeah. Right. And, and so, and I, I don't know if that's something that can happen. We'll, we'll see. I, I just know plenty of people, like friends of mine that would never in a million years have watched women's basketball. Just never. They just wouldn't. And Sunday afternoon, I sat and one of my good friends sat and watched the women's game. And we all, we enjoyed the hell out of it. And that ne- I can just pr- tell you that never would have happened without Caitlin Clark. Some of it so is just how exposure. How, how, how now you've you, been exposed to yes. it. You are more likely right. now sure. to watch any women's ba- game than you were sure. six months ago. But th- that, but the question is, how many people are like that though, where yeah. they they are going to come back after she's not there? And this is when we discuss the WNBA. Like, how many fans are following her to the WNBA? I know the ticket price is already she didn't even draft in the WNBA and teams that know they're playing the team that she's going to get drafted by already have bumped the ticket Vegas prices is up. moving to the T-Mobile. Yeah. Did you so not see there was already the Diana Taurasi was yeah. already in an advertisement saying yeah. the goat versus the rookie. Yeah, and if you're the WNBA, they were already you, promoting it. You should capitalize on trying I mean, to sell their if, tickets. If you're the WNBA, you should capitalize on this. I just how many fans in terms of watching a game on ESPN of the Indiana what are they the fever, fever fever going up against the LA Sparks or whatever they're called yep. like how, how how many how many people are watching that game after the one time it's Caitlin Clark you know what I mean sure and I don't know and but the one time on is more than does. I was watching before does that you know like yes. if I watch one Indiana Fever game this year that is one more yeah. Indiana Fever game than I've ever watched 
So, like, it's objectively good for them still as a oh, sport. It's, but it's yeah. great. I just, like, Maintaining I, is hard. Yeah, because, like, I can watch the opening game, the first ever WMB game of Caitlin Clark, and I, there probably will be big ratings for that game. But the random game in June when yeah. uh, are people watching, and that's what sure. I, I, my guess is no. Probably not. I think one thing, too, we'll for, 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 for the men's game in regards to what you're talking about, Cody, where, like, Cooper Flag, for example, perfect prototypical Duke player. Everybody's going to hate him who's not a Duke fan His next year. His name's Cooper Flag. He had to go to Duke. <laughs> That's um, the most Duke player name of all time. The problem, I think, in this is where it, you, you, have, you, can, you have the potential for more star power in women's basketball now because they stay longer in college. Where Cooper Flag is going to be one, he's already being he's already the consensus number one overall pick in twenty twenty six or whatever he went twenty twenty five whatever it is. That's the conversation. They're not even talking about college as much. It's oh, this guy's going to be the number one overall pick. He just has to go to school, or he's going to school instead of going to Australia yeah. to play I mean, for a, a year. Just a pure, I mean, even on the women's side, it's just a talent thing. Like it's great. Caitlin Clark was there for three years or whatever. But also, she's incredible. Like, it's yeah. not just well, like stay in college yeah. four years and people are going to follow you. Uh, it's because she was, you know, as good as anybody we've ever seen. She yeah. was a transcendent player for the sport. Yeah, I, I think that's part of it. And Juju Watkins, I think, is going to be the next in line for that. But I think it, it, the men's game, it allows for Cooper Flack to become the hated guy that is always at Duke, like JJ yeah. Redick was, if the NBA were to say, hey, you can come out of high school, but if you go to college, you have to stay two years. That yeah. That sort of jurisdiction i guess in and how they manage things it would help college basketball men's no college doubt. basketball out a lot no i agree with that I, I would agree with that someone says you can't get me to watch nba games how are you gonna get me to watch wmba you're this, just not a basketball yeah, fan. That's yeah, fine. yeah 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 and or i guess you're only a men's college basketball fan which is weird like no offense like if the only sport like you that, like though. is just men's college basketball it's kind of funny i think it's a lot of people in our area though we've talked about yeah, this is true. you know this is not a I'm great the only place in the country, though. NBA market. You know, we've got three local schools. You would think that, hey, you've got you're a fan of K-State or Mizzou or KU, and mm -hmm. you've got a player that gets drafted in the NBA draft. You would think you would, like Joel Embiid's the prime example of that. You would think, man, you might want to watch a bunch of 76ers games, but that's not the, that's not what a lot of people are doing. Mm -hmm. no. It's just not. We've talked, I mean, we've had these conversations. Well, that's why we don't talk a ton of NBA in this market. It's just not no. something that, I'm not, yeah. there's obviously people in Kansas City that are watching the NBA, but. The majority of people don't. You don't want to break down the uh, Lakers Warriors game last night? No, I, I do not actually. Okay, it was a good game. No, that's what I heard. But, you know. No, I like watching. The, I can't wait for the playoffs. The play-in tournament starts uh, next week, right? Yep, yeah, the 16th. So I'll be like that. NBA I, I'll, I'll playoffs be from yesterday. Longest damn playoffs on the planet. Yes. Oh yeah, we go until if Fourth of July. <laughs> two, two, <laughs> <laughs> you said the playoffs months. start next week, <laughs> and it's yeah. like I'll see you in the Fourth of July. Two and a half months. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it really it's crazy. That's nuts. It. I mean, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll see how things go. I did see Joel Embiid had a little scare, and then Giannis last night. So I, I keep an eye on it, but um, mainly the playoffs, what I watch. I'm all over the place. Just depends on my mood. I did watch some of that Warriors game. When you're making that up, I really did watch part of that. After I got done dancing. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be so bad, man. <laughs> so you guys want that video, huh? We're going to get the video. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it would be, We're gonna get it the video. be fun. If we even have to go walk into the dance studio to get it. You don't have to walk into the dance studio. It's going to be in a room full of people. Well, that's... Someone will take video. Someone will post send it. it or Someone will it. post it on social media. Do they? Uh, I'm not going to volunteer it, but I'll just let you know. I'm sure it'll be out. There. I'm, I'm sure they do some sort of this, uh, some sort of this thing. But when my sister was in dance and all that stuff, they allowed like at the end you you could buy like a dvd of the entire thing and then sure. you know all i don't think they stuff. sell a Do dvd they, but there is usually a video i, I, I figured there'd be no dvd because of <laughs> the day and age that we live in now, they sell you know, vhs copies DVD. actually you can get a vhs uh, and, floppy uh, disk uh, yeah. uh, it's on right. 42 <laughs> floppy disk it's that whole plastic <laughs> carton full uh, of them yeah yeah you can just pop it in the vhs of uh of the performance classic so i gotta figure out costuming still i don't think they've got costuming I I'm have guessing to they're going to tell you guys to all wear jeans and like a tank top or jeans and a shirt, a black shirt. It's probably something simple like that. I don't think you're going to have to like. Well, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think it's going beyond that. But it looked like so they did like a 70s song a couple of years ago. It looked like people had some like, you know, shiny shirts on some shiny, shiny disco, shirts. disco shirts. Mm. <laughs> there you go. All right. Coming up next, we'll, we'll get back into the Chiefs a little bit. One reason why you said the Chiefs should not be looking to trade off and we figure out our 2024 Cody and Gold Masters betting card next.
Cody and Gold, brought to you by Heartland Men's Health, the leader in men's sexual health. Thousands of men have been successfully treated for low T, ED, and more, all with discretion and compassion. Make your appointment at heartlandmenshealth.com. There is a back-to-back Super Bowl champion, and it is the Kansas City Chiefs. On your official broadcast partner of the Chiefs, 610 Sports Radio. Do you like to shoot fireworks? How would you like to get paid to shoot fireworks? J&M Displays wants you. Shoot 4th of July at Sporting KC and a variety of other exciting events in the KC area throughout the year. Like to travel? J&M covers Nebraska, Kansas, and most of Missouri. J&M offers free training and great daily pay rates, which makes it a perfect part-time job. And seriously, there's nothing like hearing the cheers of the crowd at the end of the show that you helped shoot. Be a part of the action. Visit JNMDisplays.com and click the Join Our Team tab to find out more. ESPN Bet is ready to take you through all the huge sports moments of the spring. The exclusive sports book of ESPN has it all, including offers and promotions from Scott Van Pelt and Stephen A. Smith. There's no better time to be a sports fan. New users get $100 in bonus bets for making any sports book bet. Download ESPN Bet today. What a play. Must be 21 or older. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In partnership with Hollywood Casino at Kansas Speedway. Terms and conditions apply. See app for details. Look, career uncertainty is not fun. That's why we keep recommending our friends over at Centric, whether it's the 1,500 companies they work for, the better pay, the career advancement gold. We just know that we love sending you to a great company who can help get you a better career. Well, they got the relationships. I mean, that's so key. We know in any line of work, any career, you want to have somebody that's there to guide you that has the relationships, and they do at Centric. I love hearing about our listeners who went to Centric. My nephew went there. He talked to Russ Mondry, our guy, too. It's the only guy you're going to talk to. Go to Centric.com slash 610 and find out how you can start your new career in IT. you have drafty windows in your house? Hey, it's Rob Brenton from The Drive, here to tell you guys about Renewal by Anderson. They manufacture and install some of the nation's top quality windows and doors. As you guys know, I'm about to get married, which means house hunting time. The last thing I want in my new home are drafty windows, which will all be looking for a home with Renewal by Anderson windows and doors. These windows are built for homeowners who want to get their project done once and never worry about it again. Their Fibrex material is twice as strong as vinyl and backed by the nation's best warranty, covering windows and doors for 20 years. Renewal by Anderson offers free home appointments seven days a week, and they'll give you a quote that's good for a whole year. Call right now and save 20% on all windows and patio doors, plus take an extra $500 off your entire project with no interest for the next four years. Call 913-364-0200. That's 913-364-0200. 913-364-0200. Erectile dysfunction affects many men in America today, but it's not just the man who's affected. It's also often their partner, but successful treatment of ED can truly bring relationships back to life. This is Jeff, the CEO of Promenic Restorative Men's Health, and that's why I'm pleased to announce the opening of our second location of Heartland Men's Health right here in Independence, Missouri. As a Promenic affiliate, Heartland Men's Health is a part of a group that has successfully treated tens of thousands of men over the last decade with treatments that are shown in medical studies to be effective in well over 90% of men. And unlike wave therapy groups or online pill sellers, we offer a variety of treatments to help you get the results you want. You could even find you're performing like you haven't in years. So call Heartland Men's Health today. Your initial visit is only $99 and includes a medical consult, blood work, and if medically advised, a test dose. And if that test dose doesn't work in the office, your visit is free. Call 844-447-6600 or go to heartlandmenshealth.com. That's heartlandmenshealth.com. The Landing in Liberty, the largest sports bar north of the river, and the home of over 65 HD TVs with every sports package. Hey, our motto is any game, any time. 10,000 square feet under one roof to provide adequate social distancing. Our non-smoking patio is not covered, but in the winter, it's home of the only dine-in heated igloos in the Northland. Each igloo has its own TV and sound system and seats up to eight people. The Landing has a great menu featuring the best dry rub wings in Kansas City and the home of the Ben Mallard Chicken Fingers. Most of our menu items, dressing and wing sauces are house-made. Daily food specials, happy hour every day from 3 till 7 p.m. Live music on our smoking patio Thursday through Sunday nights. Make your next destination the Landing in Liberty. Food, fun, music, and sports. The Landing in Liberty, 1189 West Kansas Street in Liberty. Check us out online at thelandingeateryandpub.com. 
We'll see you at the landing. Do you owe back taxes or have unfiled tax returns? The IRS won't quit until they get your money. Here's great news, fresh from those in the know. Major changes have happened at the IRS. If you owe more than $10,000, you may be eligible for a 99% reduction of what you owe. Haven't filed a return for a while? Their happy clients are talking. The IRS was going to levy my bank account, but Guardian was able to prevent that and fix all my IRS issues. Thanks again, Guardian Tax. Need relief from crushing tax debt? The IRS now has special programs. Guardian Tax knows all about them, personal or business. This is the fresh new break you've been hoping for. We aren't the company you call when you need a hug because you're scared of the IRS. Guardian Tax is the company that wins when you need it most. Guardian Tax Service is really great to work with. They really help me out. I'd recommend them highly. Call now for a free confidential consultation. 800-494-7174. 800-494-7174. Replace your worn out brakes and save now on Brake Best Select. Brake Best Select Pro are import direct brake pads and rotors only at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. The good folks at Wendy's have a revolutionary new product for you. Introducing the new Orange Dreamsicle Frosty. It's like a time machine that takes you all the way back to now, the year 2024. It's the classic creamy, orangey flavor you remember. Dare I say, it's new timey. It's the flavor you grew up with, just all grown up. Head over to your local Wendy's establishment and get yours while supplies last. The new Orange Dreamsicle Frosty. Here for the now, for now. Limited time only at participating Wendy's. Replace your worn out brakes and save now on Brake Best Select. Brake Best Select Pro are import direct brake pads and rotors only at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. You're listening to 610 Sports Radio from the Mission Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling Studios. Hey, Kansas City, it's Brady Singer. Tune in to Burns On Deck Show. One hour before first pitch, right here on 610 Sports Radio and the Odyssey app. KCSP Kansas City, WDAF HD2 Liberty. Always live on the free Odyssey app. Just picture Cody dancing to this. That's happening <laughs> in a couple of weeks. Uh, and we are going to get video of it. Gonna That's my moves. gotta happen. Are you picturing the routine right now as you hear this? Yeah, I think way back in the day, I think it was either Carrington or Danny Parkins. I think it was Danny. Had, had to, to sing. sing it. Yeah, yeah. Well, now you have to dance to go with it. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's the song. Well done, Drew. <laughs> Uh, it is Cody and Gold hanging out here on a Wednesday. Hope everybody's off to a good start today. We'll get back to the Royals a bit later on as they have won five in a row and they continue their series against the Astros this evening. I did see this during the break just to pass along. We've been talking the last couple of days about what's going on with Kentucky and Coach Cal and Arkansas. The latest from John Rothstein is that a source telling him Kentucky plans to officially meet with Baylor's Scott Drew regarding its head coaching vacancy in the near future. So that implies they have not met yet but he is maybe agreed to a meeting. He appears to, if, it, if he wants the job, it's his job. The question is, if you're Scott Drew, do you leave Baylor where, look, you helped him get a brand new arena built. You showed you can win yeah. a national title. You don't have, you know, the, the same pressure. But again, it's Kentucky. Baylor, but it is Kentucky. It is Kentucky in the all the positives. The negative is it's Kentucky as well. It's like, it's the positive and the negative of the job. Uh, but it sounds like if Scott Drew wants to be the head coach of Kentucky, he will be the head coach of Kentucky. I think the beauty of, like, taking a job like that, it'd kind of be like you and I taking a job as a host in New York. It's New York, and it's a completely different animal than hosting here, and it comes with more money and more pressure and more expensive. risk. But the second you've done that job, what do you think? Scott Drew's going to be out of work forever? You have the confidence to think you're going to get the job done anyway. But if you fail, what do you think? You can't get another job like Baylor? You can get exactly that job again. You were great at Baylor. You were the coach of Kentucky. Even if you fell flat on your face at Kentucky, there are 20, 30 other good jobs available to you if you're Scott Drew. Why not take on this challenge when you've accomplished everything? Like, you've accomplished maximum, in my opinion, at Baylor. A national title in a new arena? That's tops. I mean, unless you're going to build them into a national, unless you're going to build them into the next UConn or Gonzaga, and you're going to be a national powerhouse every single year, you have accomplished the world. 
Yeah, but there's something, there's something to be said for one. I, I have no idea what Scott Drew's career aspirations are or or goals. So I, I don't know for all, people around yeah. it. Maybe his entire life he dreamed of coaching at Kentucky. I, I have no idea. Maybe or he just did. Dream, like uh, a lot of these guys are hyper competitive and want to test themselves at the highest level. Someone around here might know. I mean, he grew up in KC Mo. And he was born in Kansas City. So some maybe somebody listening was best friends with Scott Drew growing up. I don't know. But my point is, well, I, maybe he I, wants I, to get this Kentucky job I, so he can get the Kansas job. There, there, there you go. There you go. Look, I, I think there's something to be said for. Not that you want to just be comfortable, but look, you're making $3 million a year and you can probably leverage this to get another Six. raise. Uh, and you don't have any pressure at Baylor anymore. Like you can coach there as long as you want at this point with what you I mean. One of the greatest turnarounds. We talk about Bill Snyder and the job that he did mm-hmm. at K-State. One of the greatest turnarounds in sports history. Right? What, Baylor? Yeah. Both. But I'm saying, both. Oh, yeah. But in football, I would say Bill Snyder and K-State. One of the, the yes. Scott Drew Baylor. Almost equally as great uh, at, at the turnaround, and you could argue some of the other circumstances around it was even more impressive. Yeah, you know, right. I mean, off the field, off stuff. the off the court off the stuff. Court yeah, stuff, no, yeah. I hear you. Yeah, so that that's where I, that's where I'm at. Like, I, I don't think it's a hundred percent. Like, how could you not take the Kentucky job, Scott Drew? Um, and it sounds like if if he wants it, though, it's going to be his. If he says no, Cody, that's when it gets interesting because then you're really going further down the list. And some of the other names we had mentioned uh, the other day. The one thing you know, that's wild about him is he only coached one year at Valparaiso, and then he's been at Baylor every single. Yeah, he's done an unbelievable year job since he's been there for twenty years. After one year at Valpo, and it took him four or five years to get things rolling at Baylor before they were a real team that made the tournament regular and all that stuff. Also, did you know his middle name's Homer? That's his dad, him, Homer Drew, and then him, Scott him and Homer Bryce Drew, Drew, Scott Drew, Bryce Drew. And Bryce was at Valpo, then went to Vandy, struggled there, then went to Grand Canyon. Now he's doing well and at Grand he, Canyon. And he could very well be. Boy, the Drews, quite the coaching legacy. Yeah, sure. And uh, update on the salary thing. I guess starting this coming year, his salary bumps to 5.1 at Baylor anyway. Okay, so you got to jump a little bit. I mean, because <laughs> Cal just got seven at, at, at Arkansas. Plus a million-dollar signing bonus. Must be nice. If he did leave Baylor, obviously Baylor is going to look at Jerome Tang. But I wonder who. I wonder if they look at Bryce Drew. Just hire a different yeah, Drew. Just, I mean, it's hire your brother. I mean, it, it, it yeah. makes sense. That'd be kind of funny. I mean, I'm guessing Scott would have nice things to say about working there. Uh, you know, Tang's obviously going to be the favorite. I would say if Scott Drew does leave, I know some people aren't scared. Like a lot of K State fans are like, "We're not scared he's going to leave," which is fine. You can feel that way. I just like, man, if there was one job I'd be a little fearful of, it'd be that one, just because that's the program he was under for so long. That's all. Doesn't mean it's 100%, nothing like that, but I'd be a little bit worried. But the fact they're meeting is obviously not insignificant. Mm. I told you earlier before the show, and I didn't tell you why, but I told you earlier that there's a big reason why the Chiefs should not be looking to trade up. You want to know why? It's because Brett Veach is on an impossible heater. Brett Veach's current hit rate at the draft makes it fundamentally a bad idea to trade up to take less picks away from him. He's too good. His efficiency in successful players based on number of draft picks alone simply suggests that they should never be trading up in this scenario until the man cools off. He's white hot. The more picks you give him, the more likely you are to get starters at a Brett Veach. Why trade up when he's hitting at this rate? Just specifically this rate. Why ever trade up? Well, that's the argument to trade back, I think. It's not It's not even so much don't trade up. Because when they've traded up. Well, trade up, up you got to lose picks, you know? It's potentially, you know, the pick you gain, though, from Snead, uh, whatever the formula has to be, you could argue, like, that was the, yeah. the thought all along. Look, when they traded up, they got Trent McDuffie. So when it, the, the the small sample size the one time of trading up in the first round. Sky more than go, first round, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, they've traded up in other rounds. But in the first round, the sample size is, well, it was because someone they, they were in love with, obviously, and it's turned out to be maybe the best cornerback a- in football. I, I agree with you 100%. Give him more, you know, darts to throw at the board. Uh, and Him. Him that, in particular. Not is, every coach, not every GM, but him. That's the argument, though, to me, like, hey, if you trade back, I'm – I'm fine with that as much as it'll stink that we're sitting around. We're having a great time at the landing on Thursday, April 25th. We're going to be waiting around. If you tell me they trade back, everybody's going to be bummed out. I get it. But it might be a great thing. It might be a great thing. All of a sudden, you got another third-round pick to work with. That's where he's made his money. I just don't think – I don't think the – like, and look, he got McDuffie right. I understand that when they traded up, it worked the one time. And the other rounds, it didn't. And I just – I want numbers – like, generally speaking, I think that's a strong philosophy. It's Bill Belichick's philosophy forever. I think in the NFL draft, most people who handle the analytics side of this would tell you that you should never trade up, and trading back is always better. But specifically with him, man, gold, the hit rate is way too high. 
Like, look at all the second-round picks. Rasheed Rice, Creed Humphrey, Nick Bolton. The third-round pick, you know, sixth round where he's finding Trey Smith. Seventh round with Pacheco, Watson, and Williams in the fourth and the seventh. Like, you go back through, and the number of hits he has. Look, they're misses. There's always misses. That's the way the NFL draft works. We can point at Sky Moore, which I think we can pretty safely call a miss at this point. That's why, like, going back on the Tony trade now, it's why I would have maybe, like, in retrospect, I'm like, yeah, do you need to be making in-season trades for guys like McColl or Tony? Look, they won Super Bowl, so you can't really complain. At the way you find talent in the draft, I want them to have the maximum number of draft picks available to them in every single draft. I might be team trade back for the next five years based on the way he drafts until some other sign is that, hey, we got to get more talent because, like, picking at 32 every year is not working. That has not affected them at all. At all. It's just a numbers game. You give you give Brett Feach enough draft picks and he will find talent. That That's all it is for me. I don't want him trading up because of that. My fear is that you can't get... Maybe we can get more to this tomorrow. I don't know. But, like, I, my fear is... That for if what you want, Gold, the left tackle, if you want a left tackle that is worth having, probably is not worth having at 32. Then if you really want that guy, then you better be talking about early 20s. Yes, whatever the, whatever, Brett v, what do they grade out? Do they do they think there's two tackles that are actually first rounders? Do they think there's two tackles that could actually start right away? Well, if that's the case, you're right. You're not getting that guy at pick 32. You're sure. you're going to have to get to the top 10 or 15, and they're not going to jeopardize multiple picks to to go and do that, and we'll probably be having the conversation after the draft uh, that, okay, well, Wanya Morris plus the guy they drafted, or Wanya Morris plus another veteran, and that's the competition heading into the season if they don't spend it on a, on a first-round pick. That seems like where we're headed again, where there'll be another uh, type of veteran signing uh, in in May or, or June. Because I remember after this past year's draft, when they, they drafted Wanya, and we're like, okay, you know, uh, maybe it's Wanye and, and he has a chance to be the right tackle and Juwan was going to be the left. Then it became clear Juwan Taylor's are the right. So you're like, all right, are they really just going to have Wanye Morris be the left tackle? Well, then they signed Donovan Smith and it became very clear he was going to be the guy. And that's why I do think if there's any position that's drafted or not drafted that tells us how they feel, uh, other than maybe you think it, it tells Defensive us a lot about lineman. Felix... Them not drafting a tackle in the first round. Says they like Wanye. Says, says they like Wanye or they just think they can go with another one-year stopgap option and, and, and they're going to sign a veteran. And they now, don't like the guys in the draft sometimes, yeah, right? That happened a couple true. years ago. Now, if they get to camp, if we're up in St. Joe doing our shows like we do every summer. And Wanye's taking and, reps. And, and there's they didn't bring in a veteran. And it's just Wanye plus a third-round pick guy. I must love well, Wanye. Th- then they obviously think very highly of Wanye. I'll be a little nervous, but that's, that's how they would. And I think they get the benefit of the doubt on how they evaluate offensive line talent. They've done a pretty damn good job at that. By the way, is there anything Patrick Mahomes can't do? No, oh, and what's he doing now? Nominated for two Emmys. Oh, is it for two quarterback? Two sports Emmys. For quarterback. for quarterback. His production company was part of it. Yeah. So on top of all of this, Patrick Mahomes might have an Emmy? <laughs> damn. I mean, that's... Why whew. not? You know, why not? Does your quarterback have an... Does didn't, Tom Brady have an Emmy? Uh, correct, correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't Kobe Bryant win a... He did. Oscar or something? He won one for a animated short. Right? So yeah, he like, has an Oscar. Not even not just like a local run of sports at me. Yeah. He's got a real So you know, you get athletes get involved with production companies and different projects, and when you have the the uh, the name and the, the, the financial means and things like that, you get to be part of special projects and invest in investment opportunities. And so I would imagine there'll be plenty of other things that whether it's post playing career or current, that he has a chance to be. Do you put that up in the so where like where does it Emmy's a cool trophy? Let's just start there. Oh, is it Even next to the Lombardi Emmy. or where's it at? Yeah, does it make? Let me just ask this: Does it make the main trophy wall? Patrick Mahomes is going to have too many trophies. Yeah, for all the trophies to be on there, we're talking about like you know Tiger Woods has got like a, a majors wall, mm-hmm. and then the rest of the trophies are in like a shed out back or whatever. Does it make? Does winning an Emmy if you're a quarterback, even if it's a sports Emmy, does it? Does it make the main trophy wall? Well, it depends how many Lombardis is Mahomes ending up with. You know what I mean? Because if, three if, right if, now. if Mahomes, well, he's got two, if, he's if, got three, he's got all the Super Bowl MVPs too. Because man. if Mahomes ends up with six rings and well, other MVPs, if Mahomes has six rings, well, then I think you have to display. You know, you don't get to display the Lombardi like the real one, but you can have the. You know, they, the, the players can get like the replicas. You know what I'm saying? So you can have those. So you you know you can have the rut. Would you go six replica Lombardis plus your you know four Super Bowl MVPs? That to me is what you got to show off right away. Yeah, I think that makes them. I guess if there's a, I don't know how many you know trophy cases he has or how many he has planned. Well, I mean, you can't build a whole house areas, full of trophy but... cl- cases. You know, it's like Kirk Cousins had that like uh, 
kind of a sad closet, but like he had a closet full of his his like football memories. It's all just kind of stuffed in there. See, th- that might be where the Emmy ends up, or it just ends up on a random. I don't know. A, I think you got to put it out spot. for a little bit, you know. What? What do you mean random spot? I mean, his house is, he's a rich person. It's carefully curated. You got to know where things go when you got that kind of money. That That's something, though, I think that, that doesn't, not that it doesn't matter, but it, it doesn't have as, unless he takes pride in it, I guess, but. I'm I mean, sure he'd take pride in winning an Emmy. Who wouldn't? I, I do think. He, I've been nominated for two local Emmys. I've lost both. I, I do think. Success! The, <laughs> the, he has, you know, uh, <laughs> the Super Bowl trophies will make the main case, if you will. You got to feel like he's going to have more than one case, though. I think some people just I, – I, I think you were overestimating that they put out every single trophy they win. Right now, oh, I, I, yeah, if I, Patrick I Mahomes had to decorate a wall with his trophies, it's already full. He has three Lombardis, three Super Bowl MVPs, and two regular – or one regular. Wait, two regular season? Two regular season MVPs? Yes. <laughs> I mean, that's a pretty full wall. I think that's why he... Before, like, I don't know if he won, like, a high school state championship like most of those guys did, mm. he probably cares well, you about saw, that, you uh, know? Uh, like, good guy, uh, man, uh, who knows? On quarterback, was it Kirk Cousins had the... Yeah, that's what I said, his sad like, little closet. The, 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 the room you're talking about, but, like, that room had everything, man. Yeah, he didn't even, like, put it out on display. And he, had, house. he even had spots waiting for, for on, future awards available. Oh, Remember, he had, he yeah, had, like, that was the, a bummer. He had the spot. He's like, that's where I'm putting that Lombardi when I get it or whatever, he said. Look, everybody hands a little bit different. So, like, I think it was on uh, Full Swing. Was it Kepka? Who was it that, like, him and his wife were talking about his little trophy wall, and he had a couple of his major trophies on there? I think it was. I and think they it had left some blank spots, too. But then it was sure. also just, like, you know, when you win a, that amount, like Tiger Woods, right? You got 70 mm-hmm. trophies. They're not all on display, dude. Some right. of those are in boxes. Some of you just gave to a buddy or a family member. That you might just be got him Emmy. out of your damn house. Yeah, th- th- that might be the Emmy. Yeah, just, like, the... You know the random award. You know, like the the, the Nickelodeon Oscars it, front it, shelf. The, the in, sports the, Emmy, like mm. the Nickelodeon MVP. What are they? The MVP. That one's probably <laughs> not getting displayed. If that one's have, going to the next charity like, auction for my now, foundation. Are now, you like kidding? if you're Mac Jones, that one's front and center. But if you know <laughs> what I mean, like it's just different. Right. Did he win the MVP? I, I'm just no. I'm just throwing out. My point being is like. You know, if you're someone that doesn't have all the accomplishments, then yeah, yeah then the, that that's front that's front and center. But Mahomes is going to have you know four or five Lombardi replicas he can have up there. He's going to have four or five Super Bowl MVPs. I'm not sure up a sports Emmy gets up there. I think an Oscar does. Yeah. Oh, I'm not sure for, a sports oh, for Emmy sure. gets up there. I think an Emmy is a pretty big deal, man. I think it. it I think I think it's a big deal. But if you look at what else he's done, it do, it doesn't. <laughs> it, it it's it's not going to fit on the. It's like oh yeah, that's kind of nice, but it doesn't. It doesn't belong on the shelf. With yeah. I think he'll be I think he'll be all right either in the the brand new home or his other home yeah. or the yeah. other property. Yeah, right. Oh, okay. and I didn't realize the MVP is a weekly award for Nickelodeon. Oh, so he definitely has one. Patrick Holmes has one. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. I'm telling you, that's the charity auction. Fifteen in Mahomes. The the next charity auction where some of my stuffs up for grabs. The MVP. Well, I don't think these giving away no, one of those the, Nickelodeon you trophies. Don't, you don't auction off the tr- yeah. you don't off auction off your awards unless you're Adrian Peterson and you're broke. That's that's no. that's different. The env- but it's for charity. It's different. Yeah, you know, I don't think any players auctioning off their awards. How are you supposed to do that? MVP, but you don't auction man. off your awards you unless you're broke. You know what I would still display in my house? Like I got a you know I've got like a fireplace <laughs> mantle or whatever. There's not much on it. Usually it's just like candles or then eventually like Christmas decorations. <laughs> But it does seem like a place where you would like display in a, you know, like you mm-hmm. did something. If I had ever gotten a chance to win that aggro crag thing from guts, that thing would still be on my mantle. I'd be 39 years old, gold, and that thing would still be at the top. <laughs> if you had ever won that thing, it'd still be prominently displayed in your home, wouldn't it? Yes. A piece of the aggro crag. Thing of the Cody Mill garage sale, which we're going to have in June. I think we actually settled on a date. We'll, we'll have more details coming up, but uh, in June. The the pick'em contest that the company had like two years ago. I don't need the trophy anymore. I'm putting it on the garage sale. Oh, you have a you got a trophy? For yeah. That? Why did they give you a this trophy? Goes back and it's yeah. Remember the it was like the rock and mortgage thing. Mm-hmm. And it's the tro- let's just say the trophy looks um less like a rock and more like something else. And it's mm. just weird. Oh, is it is it a bit penis shaped? Yes. Oh, I think no. I've showed you it before. The the, the oh, photo man. of it before. Yeah, uh, the Rocket Mortgage Trophy. Oh. I gotta see it now. Oh. I think that needs to be in the garage sale. I don't. What am I gonna do with that? Or my? It's three years old. It just sits in the closet. It's uh, there's nothing, no reason to hold on to it. I mean, dude, you're never gonna display that. Could you imagine? No. That would be. I, I gotta be honest. You brought a girl over to your house. And you <laughs> have that trophy up. <laughs> she's immediately leaving. Like you got her as far as she's interested enough. She's coming back to the place. Things are going great. We'll make it out on the couch, and then she looks over, catch a sight of that 
Rocket Mortgage Pick'em Contest you win think from she would leave, years you, think, ago. you think she She's would see gone. that and she would She's bolt. She's gone. But she wouldn't bolt after the weird statue of me that you had. I was going to say that. Like, that, that, might, that, that, might leave her, that might make her leave faster, but they're both making her leave. Imagine those next to each other. The doll, the doll thing or whatever, the statue thing, uh, that that's be. creepier. I still think. Where's that at right now? Is it in your closet? It's it, that's actually on the bottom shelf. See a whole nother. That's on the bottom shelf. Whole nother problem. She goes into the closet. She's just grabbing like, oh, can I borrow a T-shirt? You know, yeah. like yeah. And then she's like, the hell she's is got that? A miniature statue of herself. I'm telling you, it's less weird for like Drew to have a statue of you than me. <laughs> you having a statue of yourself comes off weirder to people who don't know why you have it. You could, I mean, easily explain it away, but you know. <laughs> Someone says right next to the, his action figure. No, that is the action figure. Basically, is the yeah. thing. That's 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 the problem. <laughs> Rocket Mortgage <laughs> trophies right next to the. I action think figure. I actually am going to bring that in, and we'll maybe put I'll that in the auction off sale. one. Which one? The action figure? The Alex Gold no, no, action no, no, figure? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> uh, Somebody that, else can own it. No, the the random Rocket Mortgage pick'em contest. that looks like not a rocket. Yeah, that seems fine. I think it's nice. It's nice for you to give up your awards. Too much stuff. I, I gave up my high school diploma once, gonna, Drew. Did you really? Got us $30 for he the Negro Leagues Baseball there, Museum. Someone is still the proud graduate of Winnetonka. That isn't me. There's just random stuff you collect. that I. That's why it's a garage sale. I'm just going to, you know what, this year I'm just going to bring in a bunch. There's, there's all kinds of stuff. I still have like, a, the beer's not, you shouldn't drink the beer. But we, one, a couple years ago, we got the, when Bud Light and the Chiefs had like one of their promotions. Yeah. It's like that nice box. Uh-huh. Bud oh, Light yeah. box. And there's three bottles of Bud Light I never touched. That we're sitting in the box. St- it's still sitting in the box. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll put in the garage sale now. Warning: Do not consume. I don't think you want the beer from four years ago. No, um, but the box, but the box maybe. is a nice box. Someone with a man cave might want it for a display mm-hmm. piece. It says Chiefs Kingdom on it and everything. It's a I nice got, little I box. I've, you know what I've been stashing that I like never use, like the giveaways I get for these games. I've got like two black jerseys from like the Roy, the 610 day at the K yeah. a couple of years ago. I've got so Oh yeah, Drew, you got to bring in some some items. We, this will be your first Cody and Garage. I was say, I'm, I'm thinking We're about We're doing it on June 12th. I believe that's the date we locked in uh yesterday. I think that was the day. We'll have okay. official details. Uh, uh we actually uh, talked to to our boss about this yesterday, but uh We think so. Yes, it is June 12th. Okay. Yeah. Yep. June 12th, Cody and Go Garage sale, the f- fourth annual, right? Fourth? I think we're up to four. Fifth year of the show next year. So yeah, fourth. fourth annual Coding Gold Garage Sale. God, what experience. More details to come. You probably are stuck with one experience. The previous the previous producer did golf with the producers, so you and Rob go take out, you know. Oh, perfect. Go do a little foursome. So, but any other stuff you have around that you want to get rid of, you know? That Joe Burrow jersey, uh, you know, I'm an opportunity to burn the Joe Burrow jersey <laughs> on the show. Those are experiences we can offer. Burn the Joe Burrow jersey. You could set a minimum on that one, you know? <laughs> 500 You let me get the jersey. 500 in bucks. Then. Someone would pay $500 if you let us Someone all the Someone would pay $250 for a hoodie once so that they could destroy it. What? If you brought in your Joe Burrow jersey and live on the show let us burn it, I bet you we could get people to ch- chip in for $500. I would. I don't I, live I, I, on the, I, I, we're going to have to burn it out. It. Someone's saying I have to do well, like out, a trash can outside. Yeah, it's like, we can't do it in the studio. The fire alarm would, would about, go off. Uh, what about an Astros jersey? No, we've had an Astros jersey in the garage sale before. We have. One, one gold got for a giveaway. When I was in... Uh, Why do you have an Astros jersey? Uh, I, I don't know. I just have an Astros jersey. I, I don't know exactly how I got that. Or Someone wants it. you to put in your, your the water-soaked silverware drawer. In sure. The, in any other, a- anybody uh, want to Car- buy that? Carrington Harrison promised he would sew a pillowcase. Mm. A Cody and Gold Out of a Cody and Gold. <laughs> Who, by the way, is putting it's that go, in their house? A Cody and Gold pillow Cody and Gold house? on their mind. You know? Uh, Hope that goes for big money. I, I do have some stuff I think that I, I can bring to the table. Yeah, we over the next couple months we'll start uh, gathering. We've already got some items still in there. In Not the, the Joe Burrow jersey though. Sorry, okay. I, I don't think I don't. I don't know if for me to ex- accept seeing it burn. Everything, do you not like I, charity? I do you not like the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum, a pillar no, of this city? <laughs> you know, not over burning Joe Burrow jersey. Wow. Mm. Okay. Okay. I love charity. That's the difference I, yeah, between char- us. Charity is great. <laughs> charity is charity is great. Uh, Seriously though, you should bring in any water damaged items from your apartment for the crowd. So. Water damaged items. Uh, a sample of the wall. He's actually actually took, one of the things he's going to auction uh, off is the remainder of his. You can sublet his apartment for the rest of the time he's <laughs> done. Yeah. Please. Yeah, you can. Here's wants, a, half off. Uh, a piece of uh, mold from the kitchen wall. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Someone says auction managing rights to your online dating profile. Absolutely not. That can get you in a lot of trouble. Woo! No way. 
somebody wants to buy a conspiracy conversation with my wife. You 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 could sit down Ooh, at a table for ten minutes and good. talk conspiracies. Coffee? coffee over conspiracies. <laughs> conspiracy and coffee. <laughs> coffee conspiracy. I like it. She I did bring up the idea for her to join uh, Club Six Ten at some point or whatever to go over the uh, go over her the conspiracy and she said yeah that's great I'll do it. Okay. So. She agreed awfully quick. My wife would ask some questions. Why do you want me in? What's going on here? All right, we didn't get a chance to build our master's card there because we started talking about Oh, my God, we were going to do that. We were. So we'll, I guess we'll do it at noon? We'll, we'll do it a little bit later <laughs> on in the show. We, we have the master's tomorrow, obviously. We'll tell you what we're betting. At Augusta, and uh, we each year for the majors, we put together a Cody and Gold betting card, and so we'll, we'll go through that as a show and see if we can build up the show fund some more. Until then, though, we'll come back with some Chiefs Red Half Hour. We'll talk a little bit more about why cornerback continues to be mentioned and thinking of mock drafts, one that has Marvin Harrison Jr. involved. Hey, it's Vinny Pasquantino. Don't forget to follow Cody and Gold on the Odyssey app so you can listen on demand to my terrific football takes throughout the year right here on 610 Sports Radio. Brought to you by Heartland Men's Health, the leader in men's sexual health. Thousands of men have been successfully treated for low T, ED, and more, all with discretion and compassion. Make your appointment at heartlandmenshealth.com. Bowling Warehouse has taken over KC with a mashup of football, bowling, drinks, and fun. And with three 15-foot televisions in the hottest bar in town, there's absolutely no better place for watch parties, get-togethers, and happy hours. And what could be better than splashing down pins at your next business event or private party? Plus, Fulling Warehouse KC is convenient for everyone off 435 and State Line. Whether it's a fun night out or a way for your organization to unwind, make your reservation now at FullingWarehouseKC.com. It's time to fool around and find out. She posted about us just now. Celebrities can't get enough of Bianca's bespoke skincare line. She has 147 million followers. How do we monetize? She needs a social media associate to help her with the hype. We should repost this. Do we need a hashtag? Indeed can help her hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. You can schedule and conduct virtual interviews all from your employer dashboard. Visit indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. Life insurance. Why are you putting it off? Can't afford it? Too much hassle? Think you don't need it? There's lots of excuses for putting off life insurance. But if you weren't there, who would pay the mortgage and other bills? With Ethos, you could be covered in 10 minutes and boom, family protected. Ethos, fast and easy online term life insurance. Up to $2 million in coverage with no medical exam. Some policies as low as a dollar a day. Answer a few health questions and get your free quote at getethos.com. That's getethos.com. Congratulations to the Kansas City Chiefs. Another year, another Super Bowl. Did you know that the Chiefs won the Super Bowl in their first year of their partnership with Window World? And here we are, five years in. The Chiefs are a dynasty, and they're still going strong with Window World as the official window of the Kansas City Chiefs. Window World windows are one of two windows with a good housekeeping seal of approval. Ranked number one in number of windows sold in the country by Qualified Remodeler Magazine in just over 20 years of business. They have improved the look and thermal efficiency of over 54,000 customers right here in Kansas City. So be sure to call this number, 816-799-0820. Learn more about the double-strength glass that gives a strength that's not commonly used in replacement windows. Learn more about their products that are not only durable, but offer security, beauty, and energy efficiency. Give my friends at Window World a call. That's 816-799-0820. 816-799-0820 to learn more or also go on the website windowworld.com. He's a former coach with two sons who played professional basketball. Satch Sullinger is a competitive individual, but his golf game was suffering because of painful joints. Right, that's real important. The golf game. Right. As we get older, we create these bad habits because we're relegated to hit a certain way. QC Kinetics used regenerative treatments, all natural healing properties from Satch's own body to restore those damaged joints and get his golf game back on track. QC Kinetics Regenerative Medicine is regenerating me, all natural. And that's what I'm about. I'm going to tell everybody why I'm better. Oh, and by the way, it looks like the competitive Satch is back. We're all in the same boat, and I'm getting better, and I'm watching them stay old. Go to QCKinetics.com. Get relief and your game back. Call for your complimentary consultation. Call QC Kinetics, 816-412-6299. That's 816-412-6299. 816-412-6299. Syntec Premium Full Synthetic Motor Oil is formulated for today's engines. Available only at O'Reilly Auto Parts. 
at Wendy's have a revolutionary new product for you. Introducing the new Orange Dreamsicle Frosty. It's like a time machine that takes you all the way back to now, the year 2024. It's the classic creamy, orangey flavor you remember. Dare I say, it's new timey. It's the flavor you grew up with, just all grown up. Head over to your local Wendy's establishment and get yours while supplies last. The new Orange Dreamsicle Frosty. Here for the now, for now. Limited time only at participating Wendy's. Syntec Premium Full Synthetic Motor Oil is formulated for today's engines. Available only at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Thanks for calling Discover. This is Gabby. Hey, Gabby. It's Jennifer Coolidge. Hi. I'm, I'm so glad I reached you at 2 a.m. Oh, of course. Anyone with a Discover card can call and talk to a real person 24-7. Now, how can I help? Yeah, I used my Discover card to buy these yellow pleather pajamas, and I'm just not sure I'm pulling them off. 24-7 U.S.-based customer service. It pays to Discover. Limitations apply. Learn more at discover.com slash credit card. <laughs> Chiefs Kingdom. This is Mitch Holtis and welcome in to the Chiefs Red Half Hour on Cody and Gold. Every day at 1130 on your official broadcast partner, the Chiefs. 610 Sports Radio. Coming up in one hour, we'll talk with Josh Vernier, our Royals insider. About this five-game winning streak for the Royals. They continue their series against the Astros later on tonight. Seth Lugo on the bump for the Royals. And uh, I hope to keep this thing rolling, man. It's been fun already. It's only April 10th, but uh, it's been a while since we even had uh, first couple weeks of a season like this where there was real reason and it doesn't seem fluky. I'm not telling you they're going to p- win the, the pacing stat that they're on, which is over 100 games. No, duh. But I mean, I'd be cool with that. I would as well. Uh, but the reasons they're winning, they're not fluky reasons, I guess is what I'm getting at. They're getting contributions throughout the order. They're getting great starting pitching. And even in the night where their starting pitcher was off, the bullpen gives you five yep. scoreless. So we'll talk more about that a little bit later on. But it is the Chiefs red half hour. And we've been having fun with all the mock drafts. You hear the mock draft sounder. We're going to take a look at another one here in a little bit and also a scenario uh, that is potentially out there with the Arizona Cardinals at pick number four. Uh, but Legereus Sneed gets traded to the Titans. Okay. So you lose one of the better corners in football. You still have Trent McDuffie. You've got Jalen Watson and you got Joshua Williams and you got Jamari Connor currently on the roster. And so many of these mocks have the Chiefs, though, that we've gone through taking a corner in the first round, and I I still don't really understand why that's something that people think the Chiefs need to do. I think that that doesn't... I think that's a little bit of smoke. I think that the Chiefs must be telling some people that for so many of the mocks. And Drew, you look them up all the time because you run the mock draft sounder for us and all that stuff. More and more and more corner. More and more and more tackle. But, like, corner has really risen up the ranks. Mm -hmm. One of them trading up for a corner. Again, for like the second time in three years because they just did it for Trent McDuffie. I think it's because it's how their defense was built. And I think the Chiefs see that. I think the Chiefs understand one very fundamental thing about the way that they're constructed over the next five years. Because of that contract for Chris Jones, everybody on the defensive line can't be paid. I think Carl Loftus might also get paid, which means everyone else on the defensive line needs to be low cost, draft, or other things. Or the identity of your defense can be what it was last year, which is... Our defensive line will always play better because we have the best secondary in football. And because Trent McDuffie, I think, by the end of the year, could end up being the best corner in football by consensus. I think he might already be that. Then if you have another elite level corner, you are almost impossible to throw against in a passing league. Maybe this is the shift. I keep waiting for the shift because it hasn't happened yet. In a league where every wide receiver is great and seemingly there are just more and more coming into league every second. Corner might become a higher priority position. Defensive line is flatlined and price corner has gone up. Maybe you want that in the draft going in there. I just think that that's how they built their team. I don't think it's out of the question. I think best player available and corner is more likely to be the best player available than defensive line or then tackle at that point. That last part is true that if we're just talking about 
positionally and how how teams are going to draft and x amount of quarterbacks are going to go off the bo- go off the board a couple offensive linemen and the run on wide receivers that is it more likely you can get one of the the two best corners at 32 let's say or the the top three wide receiver obviously it's more likely to get the top sure. two corner or perceived top two corner at 32 so yeah i, I i'm totally with you there I, I just think with the exception of trading up for mcduffie which turned out to be a great decision uh, they have also usually found and chose to draft corners and safeties in those middle rounds. And so I think they're going to draft a corner in this draft. They should. I mean, they, absolutely. I just don't know at pick 32 if that's the pick I want to make, especially just the side of the ball it's on. Like, I, I'm kind of at the point this year, I want an offensive player at 32, or I want to trade out of the first round. That's kind of where I'm at heading in the next 15 days before the draft, um, at barring something drastically shifting with uh, an, another move they make. Or they do what the morning show is talking about, and they just trade up for Marvin Harrison Jr., yeah, that, that they got to get to what pick five. That came four, I think. Uh, that, that that came because the report out of Arizona is that uh, the Cardinals are looking for three first round picks if someone wants to move up to that spot. Now that's a huge asking price, and we all know that you can ask for whatever you want. It doesn't mean you're going to get it. Uh, so that brought up their uh, their hypothetical today, or I don't know, maybe it was a hypothetical of trading the next three first round picks including this year's for marvin harrison jr and look marvin harrison jr I mean, is gonna be incredible but would you do it no he's for gonna be three first round he's picks? gonna be incredible no i'm not and i know that typically- whatever they don't have to trade three first round picks for a quarterback so just do it for a different great player yeah but i don't need to we, we just i don't know i gotta look on the rundown <laughs> uh, like 20 minutes ago 25 hold on minutes. those are different circumstances just, just, you were talking about marvin harrison jr just, in that just scenario. 25 minutes ago and i agreed with you i think you said on the show, don't trade that the yeah. best thing. I'm just trying to offer the other side of it. Okay, that Brett, that's fine. You want to play devil's advocate? That's cool. I was saying we just had a discussion. Like, I hey, said, get, don't trade up. I said trade Brett back. Beach as many picks as possible, and now we're it's saying it's different. He doesn't need as many picks if one of those is Marvin Harrison Jr. <laughs> though. You know, like you see how like there's an exception to every rule. He's the exception <laughs> in that scenario. I don't know. I've given up three. I told you I'd give up multiple, but the problem is it's going to require them to have a. For the year that they, like, go up and get, I've always made, like, the comp to the Julio Jones trade, where that team was already good, and they still went up to nine to get their dude, which I do want the Chiefs to eventually do. It actually requires them to have a down year, as in, like, they're picking in the 20s somewhere. What's not they're picking the damn 20s. They've been picking at 32 because they keep, or 31 last year because the Dolphins had that pick taken away. Whatever, but they they have to... Not just move up. Yeah, I'm just not giving up three first round no. picks for one player. And look, I think Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to be a stud in this league. I, I think honestly, Malik Neighbors has a chance to be just as good, and he's projected to be the number two wide receiver uh, taken in this draft. But that that's the report that was out of Arizona that three first round picks. And it's true that text line makes a fair point. Three first round picks, and I doubt they want them to be picked 32. You know what I mean? You know, well, so, yeah. Because I'll tell you right now, if they had Marvin Harrison Jr., it is a 100 percent chance that he's winning the Super Bowl next year. Like, how would they not? Like, I mean, honest, like, tell me how they wouldn't. Tell me the scenario that exists in which that team doesn't win the Super Bowl. Yeah, it's just. With Kelsey and Marvin Harrison Jr. and Hollywood Brown and Rasheed Rice and most of her returning defense. Yeah, because we can, we, can, we can play the game of, well, look what their first round picks have been, positive and negative, and would you trade these players? Because on the positive end, remember what you got for your first round pick the last couple of years. Yeah, one of them, we can go on the negative side in a second. The top, the positives are Karloftis and Trent McDuffie. Mm-hmm. So those are the, the quality of player, theoretically, you can get with your first round pick. There's obviously years in which you, you miss Clyde, and we'll find out about Felix and Yudike Uzama after this season, all right? So those are the, that's what we're talking about in terms of first-round picks. So basically, in your mind, that, those type of players, you could have the high end, and you, you hit on a corner. And you it's George have, Karloftis, you, and you got 10 sacks. You could have a low end where you whiff on a running back that, that is still on this team, actually. But, but, but uh, He got a second contract. <laughs> he got a second contract. Um, one of your deals, in my opinion, don't count as second correct. contract. Correct. No, that's why the Mike Dana is the one that's really yeah. real. He's the first player drafted by Veach to get an extension is how I, like... A real extension. Um, but no, I, I, I wouldn't trade three first-round picks now. No, not for Mario. I, I don't care. I mean, you might not even have to get up to five, technically, to get him according to what some people are saying. Oh. So, wait, is hold this, on. So, you, so I'm listening? the Cardinals, there's a thought that they're going to actually trade out of four? Because the Cardinals pick fourth, right? Well, I don't know if it's trade out of four, but I... Oh, but I heard I, this. I, I think that, yeah, there's a potential for this to happen. Uh, where was that? Let me find Not it. Not even that Marvin, not even that a wide receiver doesn't get taken by the Cardinals, but that it's not even Marvin Harrison. 
Well, I know everybody's. This is all. This is where I, I fade the smoke. All of a sudden, everybody loves Malik Neighbors more than Marvin Harrison Jr. I'll take the guy that, for the last two years, everybody said was the better guy. Here you go. Here's what Matt Miller over at ESPN, yeah. draft expert, had to say. He says that Marvin Harrison might not be the first wide receiver. That's something back at the Senior Bowl. I had a, a report in one of our draft notebooks about that. That a handful of teams at that time thought Malik Neighbors was the top receiver in the class. So I'm not surprised to hear that. You know, I think if the three of us sat down in a room together and watched film on these wide receivers, we would all probably end up with different things we liked about each of them. That's what's happening now. And especially as you scout for an individual scheme like the Arizona Cardinals, you're probably going to want something different than a team like the Buffalo Bills might want or like the Los Angeles Chargers might want. So I think that's where some of the discrepancy comes in is for your scheme, Malik Neighbors with that awesome speed and yards after catch ability might be more attractive to you than, you know, this true vertical receiver who's a great route runner in Marvin Harrison Jr. Or maybe you look at what San Francisco has done with two really like bullies playing wide receiver, and you would love Roma Dunze because you want that 215-pound guy that's just going to dominate on 50-50 balls. So I think some of it comes down to the type of quarterback you have and then the type of offense you run and, and trying to decide which of those wide receivers best fits what you want but those are those are the three. The order they come off the board, I think, will be one of the most fascinating parts of the first round. Huge if you, look, I think Malik Neighbors is going to be good, but don't do this. Look, if you if you think the Cardinals at four, staying there and drafting Neighbors instead of Marvin Harrison Jr., then please go and bet Malik Neighbors at seventeen to one. That's the discrepancy. Ooh, you can get it seventeen to one to go number four, but that's tricky because if they trade the pick, then the team that's trading up is getting a quarterback, not a wide mm-hmm. receiver. So they're not that's taking, why they're not trading up from Malik Neighbors, right? So Marvin Harrison Jr. is minus two hundred to go fourth to Arizona, or just fourth. I should stop saying the team he, to go fourth overall. To go fourth, yeah. and then JJ McCarthy is four to one. Drake Mays plus plus seven hundred. Jaden Daniels eleven to one. He'll probably already be off the board. Uh, Malik Neighbors seventeen to one. Roma Dunze fifty to one. I wonder just based on that conversation. I know it's only one pick. But what would, if the Chargers, because scheme-wise, they just lost Mike Williams. Yeah. Marvin Harrison Jr. is a go-get-the-ball guy. How would you not it, take it, Mike Williams for if, your quarterback? If you or, are... Or, Mar- or Marvin Harrison. Or Marvin Harrison, Harrison yeah, sorry. It, so if you're the Chargers, to move up one spot to four, what would it take to get... If you know, like, I, and I know that there's... It. That's the, the, the worst the way to move up, in my opinion. Because then I think you can just make the argument, screw it, I'll take Malik Neighbors. Because if the argument is, both these guys are great, then why the hell are you moving up one spot? It's not quarterback. Again, different. You saw how bad the 49ers got fleeced on. You know, like, are the 49ers fleeced? Somebody on their deal and then got, it's just not, oh, I man, think for Matt just, said, it's like scheme fit, though. Like, if, if, if Arizona. If you can't make Marvin Harrison Jr. fit in your scheme, you're a bad coach. You're bad at the NFL. He's great at yeah. everything. Like, the scheme is, like, wide receiver scheme is overrated. Like, well, I'd like him to fit my scheme. I got Justin Herbert. If the wide receiver can't fit my scheme, I'm really screwing something. At, at five, that's elite-level talent. Elite-level talent at wide receiver to me is schemeless. Does that, you know, like, is there a scheme like Malik Neighbors? Maybe he's slightly better for one. What, is he not going to work in the Chiefs offense? Won't work in the Bengals? No. Yeah, if he's that special He'll player, work. I'm with you. That's like, yes. Justin Jefferson, he was playing with Kirk Cousins. If he ends up playing... In New York with Daniel Jones, do I think there's oh, the a slight, system, do I think there's a different. slight dip in production? I do, but he's still going to be great. But I do think there's something to be said. At some point, there's limitations, right? Like, I, w- would we be talking about Justin Jefferson in the exact same way if Daniel Jones was his quarterback the whole time no. instead of Kirk Cousins? No, I, I don't that's think a quarterback. So. That's not a right. scheme fit. Yes. That's bad quarterback Correct. versus good right. quarterback. Yeah, those are like if Kirk Cousins was playing in New scheme. York or. Minnesota, because those are differently run yeah. offenses. Well, I think I still think Justin Jefferson would be great in both. Right. The, I just the, think you design your scheme around the quarterback, though. But yeah. If the Chiefs had... I'm just saying, like, choose a better quarterback. Choose well, Lamar if, Jackson. If the Chiefs, would Justin Jefferson be as good with Lamar Jackson? If the Chiefs were able to pick both of them, they would pick Marvin Harrison Jr. because they've already got the Yak guy and Rasheed Rice, where Marvin Harrison Jr. throw him the ball and he's going to get it wherever he is. Where neighbors, he can do that, but he's the speed guy. Rasheed Rice is a little bit like the speed guy. He's the Yak guy. So they, I think they already have, have that in guys. the... I think, yeah. yeah, I think you can too, but in terms of what it's, you would, it, what, what do you need more? I mean, it's, yeah. they're both going to be good picks, but yeah, look, it's, it's fun. To, always fun to talk about these names. I try not to spend too much time in Kansas city talking about neighbors or Harrison. Cause I, yeah, it's frankly, unrealistic. Yeah, it's just, happening. Like let's, you know, let's be a little realistic with it, but this is what's fun about the draft time. And cause the, there's so much speculation, so much, so much noise around each individual draft pick. Uh, look, I'll, I'll, I'll take the trade off of being uh back-to-back champions, uh, but there is some some fun of 
being the team that has a chance to go get a player that truly is going to be a game changer immediately. Uh, yeah, but you, I, know, you know what? I'll I know, the trade, the trade off. Off. I'll take it's the trade It's probably worth it. Yeah. Those players in the top 10 are fun. Yes. Speaking of which. Another mock draft 15 days away. Another one. Mel Kuyper this time coming out with one today. It's a two-rounder. Oh, two Hold on. That's not just any mock draft. That's a big boy no, mock draft. A, Mel a, Kuyper Jr. The guy. Ooh. The guy. Not whatever joke guy you gave us yesterday. Whatever Look, that, I, I like to spread it whatever, around. Okay? Whatever that guy's name was. I like to you spread it around. You remember that guy's name? Vinny Iyer. Vinny Sporting Iyer. news. That was the whole thing. Yeah, that's right. Remember? That's right. They offered Sporting me a job. Can't that's be right. taken seriously. That's right. I had that's zero writing. They've never even seen a writing sample of mine. <laughs> Someone did, though, I, I, I don't know, last year, you know, we mentioned Mel Kuyper's the biggest name and all that, but someone, just like they do for Bracketology, they do, like, ratings of, like, who's the most accurate, mm-hmm. like, truly. So it's, down ne- there? it's never, like, the top, the, the, be- the biggest name that's at the top of the list from last, Daniel Jeremiah is one of the best. He was top six last year, and he, he was the biggest name on the board that was ranked that high. And some of the other guys, you got to go much further down the list. Sounds like we need a Daniel Jeremiah mock here soon. But still, man, he's a big name, so we got we to listen to a Mel Kuyper mock. All right, I'm assuming they got Caleb Williams one. At this point, it seems consensus. Jaden Daniels two, Drake May three. Is that where they're going? Yes. Okay. And then JJ McCarthy at five. Oh, to Minnesota. The, oh, I was about to say who traded up? Vikings. They have no. They got Justin Jefferson, no quarterback. So it does make sense. Yeah, Sam Darnold. <clears throat> oh, and, and, that, right. and that and that trade is with the Chargers. Okay. Uh, obviously, in that. What the return is doesn't matter, but they they have the Chargers taking J.C. Latham offensive tackle at 11. Okay. Quinion Mitchell going to the Broncos at 12. Talese Fuaga going to the Raiders at 13. And then all the way down at 32, Xavier Leggett, wide receiver at South Carolina. That's a, a different name. A, a favorite on the text line has been mentioned many times over the course of the last couple of months, actually, by by people who have texted in. Uh, wide receiver at South Carolina. Got, got size. He's fast. A lot of people like what he could be. In the Chiefs offense. Is he, so, look, this is, again, speaks to the amount of college football I watch. Drew, size. Is he tall or is he tall and big? Or is he, like, tall and, like, paper thin, you know? Uh, he He's tall, big, and fast. He's 6'3", 227. Oh, my God. Yeah, that was mis- that was a college stat, though. The combine, he was 6'1", 221. Still, 220 for I wide know, receivers. Thick. Two inches it's, is a difference. 6'1", 220 is a big wide receiver. That's a big boy. But no doubt. 6'3 made it seem even better. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, 6'3, <laughs> you're like, yes. Uh, no, but that, I mean, Justin Jefferson's probably 6'1, right? Yeah, there's not many 6'3 wide receivers he, he, in the NFL. He ran, he ran 4'3, 40 as well. So he's 220, 220 pounds around 4'3 a 4'3. Four, three, three, four, three, Oh, okay. So that's pretty much still, a 4'3. I mean, for that's years still fast. we've talked about I, I I still think, you know, it's usually not the type of wide receiver, but. I, I still would love to see with Patrick Mahomes in particular, just a, a big wide receiver that can go up and grab the football. Like Tyreek Hill, he wasn't big, but he was great at going and getting the football and Tyreke high pointing the tall. football. I mean, he knew how to high point. Yeah. For his size high, high pointing the football, obviously having a, a, a good vertical and all that. But like, I would like for once Deep ball to have a wide receiver that is just <laughs> tall and big and can go up and get a football. And like, Easy, yeah. Can Leg it track a deep ball? What's his, it's a skill set there. So you know to track a deep ball? Yeah, yes. I, I think that's part of the that's part yeah. of the strength is that he 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 he's super athletic, can go get the football, and and with his speed and his size, a deep threat, hard for corners to to compete against him because he's two hundred and twenty pounds. He's a big dude. Lance Zerline over at NFL Network. Here, I'll just read you his uh, here's his description. So, powerful. Uh, Hold on, I'm gonna guess words okay. before you say it. Okay, he's gonna say powerful. Okay, deceptively fast. Okay. <laughs> um. What else we got here? Um, uh, great hips. Well, it starts with hips. <laughs> Good. Good. Leggett is winner, winner. tight hipped. Tight hip. Oh, no. He's got bad with, hips. With a linear release that makes him susceptible to press. He Damn. uses his route running simply as a means of getting the rendezvous point. Rather, I love this. Like, just throw in as many different words as possible. Bad and a chance hips. to con coverage out of position. His star shines brightest once the ball goes up. He's able to use his body control, play strength, and ball skills to impose his will on the coverage. He's unlikely to become a smooth route runner, but he can handle tough catches, and he has stealth acceleration that makes him a credible deep ball threat. Add toughness as a runner, run blocker to his profile of competitiveness, and he becomes a day two talent with the potential to develop into a starter. He's MVS, but has no, but, don't, but, don't, but goes and gets the football. He's MVS, but goes and gets the football. He's fast. You're going to scare off a lot of people if you start saying he's MVS plus something else. No, no. 
if people rewind outside of the drops and all this, he was open a lot of the time that he got the football on those deep mm. passes. Xavier Leggett will go get it where MVS let it let the ball come to him. This how, part, how, how's this vertical? Remember when we looked up MVSs and it turned I out he didn't have 40. 40. Is that good? Yeah, 40 is pretty good. I need like a Raz score on this thing. Because remember we looked at MVS and it turned out he couldn't jump high. I had asked, I is it simply that well he's not good at it or does he just not do it? Hey, by the way, I'm seeing this Mel Kuyper one's a two-round mock. Who do you have in the second round? MVS is just for real quick comparison. MVS uh, vertical was 30 and a half compared to 40. So Woo! Good 10 Lord. inches better. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. What was the second round a for Mel? A familiar name that we've seen. Uh, Kingsley okay. Suamataia. Okay. So wait, some people have him at 32 and some people have him at 64? And I think it's because the reason why, I, I think the reason huh. why. I don't like him at 32 anymore. The reason why is because the the the, the run and tackles. How big of a need is the tackle position at that point? Like that that I think yeah. it, now, if, look, if they don't take a tackle in the if, if they don't take a tackle in the first round and he's not available, they might not go offensive line until like round three or four. That's probably that's fair what, to say. That's what might but happen. If this if this guy falls to the second round, then and they're able to get what they Correct. view was they viewed him the same way for uh, not having to use a premium pick first round pick on him. Obviously, these mock draft. I actually will say it based on the ratings. Lance Erline was in the top, I think, twenty five of most accurate, Ooh. which sounds great. But compared to some others, it's actually pretty good. You know what I like about this is that we can compare our accuracy to mm-hmm. those. Although in fairness. I'm basing my draft guesses off of their guesses. Does that make sense? Some of it. Some <laughs> like, of it. I'm not. Some of it. Well, uh, dude, I'm not going to know who's going to be picked at 27 first, unless other people tell me. First round, though, I think is a lot easier for you to just, you sure. can look up needs of a team. Now, not like second, third, fourth round. I have no idea. But first round, I think you can actually, if you look like what you can easily look at and find out what the needs are for X team, and then you can deviate yeah. your S- different Sky Fox oh. over on Twitch, true. He gave you a better example rather than calling him uh, MVS, but can go deep. Because of his size, right? He's 6'1", 220. He's, He's just fast Wayne Bow. Uh, yeah. A lot of people saying DK Metcalf. A lot of people from size. Yeah. Here's why. If, if, by the way, if that's the comparison, that's who he is. I will love it because then maybe we can finally stop with the damn McCall Hardman Metcalf <laughs> stuff. <laughs> but may, that, that'll that make me so happy. If, if That'll be a good day they, for you, man. If they you draft know? Legat, and that's what we all determined. I thought we could kill that <laughs> once, he, uh, thought, once he won the... He I had a game-winning touchdown in the Super Bowl. Look, would I still prefer that they? But sure. But I'm not, am I going to get hung up on it anymore? Cody, I, in, no. ter- in terms of uh, your RAS score, you rank 24th out of 3,063 wide receivers from 1987 Ooh. to 2024. Beautiful. 1987. His, he's probably twice as fast as his, any of those dudes. His 40-yard dash is considered elite. His 20-yard split, elite. 10-yard split, elite. Vertical, elite. Broad jump. Yeah, was very elite. Vertical is someone says forty in Madden would have a ninety-eight. Oh, the score! So you'd have a ninety-eight rating. Yeah. Okay. That gives me enough. Madden rankings help me. His Thank rise you. is a nine point nine two out of ten. A different. Woo! He'd just be a different type of wide receiver than what they've had under oh. Andy Reid, which would excite me a little bit. If, so if, if, let's if, see this photo of him. If Marvin Harrison Jr. He's just a tank. If Marvin Harrison Jr. If you if you took if you got rid of the top three wide receivers in the draft, he's taken. He might be. He's in the conversation. I think for. Top three overall. Top he's our, two. Okay. He's our DK Metcalf. There it is. That's uh, he's our DK Metcalf. I'm starting to fall in love. I was talking Lad McConkey the other day. I didn't I didn't do enough research on Leggett. I might I might get talk myself into this one. We kips though. I don't know about the we kips. That concerns me. What did I say? Actually, uh, tight tight hips. Tight hips. Don't like tight hips. Nobody I think I think the hips. reason why is it I think it, it sounds just based on the scouting report that he's a bit limited in in terms of route running. Where, well, then he is MVS. Where, for example, Your comparison no, to first that, time. That's what right. I'm saying. He's Looking a great vertical threat. But he's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. But MVS fast. wasn't a great vertical threat. No, you know, he was, but he just never tracked the football. Well, that means you're not a great vertical threat. When he was in Green Bay, he was a, he was a deep threat. That, that's all he was. <laughs> I, I know. But you're I, not a good one. I, I know that. You are a deep threat. That was the quality his, of which. It's like, I'm a singer, but am I a good one? No. That was the category of wide receiver he is, but he doesn't yeah, mean. Yes. <laughs> the same build, I guess. Yes. I mean. Yeah, Leggett is way yeah. bigger than MVS. Yeah, from a size perspective, for yeah. sure. He also says he's got a hilarious country accent. Interested. Well, he's from South Carolina, or played in South Carolina. I know, I don't feel like we've got enough. Uh... I mean, do we have to? What? Am I, is this something that we're going to look up, along with the Reese accent, or should we wait until he gets drafted? I'll, I'll fill you in, man. If they, Whoever they draft, we will learn everything about that person mm-hmm. for the next day or two. Like, mm-hmm. any little clip we can find, whoever they end up drafting. will be talking about how his high school coach paid him in Pop-Tarts. <laughs> you know, like, they'll be in deep. <laughs> we'll be in way too deep. Whoever that first player is, yeah. There's a lot of really good wide receivers. In, in, day, in, day, in day two. He's unlike any prospect we've ever seen from Josh Norris and the underdog fantasy crew. Wait. 
He's unlike any prospect we've ever seen. I thought Josh Norris was the guy who did baseball, so I was confused. Well, they call up in baseball fantasy. today. If that holiday's was, kids coming up to the bigs for the Orioles, we're going to have to see him in a week. That's true. I, I will say, if that was the common consensus, though, there's no way that he'd be I at 32. I, agree. I mean, he, he'd be Brian Tom, He'd be in the Brian Thomas range at, in, in the yeah. teens if he was. No, I, I got Yeah, you. but I like that a player that, that is six foot one, two twenty, productive in college, runs fast, physical, is available at 32. Sometimes those guys go 17. True. Yeah. No, okay. We're we're now getting uh, we're two weeks out or so. From the NFL draft, it's going to be a ton of fun. And, yeah, I, w- I will admit, uh, finally having a wide receiver that's a little bit bigger. Wide receiver, uh, would, offensive would nice. tackle. I think you guys, I think would everybody be... would take that. Yes. Uh, real quick, this is completely unrelated, but it is the Chiefs Red Half Hour, and it's related. We've had a lot of stories about super fans in sports, and obviously we know the, the track record in Kansas City right now with super fans, not great. One's behind bars. Well, maybe two. I don't know. One for sure is behind bars. I don't know about the other one. Uh, He's been behind bars at some time. And, I don't think he actively is. Okay. I'll just read, uh, just without getting into detail, what is up with super fans? Is there, is there, I know there's a normal one out there. Is this somewhere. like a cheese half hour cha- trash of the day? What is it? What happened? Phoenix Sun super fan, Mr. Orange, has been arrested. Um, oh, on? Mr. Uh, Orange. He, he was, the other, he was uh, in, the, in the stands the other day. Who is it? Yeah, like no, child sex crimes? That's or something? exactly what it is. Oh, no. Uh, the point being is, are there, is there a normal super fan out there? I just asked. No. I think you have to have just a little bit of a screw it. loose to be a super fan. I think you got to be like a little crazy to be like, this is my that identity. It's more than a screw loose. And I say that as a person who. Loves attention. Okay? <laughs> I'm aware of who I am. So do you. I don't think you get into this line of business if you yeah, don't you like yourself a little, a little you gotta bit. you got to have a little bit. A little bit of that, like, please. I, I'm just, I'm begging. Please, just, not, not begging, but like a little. There's times. But, I mean, like, he's super fan. I mean, you got one that's Robin Banks. He named Banks. himself after a murderer in Reservoir yeah. Dogs. How the hell yeah. am I supposed to take that serious? Well, I, just, I don't know. Maybe he had the nickname first. Like, I know there, there, there's got to be somebody out there. But it, the, the track record right now of super fans in sports is not it, good. It seems like it's professional super fans that have the problem where... The semi-pro ones are fine. <laughs> where, 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 where college super fans like a Big Nut for Ohio State... Pause. <laughs> <laughs> have you guys seen That's his name? No, no. Go- Google him right now. Big Nut? I'm not yes. sure I should Google that on the company Wi-Fi. Yeah. You'll be fine. Google Big Nut Ohio State. This dude, he is. The more covered. details you give on the he, search, the worse it's going to get. He is. Do you think we can win enough on the golf bets this year to finally get a mascot for the show? By the way, no, yeah, we've talked about that. I, I save that for another desperately day. want a mascot for the show. How much is it going to cost? To get a costume that is um, the right amount of quality that this show deserves, we need over a thousand bucks. I've done a lot of research on it, so it's a lot of money for a costume. This guy looks like a idiot. Someone says Fireman Ed is <laughs> a good dude for the Jets. That's true. Everything I've heard, he so seems like a great guy. So or fire. At least he's got he's got a pass you can track down. It's pretty evident. He's Fireman Ed. Was he really a yeah. fireman? I believe so. Yeah. It's a little bit different. I, he he's in the super fan category, but he's very low on the list to me because he doesn't. I don't know, man. He's one of the few I can name. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, he's known, but in terms of like just. Pure, I guess, fanatic craziness. Fireman Ed has also been charged with simple assault. Oh, well. So, yeah, that makes him a little not all that innocent, is he? He was shoving, he was fighting with a gi- Giants fan. Again? <laughs> That's okay, man. Yeah, it's okay. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> These professional. That seems more normal, uh, Cody. The professional super fans. Mm. Okay. That's the Chiefs Red Half Hour. Up next, we get to watch trending. We'll try to eventually build out our uh, Masters betting card for tomorrow, and we'll get back into a five-game winning streak for the Royals and why last night was even more promising. Hey, it's Brady Singer. You're listening to Cody and Gold. Weekdays starting at 10 on 610 Sports Radio and the Odyssey app. Brought to you by Heartland Men's Health, the leader in men's sexual health. Thousands of men have been successfully treated for low T, ED, and more, all with discretion and compassion. Make your appointment at heartlandmenshealth.com. Hey, it's Gold again talking about Dury Vision and a decision that I made almost three years ago. It was a decision that I was almost not willing to make. It was pretty simple. Do I pick up the phone and call Dury Vision for a free consultation? I was worried, am I going to be told yet again that uh, you're not a candidate for LASIK? Your your eyes aren't going to work for this? Because that was what I was told many, many, many years ago. But technology changes, your eyes change, and you simply got to call the best in Kansas City when it comes to your vision needs. That's what I did. Dury Vision can be reached at 913-491-3330. 
and they told me after taking all these images of my eye that they could put a plan in place. And they showed me what that plan was. And a few days later, I underwent LASIK, and now I don't need contacts. I don't need glasses. It truly has been the best decision I have made. And you just have to find out if you're a candidate as well by Give them a call for that consultation at 913-491-3330 or go online to durryvision.com and tell them gold from 610 sent you. Look, career uncertainty is not fun. That's why we keep recommending our friends over at Centric. Whether it's the 1,500 companies they work for, the better pay, the career advancement gold, we just know that we love sending you to a great company who can help get you a better career. When they get the relationships, I mean, that's so key. We know in any line of work, any career, you want to have somebody that's there to guide you that has the relationships, and they do at Centric. I love hearing about our listeners who went to Centric. My nephew went there. He talked to Russ Mondry, our guy, too. It's the only guy you're going to talk to. Go to Centric.com slash 610 and find out how you can start your new career in IT. Bet the NBA with a no-sweat same-game parlay from FanDuel every Thursday with TNT Thursdays. It doesn't matter if you're new to the app or if you already have an account. You'll get bonus bets back if your same-game parlay doesn't win on any NBA on TNT game. The NBA same-game parlays are the perfect way to combine your bets for a chance at an even bigger payout. However you want to play, just head to FanDuel.com, use my promo code CDOT to bet the NBA with a no-sweat same-game parlay every TNT Thursdays. That's FanDuel.com slash CDOT. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NFL and also 610 Sports Radio. 21 and present in Kansas. Minimum three-leg parlay required. Refund issued a novel drawable bonus bets that expire seven days after a street. Max refund $5 unless otherwise specified. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under agreement Kansas Star Casino, LLC. Gambling problem? Getting help is your best bet. Call 1-800-522-4700 or visit ksgamblinghelp.com. Spring is in the air, and that means one thing. Dandelions are coming. Don't let those annoying yellow weeds invade your lawn again. This year, trust your lawn to Ryan Lawn and Tree. This is Larry Ryan. No other lawn care company delivers the results that Ryan Lawn and Tree delivers. More than just providing a beautiful dandelion-free lawn. Your trusted pros in the clean red trucks make sure your entire landscape is healthy, strong, and ready to look great no matter what nature throws at it. And unlike the other guys, the pros at Ryan Lawn and Tree are employee owners, full-time professionals going above and beyond every day with five-star customer service. Call us or click ryanlawn.com today. And as a new customer, you'll save 50% on your first lawn application. Enjoy a worry-free, effort-free, dandelion-free lawn this year with Ryan Lawn and Tree. Hey, it's Kling. There are many reasons I love Hy-Vee. The great values, the selection, the service, and I love to rack up fuel savers. And you can as well. Shop Hy-Vee on Monday, earn a fuel discount equal to the high temperature on Sunday and the amount you spend. If the high is 68 degrees on Sunday, I'll save 68 cents per gallon when I spend $68 on Monday. Heat up the savings every Monday through April 29th only at Hy-Vee. Must look up code 80007 to check out or promo code heat up when shopping online. See store for details. The best deals at the pump happen when you shop the aisles of Hy-Vee with help from the first Warm 5 weather team. This is KCTV5 Chief Meteorologist Luke Doris. Watch KCTV5 Sunday night at 10 for our official high temperature. Whatever it was on Sunday means you save on Monday with your Hy-Vee Perks card. If the high was 63 degrees, you save 63 cents a gallon when you spend at least $63. Watch First Warn 5 weather on KCTV 5 this Sunday at 10. Is switching your wireless service to Total by Verizon easy? Totalmente. And you get unlimited 5G data, $25 a line for four lines on the unlimited plan, at an amazing price with no contracts. Should you switch to Total by Verizon? Definitely. Uh, I mean, Totalmente. find a store or switch suavemente at totalbyverizon.com. Monthly rate when you activate without a pay, plus taxes and fees. Discount begins the month after you enroll. Additional terms apply. See website for data management practices. As an educator, Mr. Nelson's teachings are still being quoted in schools. Education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. Mr. Nelson taught hope. Everyone can rise above their circumstances if they are dedicated and passionate. And giving our best efforts. It's always impossible until it's done. Mr. Nelson Mandela's teachings not only united a nation, they inspire us today. Inspiration. Pass it on from PassItOn.com.
Gas, groceries, utilities, you name it. The price of everything is going up. And if you're stuck in a bad timeshare with rising maintenance fees, the financial burden can be crushing. It is time to get your finances in order and get the real facts about that timeshare that you are stuck in and your options to get rid of it. Chuck McDowell, founder of Wesley Financial Group, has been helping families out of horrible timeshares for over 10 years and has put together a complete timeshare exit information kit that he will send you absolutely free. To date, over 30,000 families have trusted Wesley Financial Group to help them out of financial hardship by getting them out of bad timeshares. Get the facts about how the timeshare industry works and your options for cancellation. Simply call Wesley now for your free timeshare exit kit and see how you can become timeshare free. Call 800-462-3333. That's 800-462-3333. Once again, 800-462-3333. You're listening to 610 Sports Radio from the Mission Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling Studios. Subscribe to the 610 Sports KC YouTube page for exclusive video content from Cody and Gold on your official broadcast partner of the Chiefs and your home for Royals baseball. 610 Sports Radio. KCSB Kansas City. WDAF HD2 Liberty. Always live on the free Odyssey app. What's trending? All right, let's check in on the hot topics. Trending, trending, trending. Number one on what's trending. The Royals are trending. That's for sure. Five in a row. One of the hottest teams in baseball. Now seven in four. They'll pick it back up tonight. 640 first pitch against the Astros. Seth Lugo in his .71 ERA Ooh. on the bump tonight. Going up against a pitcher making his major league debut, which sometimes in the past I think would scare you a little bit because the track record hasn't been great. Traditionally. Not this year, man. This is a different year. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce the guy's last name. Name. It looks like Arigetti, Arigetti, sounds like a pasta A R R I G H. I had some lovely Arigetti last night with some yeah. Italian sausage. Is what that yeah. sounds like. I don't know. He's, uh, he's how's that the... not spelled? That has to be Arigetti. Spen- There's no other way to Spencer Arigetti. That. That's what I'll go with. Spencer Arigetti, 24 year old, making his MLB debut against the Royals. Hopefully, the Royals can get after him tonight. Make this thing six in a row. We'll talk more baseball after what's trending and with Vern, who's coming up at 1230. Longest winning streak in baseball currently the Royals. Five in a row after the Guardians lost last night. Actually, right now the AL Central's got some beaters. The uh, Guardians, Tigers, and Royals all off to a good start. But the Tigers and Royals are 7-4. and four, The Guardians ahead of them. Next up on what's trending, Scott Drew is going to meet with Kentucky today about their opening for their men's basketball program. No word yet on how serious those talks are. Right now, he's scheduled. He made $3.5 million last year. He's scheduled to get a raise up to $5 million. Carol Parry just got paid $7 million, plus a $1 million signing bonus to go to Arkansas. He has spent all but one year of his 21-year college basketball career at Baylor. He coached at Valparaiso for one year, took him to the tournament, took over Baylor, one of the worst Power 5 programs in college basketball history, turned him into a national champion eventually. Will he actually take the Kentucky job? I feel like if you're taking the meeting, you're thinking about taking the job, man. It's going to be hard to turn down Kentucky. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the meeting is if he actually shows up to the meeting uh, and it, it truly happens, and that means you, of course, are interested. I just wonder, is that what he wants? Like, is, is that is that the type of job you want? Yes, it's Kentucky. We, we view it in this way. But do you do you want everything that comes with that? There's the positive, the money, huh? and all that. But There's then, also like, the, the reason why Calipari's leaving. Right. It's a toxic <laughs> fan know? base. I mean, you follow yeah. Cal, and I know they're disappointed, but let, let's say in year one even, Scott Drew, uh, you, you know, losing the first round. The next year, they're already going to be pissed off. They're going to be at your door. And, and, yeah. Like, yeah. And, and that's coaching. I get it. But right now, you're at Baylor. Everybody there loves you. Nobody even realizes you're there. No pressure. The time, you got a brand new arena, making good money. He makes $5 million next year. We'll see. If it's not Scott Drew, though, then the list, it, it opens up dramatically. I think it, then it becomes five or six different names, if yeah. you really think about it. Next up on what's trending, we kind of already knew this was trending uh, towards happening, but the NFL made it official that the Philadelphia Eagles will play the Packers in Sao Paulo, Brazil on Friday, September 6th. That's the day after the Chiefs kick off the NFL season against a opponent to be determined. But uh, we knew the Eagles were playing in Brazil. Now we know the opponent. So, Thursday and Friday night football to start the upcoming NFL season. And the Eagles-Packers, not a bad match of a lot of hype and uh, attention around Jordan Love. And, of course, the Eagles trying to, to bounce back after their disappointing season. So looking forward to that. And Brazil, new location for the NFL. It'll be interesting that Friday kickoff. we got a lot of weirdo NFL games. I know yesterday they announced they're not going to do Christmas Eve games. I'm like, oh, wow. So the Saturday, the Sunday, the Monday, and the <laughs> Wednesday weren't enough. They were like, you know what? We're good. We're not going to do football five straight days. We're taking Christmas Eve off. We care about you it doesn't matter i get it the friday brazil game 
I think the way of doing these international games early is the way baseball does it. Or at least they're kind of off your schedule, not making these people deal with it later into the season. Get it out of the way, then you get to play your normal schedule the rest of the way. If I were a team, I think I'd prefer it that way. Next up on Watch Training, former Ravens star Terrell Suggs has been arrested on assault charges in Arizona. That, according to TMZ, some of the reports are pretty disturbing. He says he pulled a gun on somebody in a Starbucks and then threatened to kill them. So that's not great. Out of Terrell Suggs. All over a shot. cup of coffee? I don't, know. I don't know what the circumstances around that are, but we don't claim Terrell Suggs in any capacity in this city. He's been arrested on assault charges and I think picked up on those, according to TMZ. All right. That's what's He's smiling. Like, I don't, I feel like if you get picked oh, up for something, you cannot shot? never Is smile on the mugshot. Shot? I haven't seen Yeah, that. I saw it. Okay. He's smiling. Uh, who knows? <laughs> who knows? Are you saying a guarantee 100% if you were picked up, no matter what the circumstances? Not smiling. Not smiling. I have <laughs> mugshots. Huh? I, when I got arrested, they took my mugshot, man. You said mugshots. Well, I meant like, you know, there's this and that. You know, they got to turn. I, I was like, wait a second. Yeah. There's more? I've only had one mugshot. <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah, and I, I was 18 years but old. But I'm with you. I, should yeah, we, the, should the, we smiling, the smiling and the mugshot That's thing. No yeah. Do you think uh, we could get those? Maybe we could get them for the garage sale. Like you frame up mugshots? I bet you those are not. <laughs> mugshot from 18 years well, old. Were you, were you an adult at the time? I was 18. So you were an adult. Hmm. I don't know how that works. If you were under 18, I would say no. But if you're, you were over 18 at the time. Quick pull so. the text line, 913-586-7610. If I either had a T-shirt printed or a signed photo of my 18-year-old mugshot, would you buy it to support local charity? That is a just one. very – imagine like trying to request it. Like, hey, I just want to request my mugshot from – People request stuff all the time. This is America. I have the Freedom of Information Act. Yeah, a lot of stuff, but not – I bet you I mean, if you were 18 at the time – I bet you there's got to be a way that to you find can it? get it. Now, what year was this? So this would have been... 2003. So they uh, had digital records by then and everything. 2002? You think, so they had Something. digital records, you right would have thought, there. by then. Do you think you'd be able to go and just find it yourself, or do you think you'd have to call... I think you'd be able to find it. Okay. I'm We're thinking of you know, the call Cody and Gold garage sale items, and might have to add this one to the list. I've given away a I autographed picture item. of my foot x-ray, my high school diploma... I think this would be a po- if you got a your one. mug shot, that would be a very quick item to go. I'll be honest, I've never seen it. I don't even know what the mug shot looks like. Oh, hmm. I've never, I never saw my mug shot. I just took the picture. But you know, you weren't smiling. I'm not. I don't, I don't <laughs> think I was, dude. I was 18. I probably looked real sad. I don't, I don't remember. I've never seen it. Someone said a beer glass would also be good, like a, a set of beer glasses. Someone says the there's a couple, of webs- a couple of websites where they think you can. It costs money to get it, but that you, they think you maybe could get it. Okay. All right. I'll look it up. Uh, I will do some research for the um, – I will do some research for the Coding Gold Garage Show. And I know we want to have enough time for our Masters bet, so I'll leave it at that for now. All right. Let's talk some Royals baseball because they are winners of five in a row. They are three games above 500. And I thought last night was maybe one of the more promising wins. I know that sounds silly because you didn't get great starting pitching, but that's what I'm talking about. It, Cole Reagans did not have his best stuff last night. But – Really good pitchers find ways to not put your bullpen in a really tough spot, even when they don't have it, or they, they keep your team in a game. And that's exactly what Cole Reagans did. He obviously from the very first inning was not on, right? Just wasn't it was one of those nights. And yet he didn't let it become in the second inning, a seven, nothing game and blow up. He gave up three runs and he got you into the fifth inning. And that's, that's and somehow ended up with five strikeouts still when this whole thing was done, despite the, the Astros obviously having some success yeah. against him. I thought that was more promising because it showed that, A, all right, that's another pitcher or at least one that even when he doesn't have his good stuff, he can still grind you through to five innings. And then the bullpen gave you five uh, innings uh, of scoreless baseball. So that, to me, was actually a really promising win. There's the obvious Salvador Perez walk-off win. Those are always fun. Those, yeah, that but, part's the most fun, sure. But I think it was big to see Reagan's battle through and then see the bullpen pick him up. I was quickly trying to look for the <laughs> mug shot. Anyway, so, yeah. no, I really do think I, I am always more, maybe I shouldn't be, but I am almost always more encouraged by those type of wins than anything else. Because it requires multiple things. One, it requires winning in a different way. They've been winning via starting pitching for a huge chunk of the season. This time they won via bullpen. It requires clutch hitting, right? Like you have to still get that. And it requires like every, and like the, the fortitude to come from behind and get a win rather than just fold up shop that day. So like it's just a lot of different cases. By the way, I, look, I found... Two sisters and my mom in here. I can't. I'm not. My mugshot's not on here. 
Oh. Search, search a different county. Look, my family got in some trouble. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like it. Family got in a little many, family many, got in a little bit of trouble. Bug shots. In fairness, this this one uh, this might the 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 one with my mom is just the dissolution of marriage. This was just the divorce filing. So she's fine. So gotcha. court filing. Gotcha. She's okay there. Gotcha. She's allowed to get divorced, you know, at the time. Anyway, but so when you look at what the Royals can do here going forward, I you and I had the conversation yesterday about, hey, what are our new April expectations? They got a chance to really do it. And I think what matters the most is this seems to be a team, and I know it's only 11 games, but this seems to be a team without a true weakness. They are good enough offensively, good enough in the bullpen, and good enough in the starting rotation that I'm having a hard time thinking that, like, the whole thing's going to fall apart. Bad stretches, sure. Some mediocre stretches, sure. A team that, like, fan graphs, I think, already has them up to 80 wins on their calculator. Like, do I think they might still just be, like, a 78-win team? Sure. But right. they're not truly weak in one particular area. That goes a long way. Yeah, that's. I think that last part is key. Everybody should be excited. I don't know how you can't be. But also, it doesn't mean suddenly I think they're just, oh, yeah, man, they're clearly a playoff team now either. Right? There, there's there's a balance between the two. Yeah. I think we know this is this is actually a good baseball team that's been assembled here. And, and, and yeah. you know, they're not I, – I, I disagree. I mean, to a certain extent, yes, there are still probably flaws that we're going to continue to find out about. And, you know, there just doesn't mean that just because – you know, let's forget uh, how quickly things shifted. A week ago, everybody thought the bullpen was trash, and now we're saying the bullpen's actually pretty good. So things change so quickly. They've had five scoreless games <laughs> and five innings in a row You know, last so, night without giving up a run. So, so sure. things change so quickly. But I think what we have found, like this is clearly not only a way better baseball team than last year that was assembled. We knew that on opening day sure. before we started to see wins and losses pile up. It was pretty clear when you looked at the opening day roster and who was on it compared to last year and some of the guys that were on that opening day roster – and, and and then you take a look and see now some of the results in the early going. Like, yeah, th- this is a team you could actually talk yourself into truly competing for, for a much longer period of the season. But I, I get the cautious optimism. That's more than fair based off of track yeah. record. This is why I told you, you know, my April, I'm not suddenly demanding, you know, oh my gosh, they don't, they don't finish with it with a winning April. Now then, oh my, no, wow. I, I'm still when give me a 500 month of April and I'll be thrilled. I know they're three games up now. But I think we would all sign up for a 500 month of April, I think today and certainly three weeks ago. Uh, so that's where I'm at. But I, I love what we're seeing so far, especially when we know their number three hitter isn't even hitting yet. No. And I told you, offer still on the table. I don't think you can do the, the there's what? no need for the Vinny song yet because mm. it's April 10th. I, we, we, let's let this play out a little bit more. You're trying to switch the voodoo up. I don't think you want to try to switch the voodoo up in the middle of a winning streak, you know, because then you might accidentally switch the voodoo up for the whole team, you know? Five game winning Switch streak. Switch it up. I'm just trying to help one person. But the the team's winning. You know, team player. Team's winning right now. Let's, and and Vinny is a team player. Let's stick with that. Maybe once the winning streak ends, then you can focus in on uh, trying to rearrange the uh, the baseball gods for Vinny. But mm-hmm. let's the, the baseball gods are treating the Royals very well right now. They are. They've won five in a row. They're playing incredibly well. I'm not trying to. And they're winning close games. They are. Like they're, they're they were fi- losing the close games early, and we were worried it was going to start becoming a trend. And now they're winning all their close games. Winning some close games. You know, they, they're they're winning matchups that uh, you know on on paper at times in the past were just clear L's, and they're taking advantage of those opportunities. Like last night, wouldn't you agree that in tip? You know, last year certainly team when they blew the opportunity in the what was that? Was it the seventh inning or anything last night when they had some base running issues? And and they had uh, runners on seventh. Th- yeah. Okay. So they had yeah. nobody out runners on the, the, the corners, right? Yep. And they got nothing out of it. Typical last year. We're like, well, well that's a loss. That's a loss. You I finally it, came it, from behind yeah. and now you've blown it. And, yeah. and then Salvi gets the walk off. Like little things like that matter in the past. Like, oh, they're not coming back for that. That was their chance. That's not how you feel about this team. And that's the confidence that they're playing with right now. It's the contribution stuff. Like somebody pointed out, Vinny's been playing great defense. Yes. He also is tied for the team lead in walks. Like, I understand that, like, some of the hitting stuff where people want to get hung up on it. It is, when you aren't hitting, can you contribute? And the answer in Vinny's case has typically been, yes, he has been contributing, even when he's not getting on base. Yeah, sometimes you don't get those guys on there and all those things. And someone said Vinny's hustle getting across the third run was legit. A lot of players wouldn't have hustled that out. Like, I don't I, – that's what I like about it. They feel – they feel very much – like a complete team together. So J.J. Piccolo, I'd asked him yesterday. I'd said, hey, 
we talked about it maybe earlier in the year and spring, you had maybe seemed like the vibe, like is the clubhouse vibe really? It was like, yeah, like they are confident. And like one, one player, you know, like I've had to be like, this is a good team. Like not like trying to hide behind it or like, you know, the excuses like we don't know what we are. We're trying to figure it out. I had a rose play. This is a good team. And that's the way I'm starting to feel about them. Not that there's a potential for it, gold or that it could be that they are a talented team capable of winning. Before, I just so much unknown about them. The way they're playing in this early stretch, I just I feel so much better. We'll talk with Vern here in about 10 minutes or so. Our Royals insider, he, of course, has his on-deck show tonight at 5.30. And the post-game shows, like, I, like he, they're, they're always fun. But they're, they're, uh, they're even more must-watch, must-listen, I should say, at this point in time. Uh, the Royals are must-watch. Vern must-listen always. And uh, when they're winning, the post-game shows are that much more enjoyable. And uh, that's what we got going on More right of a party, now. you know. Yeah, so Vern will join us as he does each and every Wednesday in a little bit. Tomorrow is the Masters, though. And I was on with Bob and Josh this morning. We were talking about the Masters a little bit. We, uh, as a show for majors, we usually build a little betting card. That's for true. The show fun. We got to build back up the show fun. So I can buy that mascot costume. So I think we decided what one hundred and fifty dollars that we're gonna use yeah, on our betting card, right? And so we, if you if you Woo. haven't done that before. You spread around some bets. Now you put all 150 on one golfer. No. I mean, sp- God, if you hit that. <clears throat> I mean, yes. If you hit it on not Scotty good. Scheffler, the payoff would be pretty good. But instead, you, you spread you spread the love around a little bit, and you diversify your betting card. Real quick, what are the, the two bets you each like? And I've got two, and we'll, we'll have more than these, but we'll, that'll be a good framework for our betting card, and we'll roll with these guys. Sure. So there was two that I thought, if we're going to make a betting card and we're going to mix in some outright winners – and include maybe some top fives or top tens for those same golfers. There were two that stood out to me. They'll be on a card. And like you said, we'll tweet out a photo goal of our whole card so that people can see what we've put it on. I like Tony Finau. I like him as a long shot to win it, 35 to 1. And, I, you know, we had top 10 bet as well. And then, honestly, I think Cam Young. Like another guy where I just feel like if we're, if we're betting outright to win and then moving in those two, those were the two that I liked um, a decent amount. Out of those two, so you know they're on my they're on my list. How about yours? Yeah, so a couple golfers that I I, I focused in on a little bit. Wyndham Clark is a name. Now uh, two bets, top ten. He's plus three thirty, and to win outright, he's forty to one. He's forty to one for a reason. He would be the first golfer since nineteen seventy nine to make Fuzzy his Zeller to make his debut. We saw that same stat, huh? Yeah, to make his debut uh, at the Masters at Augusta and win. But he's playing some great golf. He shot a 60 at Pebble. Uh, so those are two bets that I think we got to put on the card. A 40 to 1 long shot and then top 10 finish or top So five we both finish. have, like, look, I'll be honest. We have to for the sake of, like, trying to not lose the entire stake. I think it would be financially irresponsible to not put at least 10 bucks on Scott Scheffler. <laughs> like, you can't, you can't tell he's me we can't. To one. He's Dude, he to wins one. every tournament. He's the best golfer on the planet right now. We have to do something there. Drew, what were your two? So my two, um, I really think Jordan Spieth is going to have a really good tournament. Uh, he's, been playing, he's been playing really, really well. Uh, top five, four to one odds, I think is uh, a good bet. And then DJ, Dustin Johnson, traditionally has played very well at the Masters. Of course, the live side of things, I don't, some people might not, not that it's a big worry, but you're playing less competitive golf, jumping into one of the most, if not the most competitive tournament in all of golf. I don't think it'll be a problem for DJ familiar with the course played. Well, I think top 10 for him is a lock at three and a half to one. Like gold. And I were looking at this because we ended up seeing the same stat, but that did not include live guys and then did include live guys, which is a little bit confusing, but there's a, there's a stat for the last 12 winners, right? Hey, if you're going to be a winner of the masters, the last 12 have had at least 18 strokes gained T to green. I know that's silly, but over their last four events. So there's a common trend about your lead up and how you're playing golf going into the Masters. Wyndham is just off at 16.7. My guy, Tony Finau, is just off at 15.7. But then, like, half the list is live guys, and I'm like, hey, you're playing easier courses with less competition. Do, yeah. do I take Neiman, that more or less? Yeah. Brooks. Like, the, Neiman's technically got the third best. The, He's I think 35. Brooks, I think, He's almost double yeah, that number. Of the live golfers, I think Brooks is... I think Brooks, even more than John Rahm, has a shot. I know John Rahm's won it. I know Brooks he, isn't on this list either. I think I think Brooks is a good is a good pick. The, the you guy guys want to do a little Brooks bet? I bet he. I, I'll bet. I'll bet he like at some point competes, but I don't think he wins. So why don't we do like uh, we could do a cheap bet on uh, first round leader? Yeah, he's twenty five to one to finish. That's what we got. Round. I think that's fair. Yeah. Let's do that. Gone are the days where Charlie Hoffman was the clubhouse leader after round one. So disappointing. 
So yeah, Kepka first round lead, that's fun. A couple of the questions still, like, so Scotty Scheffler, his wife, I guess, is due any day now, and and so whether or not he would leave he, the tournament if he has a lead. According I, to I, I had the par three contest on. According to what they said, Sam Burns and him both have pregnant wives. They both said they would leave. Could you imagine Scotty Scheffler? It's Sunday morning at the Masters. He said he he's, up two, he's up, up two strokes on a Sunday. He's up two strokes. According and, to and what he they said, he, he would leave. Okay. He's a liar. Also, I'm not saying you should miss the birth of your child. I was there wow. for both of mine. <laughs> I think that this what? is probably an exception. <laughs> okay. If you are, if it is Sunday at Augusta, I mean, you're going to be super rich and famous and all that. You know, like you'll be Kobe. your kid will be okay. They're not going to remember day one. I don't think he would miss either, but I also would understand it. He, you know, who knows? Uh, uh, he's four to one. If you thought you were about to cash your ticket, too, you're thinking, oh man, he's got a couple stroke lead. Then he just bows out. That would be a that would be a brutal loss selfishly for somebody that bet on him. Uh, just a couple other things uh, as well. Uh, Xander Shoffley, sixteen to one. He's going to be on our betting card. Okay, uh, eight dollars to win a buck twenty, uh, and then. Uh, Corey Connors top five hmm. and you have to have something related to Tiger Woods. So I think in our, our show betting card, Tiger Woods for betting golf, not to win it, huh? To, no. <laughs> <laughs> to make the cut, to make the cut. He's made 23 straight cuts at Augusta. He's minus 115 to do that. So maybe a small, bet by the way, uh, Cody, if we did take all the 150 and put it on the longest bet on our card of 40 to one, Wyndham Clark winning, you win six grand. Oh, God, um, then we really could have buy that costume. There, there is, there is a bet that I just made on on Fanduel. Jordan, that just sounds reckless, though, doesn't it? I did yes. Spieth top five, DJ top ten, Brooks top ten, Willie Z top twenty, uh, five bucks to win seven twenty. Okay, for those. That's four. a separate bet. That's not on yes, our card. Yeah, that, that is a separate bet. I'd I'll be, I'll be sad if you win that. And then <laughs> didn't do it on our card, but that's fine. I'm right, not we'll, actively we'll, rooting against We'll it, keep an eye on it. Thursday, we'll, uh, starting tomorrow, <laughs> we'll have some leaderboard updates, and obviously there's a couple golfers that we as a show will be strongly rooting for, and uh, even a first round, strong first round for Brooks Kepka uh, would, would be a nice one for the show. All right, coming up next, we get right back into the Royals, this five-game winning streak. Our guy, Josh Vernier, tells us if it's okay, if it's okay to fully buy in. Cody and Gold, brought to you by Heartland Men's Health, the leader in men's sexual health. Thousands of men have been successfully treated for low T, ED, and more, all with discretion and compassion. Make your appointment at heartlandmenshealth.com. There is a back-to-back Super Bowl champion, and it is the Kansas City Chiefs. On your official broadcast partner of the Chiefs, 610 Sports Radio. Spring is here, and it's time to spring into action to get into shape and feel great. Hey, it's Bob Fesco. I know there are so many options when it comes to home workouts. It can be overwhelming to pick out home fitness equipment, but not anymore. It's time to discover Johnson Fitness and Wellness Stores. Their expert staff will help you choose the best home fitness equipment for you, for your unique goals, space, and budget. Johnson Fitness and Wellness has a wide selection of top-rated treadmills, elliptical, strength equipment, rowers, and exercise bikes. Also, find the latest selection of massage chairs in Kansas City. Right now, get a free kit of massager with purchase of any massage chair or Matrix Fitness equipment by mentioning 610 Sports Radio. Soon, you'll be seeing home run fitness results to get in shape and feel great. Johnson Fitness and Wellness is in Overland Park and Lee Summit. Visit johnsonfitness.com. That's johnsonfitness.com. It's Johnson Fitness and Wellness. Look, career uncertainty is not fun. That's why we keep recommending our friends over at Centric. Whether it's the 1,500 companies they work for, the better pay, the career advancement gold, we just know that we love sending you to a great company who can help get you a better career. Well, they got the relationships. I mean, that's so key. We know in any line of work, any career, you want to have somebody that's there to guide you that has the relationships, and they do at Centric. I love hearing about our listeners who went to Centric. My nephew went there. He talked to Russ Mondry, our guy, too. It's the only guy you're going to talk to. Go to Centric.com slash 610 and find out how you can start your new career in IT. Hi, it's Trey Smith, and in order for our team to get a victory, we need honesty, teamwork, work ethic, humility, and the golden rule. That's why my truck is from the dealer that embodies all those values, Victory Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. And Victory Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram also supports Giving Hope, whose sole purpose is to feed and clothe the needy in Wyandotte County and beyond. Giving back in the highest integrity, that's how Jeff and his team do business. For your next vehicle, visit or go to VictoryChryslerDodgeJeepRam.com. What's holding you back from learning the language you've always wanted to speak? Too hard. Takes too long. Not with Babbel. Babbel's lessons take just 10 minutes a day. 10 minutes isn't long. Nope, and they're fun. 
fun isn't hard. Right. Babbel's interactive lessons, podcasts, games, and more make languages fun and engaging. You might even forget you're learning. And Babbel's lessons are built around real life. Babbel teaches language skills you'll actually use about travel, business, relationships, and more. You'll learn what matters most to you. Plus, Babbel's lessons are designed to get you having real conversations in as little as three weeks. Just three weeks? Even better. Since Babbel's lessons are voiced by real native speakers, you'll get pronunciation just right and be able to carry on conversations with confidence. Learning a language with Babbel doesn't take long. And with Babbel, it isn't hard. It's, It's perfect. perfect. Get Babbel. It starts here. Go to Babbel.com to try for free. That's Babbel.com. B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Babbel.com. Do you owe back taxes or have unfiled tax returns? The IRS won't quit until they get your money. Here's great news, fresh from those in the know. Major changes have happened at the IRS. If you owe more than $10,000, you may be eligible for a 99% reduction of what you owe. Haven't filed a return for a while? Their happy clients are talking. The IRS was going to levy my bank account, but Guardian was able to prevent that and fix all my IRS issues. Thanks again, Guardian Tax. Need relief from crushing tax debt? The IRS IRS now has special programs. Guardian Tax knows all about them, personal or business. This is the fresh new break you've been hoping for. We aren't the company you call when you need a hug because you're scared of the IRS. Guardian Tax is the company that wins when you need it most. Guardian Tax Service is really great to work with. They really help me out. I'd recommend them highly. Call now for a free confidential consultation. 800-494-7174. 800-494-7174. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile. And the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time. There's Granger, Offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, For the ones who get it done. Thanks for calling Discover. This is Gabby. Hey, Gabby. It's Jennifer Coolidge. Hi. I'm, I'm so glad I reached you at 2 a.m. Oh, of course. Anyone with a Discover card can call and talk to a real person 24-7. Now, how can I help? Yeah, I used my Discover card to buy these yellow pleather pajamas, and I'm just not sure I'm pulling them off. 24-7 U.S.-based customer service. It pays to Discover. Limitations apply. Learn more at discover.com slash credit card. As an educator, Mr. Nelson's teachings are still being quoted in schools. Education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. Mr. Nelson taught hope. Everyone can rise above their circumstances if they are dedicated and passionate. And giving our best efforts. It's always impossible until it's done. Mr. Nelson Mandela's teachings not only united a nation, they inspire us today. Inspiration. Pass it on from PassItOn.com. up in about 12 minutes we'll get to the random question of the day but continuing to talk some Royals baseball five game winning streak they're back in action tonight against the Astros you can hear Vern at 5 30 tonight his on deck show I think Cody's handing out a couple of bets uh, tonight during the still pre-game. working on it okay oh, you haven't locked him in yet no I haven't our, locked him in yet our guy Josh Vernier joins us now as he does each and every Wednesday uh, this foot this, this baseball the season what's that Cody oh. has the biggest win of the season thus far so Cody um I'm, I'm, I'm rolling with you tonight, so I, I can't wait to hear what the pick's going to be. It sounds like he wants to do a Vinny Pasquantino bet. I've been trying to talk I, him off the ledge of this, which is... I said to, only if I do a live performance of Pasquantino today. I think it's too early, Vern. I don't know. I, th- there were two instances <laughs> last night, I think, uh, sixth inning, eighth inning, where, yeah, th- that was the talk in the press box was, man, if there was ever a time for Vinny to pull out a big one to, to snap yeah. out of this early season funk. There it was. But uh, it didn't happen. They still won. And the, the pitching, the defense, the base running, the offense continues to buy time for the three hitter. When was the last time a <laughs> Royals team was 11 games into the season, didn't have a single extra base hit from their three hitter? 
and we're all just cool with it because <laughs> everybody else is picking him up. How much do you think it is the curveball thing? We all have seen the stats at this point. He's getting a steady dose of breaking balls right now, Vern, versus the amount of fastballs he saw last year. I'm assuming they're just throwing him curveballs because until he's out of the slump, there's no reason to go the other way. Yeah, I think – like like JJ told you guys yesterday, I think he summarized it, it very well. Yeah, certainly there's some pressing going on. Um, but the guy that I see in the clubhouse, that I that I talk with in the clubhouse, that we observe out there defensively and and in the dugout, doesn't appear as if he's stuck in his own head. Uh, he'll get in there on occasion. I, I'm sure it happens in his quiet moments, but he's not allowing it to drag his entire game down nor his uh, very important presence down in that dugout and in that clubhouse because even though he's off to a slow start, he's still one of the mouthpieces of this team, one of the guys that the media looks to, uh, to, to give a quote. To, uh, he's a guy that, that's still running things in the clubhouse, keeping things light. So uh, Vinny has multiple roles on this team, and while one of them has – gotten off to a slow start every other facet is is right where it needs to be we know it's magnified because it's april and it's not june or it's not august or whatever where are you at on cody singing past quintino live uh, i said the, i don't try to live version wanna, of a song before feels like a challenge i don't want to mess with the baseball gods Vern, while they're winning five in a row to me we don't want to do that and then all of a sudden he starts hitting but then maybe the teams it, i don't want to mess anything up it's a great song no i i Vern's sing Ford. it I sing it weekly to myself. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm not joking. I, 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 that, that song stays in my head and has since I, I first heard it. And I know I'm not alone. So uh, I'll be there front row. I'll, I'll flash you. I'll have the lighter. I'll be ready to go, Cody, wherever you are, man. I'm, I'm there cheering you on. I, I think it's your best work. And you, and you, got, some, you got some bangers out I'm there. I'm thinking at 1.30, right after what's trending, I just do a live on the video stream. For all to see and hear, you know? Broadcast live on Crown what? Vision. It'd be great <laughs> if you could do it during batting practice. Man, that would be incredible. That would Wouldn't be that good. be I, What a pressure-packed moment that would be for me to do a live mm. performance in a stadium. <laughs> Even if there's no one in that it but the players. Nuts. That would be nuts. I, I also think today's the day, the reason why, and Cody's smart about this, to do it today. The Royals are going up against a pitcher making his big league debut. I feel that's another time. I know there's not film on the guy as much, but also, to me, this might be the night anyway. Yeah, well, um, I, I, we've all seen plenty of pitchers make their big league debut, and, and because no one stood in against them, they just go out there and, and carve. Mm -hmm. So, and this kid's a you know, highly touted prospect in the the Astros system. So I'm not I'm not I'm not looking past him, and especially when I know he's got the backing of Jordan Alvarez, who is oh, without question unreal. the best lefty bat in the sport. Last night we were, we were discussing that win was, was so promising going forward because it, Cole Reagans didn't have his best stuff. It's obvious he, he said that after the, after the game, yet he still grinded through, got you multiple innings, uh, kept you in the game, and then the bullpen picks you up as well. Like That, to me, was one of the more promising wins of the season, not just because it ended in a walk-off. And what yesterday or, or last night, what that was, and hopefully it serves as a reminder, the 1.88. ERA that this rotation has is not going to last. I can promise you that. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't guarantee you much, but I can promise you that ERA is going to get not only north of two, but likely north of three. But what Cole Reagans did last night, just like what Alec Marsh did in his last outing, they gave you a chance to win. The Royals have now either led, have been tied, or trailed by one run going into the eighth inning in every single game this season. Defense deserves a lot of credit. As you mentioned, the bullpen, 16 and a third scoreless inning streak heading into tonight. Uh, but this rotation has given you a chance in every single game. That's not going to continue. You'll have the occasional blow up. But I feel comfortable enough to say and I'm telling you, uh, going back to after they signed Michael Waka, and then you get, you, you get eyes on him in spring training. This rotation's bringing the type of stability that we haven't seen since 2016, the type of stability that gives you a chance to win 70%, 80% of your games. We know that's not going to happen. They're not going to have an 800 winning percentage. But if you win one of those four, you lose one of those four, you're going to have two jump balls in there, two of those 50-50 games. And with this defense and this bullpen and this kind of – uh, a superstar in Bobby, 
all-star caliber talents in Mike Hal, Salvi, Vinny, and MJ Melendez, and what they've shown early on, you feel like they can win enough of those 50-50 balls that we're playing entertaining baseball into August and hopefully into September. When you look at the, like, I think what stood out to me, Vern, in particular, about last night's win's kind of a good example of that, but probably just the way they've started for 11 games. They don't seem to have a true deficiency. I'm not saying they're like chalk. They're not the Dodgers, right? It's not just all-star after all-star at every single position. But I don't look at one particular unit, like the middle of the bullpen, the back of the bullpen, the line. Like, there's not like, oh, boy, that's a big problem for this team. That feels like they always had at least one Achilles heel each of the last couple of years, if not multiple. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I, I could. I, 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 and you guys have acknowledged the, the lack of velocity in the bullpen. That, that's yeah. one. The second base position right now, you're getting um, a batting average of a buck ninety four, an OPS of five thirty six, worst on the team. Um, a solid defense from Adam Frazier. Um, so, listen, and and no one wants to talk about this, but all you got to do is take a step back, look around the rest of the division. The Chicago White Sox have already lost their best player. The Twins have lost their best player. The Guardians have lost their best pitcher. Uh, and what do you know? Royals and Tigers are the two teams mm. at the top of the American League Central. We got a long way to go. We we love this rotation. They've done a great job the first two times through. They got to do it like 28, 29 more times. Uh, not not at a 1.88 ERA, but I mean post another 29, 30 more times. And that's very difficult to do. What happens when that injury pops up? And injuries going to happen somewhere on this team with the current 26 men. Uh, I, I don't know where, uh, but but that injury could dictate how, how things go moving forward and, and could create the type of deficiency that, well, again, look at Cleveland, look at Chicago, look at Minnesota. Th those three injuries, they, they you can't replace Bieber, Robert, or Royce Lewis. No, it kind of felt like they built their team in the minors like they didn't want to touch the minor leagues this year. Gold and I have talked about that. Like, everybody, they're just like, well, we'll hope just – random veteran either on the team or in the minor leagues will help us before we start pulling guys that are 22. Uh, yeah, um, 22, certainly. Uh, no one. Or 24. Yeah, yeah they don't have the a lower range. They don't have so the 22-year-old, yeah, right now. No, no, there, there's, a, there's a few relievers that we've talked about uh, headlined by Will Klein. Um, yeah, Caden Wallace, I think, is still a few years away from making you decide what we're doing at third base. Um, you know, some A-ball kids that you drafted last year are off to nice starts. Carson Rockefort. Um, but, yeah, yeah, at least a year to two and a half years away. Vern, you uh, on your, your pregame show on Deck Show yesterday, you were talking about, hey, it's okay. To, like, what, what are you afraid of, basically? Like, there's no reason to, to worry about getting hurt, I, I guess. Is that what people are afraid of? No matter what concerns people have, it's April 10th. It's been a while since there's a reason to be excited about this team. Why? Why, why shouldn't people step in and go ahead and enjoy the start to the season? Well, the, the thing that uh, I, I don't want to say puzzled me, because I understand where the trepidation comes from, from Royals fans. They've been uh, burnt so many times in the past by great Septembers. Even in 2021, they were burnt by a great April. Um, so he, here's what I would say. Um, this isn't the same old Royals. I, I think that worry should be thrown aside, that this is just um, a nice stretch that eventually is going to fizzle out and we're going to be staring down the barrel of another 90-loss season. Now, that could happen again, going back to what we mentioned about uh, the importance of depth. You know, Daniel Lynch is going to make big starts at some point this season. Uh, there is a bat down in the minor leagues that's going to take some big ABs at some point this season. But the reason why I feel comfortable uh, telling you don't worry. Uh, don't worry about this being the same old Royals begins, of course, with the stability in the rotation, the fact that you're going to have a chance to win, in my opinion, if these guys stay healthy, 70, 80 percent of your games. You have a well above average defense. The numbers say that the Royals unit is, is, is one of the three best right now in all of Major League Baseball. You have speed, as we've seen with Dyron Blanco, who is statistically the best pinch runner in all of Major League Baseball, Garrett Hampson, solid coming off the bench. Bobby Witt Jr. just pulled off the second fastest triple in all of Major League Baseball this season. Uh, Mike Hell, MJ stole a base last night. So you have speed, you have defense, you have pitching. And now you have a bunch of confident hitters early on in the season. 
Um, and, and the early confidence is so key because when that inevitable midseason slump takes three guys out or the entire lineup like used to happen with that championship team where everyone would go cold, they'll be able to hearken back to this and understand um, what they did to have success in early April and that they can do it again. So, so that combination of confident hitters, a uh, stable rotation, uh, a, a well above average defense and speed on the base paths. Sure. The, the bullpen, you're, you're always massaging a bullpen and you can make so many changes at the deadline to a bullpen if needed. But everything that is created in April and May that 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 looks like a championship team, those things are starting to happen in Kansas City. So so don't worry about this being same old Royals. That would be my advice. Josh Fernier, he's our Royals insider. You'll hear him tonight. His on deck show at five thirty. Thanks, Vern. Let's keep this thing going. Let's make it six. I like it. I like it. Thank you. There you go. Josh Ferner. He joins us each and every Wednesday on Cody and gold. And don't forget for only 39 99 per month, the Royals fountain pass will guarantee you access inside the K for every single Royals regular season home game this year, guaranteed standing room ticket to every game, including high demand and weekend games with the ability to upgrade your ticket an hour before the first pitch. And uh, last night was a great night to be out at the K tonight, a little bit chillier, but still it's me. I think, 60 something degrees at first pitch. I don't know what the promotion is tonight. Last night was dollar dog night. I can't remember. Is what it, it is. the coffee the, mug one? It is. That's right. The cooler, cooler they, coffee mug. It's, yeah. It's the coffee mug that looks like a water, like a, the, the Salvi, you know, Gatorade bucket, but it's blue. That's cool. Yeah. It was a, a good, lot of classic lot of those, Salvi splash last night. He was Salvi the one who splashes. got splashed. Mm hmm. It's, it's just been a way more fun team to watch because they're playing better baseball. All we're hoping for at this winning point, is fun. <laughs> it's amazing how that works. Vern's convinced me I should do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm doing it. I'm Ooh. gonna try. God, I don't know how bad this will go. This is my concern. I'm gonna try to do a live version of Pasquantino at 1:30. Mm -hmm. Um, I looked in the folder. It took some searching because I'm always like hiding this thing. Gonna work on it. I found what I believe to be the karaoke. So can we just listen to like 10 seconds of this to make sure? Right. I believe that this is just the music behind. Although in fairness, I will need your help if this music's right. Because as you remember in the original video, there's like a play-by-play -play moment when it's like, and, you know. Oh, like, I need to skip that part. Well, I can't. Or you just, like, we just stand here and look at each other? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. It's, a, it's an inter, inter, interlude or whatever. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's a good, nice music <laughs> knowledge. Let's listen to it for just a moment. We'll know, we'll know here in like five seconds if there's words on it. No, it's... All right, there you go. That's the one. Yeah. God, I just don't... You think this is getting... I'll be honest, I'm a little bit... I think so, yeah. This is the solution. Not playing uh, pitch or uh, batting against uh, Arigetti. Could be both. Or little of both. Whatever it is. <laughs> you almost call him Spaghetti. <laughs> Whatever the guy's name is. Batting against Spaghetti. The uh, rookie for the... Arigetti, that's his name. The, you had it right the first time. Arigetti. Trust your instinct. Arigetti. Drew, had you ever heard the Pasquantino song? No. Like, I, the I, whole thing? It no. didn't make its way to Pensacola, Florida. No. It, it did not. Well, I, you know, I don't know if he, like, when he took the job, decided to get brushed up on the work we've done Hold on, on the show. Hold on, you think he uh, would have visited did... your catalog? <laughs> <laughs> I, I did not hear any of the songs that you have. Made do you want to do you want to hear two seconds of it before we do it? We I maybe attempt to try to do a live version later. You heard, heard the Spanish part. Yes, I heard the Spanish part. I guess what you need is how far into the song do you think I say Pasquantino? That's probably what matters the most for what, his 30 sake. seconds or what? That yeah, feels right. To slay. Got me this is like five seconds away. All day. Made me wanna say no, that's not it. We got to go for it. This is more. The Vinny on the roster just put him on. They let me whisper in your ear the only words I want to hear. I don't hear. know the lyrics are Don't take it slow so we can play long. Do you think I know all the words still? I'm going to have to yeah, pull up that Actually, video. I think you do. <laughs> I actually, I actually, I think you do. One. I want it. Now it's time for Pasquantino. This well, was, okay. do, this was still the best one. Balbino. Out That's going to be a challenge because I don't know that I know all the words anymore. I might not try to look them up. This was still the best one out of every single one you've ever done. And that's that's it's up there. That that to me would it's not even close. You're gonna be like one of those artists that has to perform a song they haven't performed in a while. You're like, oh man, I have to, <laughs> well, like, I have to they're also not the real words to the well, song. Correct. Those words I made up. <laughs> correct. Some of them are in Spanish. I don't remember all the words. <laughs> uh, Drew, do you think in the next 45 minutes you could pull up the old video of it and just write down the lyrics for me? That'd be great. Can I do that? I'll do, do you that. Not in have a break. the document or something? <sighs> I'm trying to look it up on my computer. I don't see the doc with all the words on it. In terms of the Spanish part as well. Yeah, I mean, if I'm going to try to do a live oh, version, okay. I'm going to try to live sing it in Spanish. I will try to. I we have a video the where the lyrics are words. already there. Spelled there for it you. is, yeah. I, I thought 
we made a deal with the bra- when the bracket challenge happened. I thought we said mm. that the loser gets punished. <laughs> Drew and I finished ahead of you. This is a treat you. for you. And now I feel like we're. This is, I feel like this is our punishment for winning. Mm-hmm. The fact but, that you don't have that, I'm kind of surprised you didn't save them at least. Oh, oh, oh hold on. Yeah. Go to an old Got folder. Mm. Wait. Oh, you know, word's going to take forever to open. Let's get to the random question while I wait for this. Random question. For you, Gold. For you, Drew. Over in the text line, 913-586-7610. Of course, you can hit us up on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook. The show is always streaming, which will matter. Come after what's trending at 1.30 if I try to do this live version of Pasquintino. But the random question I have for you today is related to a Pablo Torre podcast in which he had a, he had a, a producer on his staff Go back and play this game that was called Football Manager, F-U-T-B-O-L. So, soccer, right? It was a little bit like Madden's version of head coach. The entire job was to just be a football manager. To the point that in 2012, 35 people filed for divorce. (laughs) Citing this game is the reason why. You never even played the matches. You were literally just the head coach. It was every conceivable facet to the food inside of the club, to the relationships you had with the players, to a million other things. It was every single facet of being a manager, nothing to do with playing the game. If you wanted to play that, you played FIFA. So my question for you is, if there was a game that was going to cause you a divorce someone in your life, (laughs) what is the video game that would have caused it? Mm. We all know that there was one where you're like, damn, I played that game a lot. This yeah, a- I mean, honestly, it would have been back. In, we're going to get it again this summer, but it would have been back when I was college football, NCAA the, the, college football. Which where, year you think? I mean, any of I mean, any of the years. <laughs> I mean, back when I was in junior high, I was going to the midnight release and I was mm. playing it till five a.m. and sleeping till noon, then playing it again. That was that was summer of sixth grade. You know, sixth grade basically. So NCAA football. But would if have you been were playing at the amount you played yeah. it now, your, oh, your, your future football. wife would be like, we're, we're done NCAA here. football would have this been the one. That, that was a game that I played a ridiculous amount back. I think it might be um, Red Dead, the original Red Dead Redemption. That's such a good game. I the played is, is well. that game. And I I was with my wife at that time when we weren't living together. So it probably didn't matter, right? You could just play it till like 3 in the morning and nobody cared. I played that game so many hours. It's that or it's Final <laughs> Fantasy VII from middle school. I also played 200 plus hours or whatever on that game. An impossible amount of time playing Final Fantasy VII on the original PlayStation. If, if there was going to be one that yeah. was like causing a divorce, it would be one of those two. They've re-released Final Fantasy, and I thought about picking it up. I'm like, no. Nah, I never got. I know that was I'm popular. I love just that yeah. one in particular. I love that I game. I'm like, oh, I can't. I know that. Pick was it up. I'm hooked. A very popular. This game. is kind of funny. So this is before I met. Uh, or no, this is while I met my wife too. I guess I've played the football manager game. I enjoy it a lot. Wait, I, really? I, I do not play it. <laughs> You've played that one? Oh, I, I, I think it's great. And you like it? There's no yes. game. The, you, but that you goes can, back to Madden franchise. Great. Like, that's why you we can, like Madden franchise a little bit. You can, I mean, I fast forward some of that stuff. I don't play the games more than oh, so I like some of that. You, so I'm not as as I'm not as into it as some people get into the football manager aspect of it. Cause you could, you could spend a very, 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 it's every detail, dude. very dedicated amount of time on it. I said it to her. It's not as detailed for me, but I enjoy playing it. Uh, did not obviously lead me to, uh, have my wife currently leave me when we were dating. Uh, but anyways, I think the game for me would change. It used to be college football. I would say now, and Cody experienced this a little bit while we were at the Super Bowl, the F1 simulator. If you put me, if I had a simulator, I could play that for hours and hours and hours and hours. Now you were into it. I would, that would be. So you're saying it's probably not a good idea for you to build up one of those setups in your house. For me, yes. For, for, I want one really, really badly. And my wife is like, yeah, it'd be cool to, for you to have one. But I think if, if I did get one, I would spend in, in uncalled for so, amount of time on it. Some classic ones in the text line. Halo. They oh, were in Halo, trouble. Halo, Halo, Halo. Halo. Halo and Rainbow Six was another one for me. Way Madden back 10 would have been the one for them. Dark Souls 2 and 3. Someone said, they as an adult downloaded the PS1 version of Final Fantasy 7. He said, my wife got annoyed at me real quick. <laughs> it's just like it did not take long. W- would you get into out of the park baseball, Cody? It's it's baseball manager or it's football manager, but it's baseball. It's the exact no, same thing. You can manage a, you can manage October you can manage a fall ball team. I don't remember if, if it was from to. Blockbuster or if we just like borrowed it, but like I at for a brief period of time had that NFL head coach game. Where they play the, the most NFL boring, the, time. the yeah. most boring video game on the planet. 35 divorces. 
35 divorce cases signed at that damn game. I'm just trying to think about the ones where just like I was so into it that it was like not just that you were playing it, yeah. but you were playing it every day and you were playing it for hours every day, not just picking it up casually. Final Fantasy, I mean, I was I had like the magazine from the store, right? I'm like, oh, where's the, where oh, are the yeah. little pieces there? Oh, yeah. little, you know, you're just you're in deep, deep yeah. at that point. That's probably the game. That's probably for me. I like those other Fortnite, and I'm a grown ass man. Someone else, Lawnmower Simulator. What? Oh yes, Candy heard, Crush for some people, man. They play I've that game so that, damn much. I've seen that game pop up on like the Xbox Game Pass before. And I'll be, I'll admit, just because I was like, what the hell is? I I was very tempted to just go ahead and download it because it was part of the Game Pass. I'm like, what do you I mean, Lawnmower Simulator? I have heard it is very very satisfying to play that game because you're like ASMR. Yes. Or Would whatever? you like to just yes. mow my grass? <laughs> you can just you've this before. So I, what, I'm down. So I'm what, down they just the have different a times. different lawnmowers and like you would. You're just supposed to like the yes. challenges or what? Like you. I'm, I've never here's played. A, it, but here's I think a big so. weeded area. You got to adjust the like what. What is the what is this so what is the simulator? So, someone mentioned golf simulator, and I think there was a story I saw. Uh, there was a guy I don't know if it was in the UK or if it was in Australia who did divorce. Uh, they, they, he got a divorce because his Lots wife of, was like, yeah. you're, "You're on you're on this thing way too long." Um, that would be very dangerous as well. A, a lot of Call of Duty, the original Mortal Kombat, like with like the only six characters <laughs> That's a, or yeah. eight characters. Somebody That's said, a tough one. Somebody said Guitar Hero. That game was very There were some people that like really played play Guitar yeah. Hero for a while. Yeah. Mm. GoldenEye, I played that game a ton, a ton. But you can play GoldenEye again on they have like a, you can play on Xbox now. The my one, kids my kids have it on uh Switch. Along yeah. the same lines with you, Gold, there's a power wash simulator. That one is very satisfying as well. Power washing in real life is satisfying, but a simulator, I don't know that that would like I've heard that, eh. that along the same lines is eh. very, very Satisfying. Power wash simulator. I mean, they truly have. I mean, they ha- I remember the joke always was they have the the goat simulator. It's a real thing, and that was that was that a, was, a goat simulator. I've never heard yes. of that before. Oh, yeah, like yeah, like uh, not Tom Brady or Patrick Mahomes, yeah. but like a goat simulator. I mean, some people build like the same thing you talk about those racing simulators. People build those, but for mowers, I'm like, why wouldn't you just like capitalize financially off of this and just go find some guy who's willing to like like not even pay you, just like. Because that's labor intensive. And people don't want it. People don't want it. It's not that much Cody, labor intensive. People, people don't want to do it. There, there, is, a, there is a game. Uh, Roller coaster tech. I played that a lot too. There is a game. So I, I have a racing wheel um, for from for my PlayStation. There's a game called oh, wow. Truck Simulator where you can essentially be a 18 wheel <laughs> truck driver and make deliveries and drive on the <laughs> thing. So I, Drew, I are you, are you in your living room honking? <laughs> You're just like you got his. Oh, he's got his. <laughs> And then I uh, people have mentioned iRacing. Uh, that is what I'm scared of. I'm scared of iRacing because it is the most in-depth simu- racing simulator on the planet. And I'm, I am I so, want it really badly, but I'm also scared because the, I don't want to be. You're afraid? <laughs> yes, I, I'm scared of myself. The text line is right because, like, some of the parts of the game are fine. But that's why, like, Grand Theft Auto is a lot of people's answer. I remember all, Grand Theft Auto, you're right, not being mentioned yet. It's kind of crazy. But, like, that's what I like. Like, I'm fine to be in an 18-wheeler, but then I also need the ability to, to like... To rob a bank or something? Yeah, to, like, <laughs> rob a bank, run from the police, to to try to steal club? a helicopter from a military installation. Like, I don't want to just try are, are you going to get the new one, then? Are you going to get Grand Theft Auto uh, 6 or whatever? I that a lot. I mean, the... 5, whatever. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. I mean, if I have to buy a new system for Madden, maybe. We talk for, for, for NCAA. Yeah. We're Which talking is, about. I don't know that I want to buy just for when, that game. When, so when the game comes out in July, you're gonna have to buy the the new Xbox just for NCAA. I think football. I saw on its Wikipedia page, July 19th is the release date. I don't think it's, it hasn't been confirmed, but right before July 12th, camp, so July 19th are, is the are there the two days that okay I've seen. Perfect. Someone says lawnmower simulator. What's next? Do the dishes full of laundry? How about? I mean, that would that, 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 that would be hard to do. Simulator. <laughs> Simulators for everything. That's the random question, kind of, of the day. It was. It was which game would get you divorced? Yes. <laughs> that was a good random question, I guess. <laughs> Very popular. A lot of people who just, like, they remember the game that they just got so hooked into that it was every day. I can't. Tw- 25 divorces over this football simulator. I can't believe Drew's played it. <laughs> a lot yeah. of people said it's good. It, it, it's it, fun. It, it's, you know, it's, it's it satisfying because you can build your way up from a lower level. Yeah. You know, that's that's probably what gets me. No, look, it was a very popular. I'm not saying that. It's a very popular game, but it was just like the idea that like yeah. people were so into it. All right, coming up next, the, the strategy of not trading up for the upcoming NFL draft. And we'll talk a little bit more about what this Royals bullpen continues to do. Hurt, hurt. 
Hey, it's Vinny Pasquantino. Don't forget to follow Cody and Gold on the Odyssey app so you can listen on demand to my terrific football takes throughout the year right here on 610 Sports Radio. Brought to you by Heartland Men's Health, the leader in men's sexual health. Thousands of men have been successfully treated for low T, ED, and more, all with discretion and compassion. Make your appointment at heartlandmenshealth.com. Hey everyone, this is Brett Boone. Would you know it? I've got a podcast going strong in our fourth year. Tune in as I sit down with my friends, some of the biggest names in sports, media, entertainment, for a lot of fun and in-depth conversations. As you know, baseball's been my life. It's been in the family for a long time, but it's a lot more than that here. It's sort of like taking a ride in a golf cart around a beautiful track. Join me every week for multiple episodes on the Brett Boone Podcast, available on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. Our $79 garage door tune-up extended through April. Overhead Door Company of Kansas City will perform their 26-point maintenance tune-up and safety inspection for just $79. Now extended through April. That's just $79 for up to three garage doors and openers. You need this done once a year, so why not now? And for just $79. Schedule now at OverheadDoorKC.com. Supplement Superstores has helped me lose over 20 pounds since last November, and I'm keeping the weight off. Right before Thanksgiving, I knew I needed to lose weight. I went to Supplement Superstores on Ward Parkway and said, Help, I need to lose the extra pounds. And they said, No problem, we've got you covered. I was 224 on that day in November. I'm now down under 200 for the first time in years. At my yearly physical back in February, my doctor told me how proud she was of me and all my accomplishments. My weight was way down, and so was my cholesterol. I couldn't have done it without the folks over at Supplement Superstores. I take Flashpoint Complex. It's a refreshing drink when I get up in the morning and one right before bed. That's it. The one in the morning gives me energy all day long without the jitters. The evening drink helps me recover and has allowed me to sleep better than I ever have before. So go into any of the eight Kansas City area Supplement Superstores. They're all over the metro. Tell them I sent you, and they'll give you 20% off the Flashpoint Complex. Supplement Superstores, when you're ready to feel your best. Look, career uncertainty is not fun. That's why we keep recommending our friends over at Centric. Whether it's the 1,500 companies they work for, the better pay, the career advancement gold, we just know that we love sending you to a great company who can help get you a better career. Well, they got the relationships. I mean, that's so key. We know in any line of work, any career, you want to have somebody that's there to guide you that has the relationships, and they do at Centric. I love hearing about our listeners who went to Centric. My nephew went there. He talked to Russ Mondry, our guy, too. It's the only guy you're going to talk to. Go to Centric.com slash 610 and find out how you can start your new career in IT. Hey, it's Kling. There are many reasons I love hy V, the great values, the selection, the service, and I love to rack up fuel savers. And you can as well. Shop hy V on Monday, earn a fuel discount equal to the high temperature on Sunday and the amount you spend. If the high is 68 degrees on Sunday, I'll save 68 cents per gallon when I spend $68 on Monday. Heat up the savings every Monday through April 29th only at High V. Must look up code 80007 to check out or promo code heat up when shopping online. See store for details. The best deals at the pump happen when you shop the aisles of High V with help from the first Warm 5 weather team. This is KCTV5 Chief Meteorologist Luke Doris. Watch KCTV5 Sunday night at 10 for our official high temperature. Whatever it was on Sunday means you save on Monday with your High V Perks card. If the high was 63 degrees, you save 63 cents a gallon when you spend at least $63. Watch First Warn 5 weather on KCTV5 this Sunday at 10. This spring, let Smokehouse Barbecue make your life easier. Many events are coming up and Smokehouse can help with catering at home or with a party at one of their restaurants. And don't forget about Mom on Mother's Day. She'll love dinner at Smokehouse. Whether it's Independent, Zona Rosa, or Gladstone, make sure you ask about the new barbecue pizza. And if you're grilling out, don't forget Smokehouse has amazing sides that go great with everything on the grill. Check them out at SmokehouseBBQ.com. For over 35 years, locally owned and family operated at Smokehouse Barbecue. I'm Bob Burke, founder and chairman of Burke America Parts Group, a family of brands that includes RepairClinic.com, an appliance and HVAC parts solution company that's grown into an international brand. Before AmericanEagle.com, we partially launched a new technology platform developed by another firm. American Eagle helped take our technology to a whole new level with digital marketing, software development, and business insights into our key markets, appliances, HVAC, and outdoor power equipment and did so both on time and on budget. AmericanEagle.com has the resources, experience, and talent needed to produce solutions. 
Our new technology platform developed by AmericanEagle.com has produced tremendous results with higher traffic, conversion, engagement, and online revenue. If you have any home repairs you need to take care of, check us out at RepairClinic.com. If you need a world-class website or technology project, then I would highly recommend AmericanEagle.com. Call AmericanEagle.com at 773-NETWORK. That's AmericanEagle.com, 773-NETWORK. Gas, groceries, utilities, you name it. The price of everything is going up. And if you're stuck in a bad timeshare with rising maintenance fees, the financial burden can be crushing. It is time to get your finances in order and get the real facts about that timeshare that you are stuck in and your options to get rid of it. Chuck McDowell, founder of Wesley Financial Group, has been helping families out of horrible timeshares for over 10 years and has put together a complete timeshare exit information kit that he will send you absolutely free. To date, over 30,000 families have trusted Wesley Financial Group to help them out of financial hardship by getting them out of bad timeshares. Get the facts about how the timeshare industry works and your options for cancellation. Simply call Wesley now for your free timeshare exit kit and see how you can become timeshare free. Call 800-462-3333. That's 800-462-3333. Once again, 800-462-3333. You're listening to 610 Sports Radio from the Mission Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling Studios. Join us on Thursday, April 25th at the Landing in Liberty during the first round of the NFL Draft for your chance to win $610 plus autographed Chiefs memorabilia with our NFL Drafts Picks Contest. 610 Sports Radio, KCSB Kansas City, WDAF HD2 Liberty, always live on the free Odyssey app. The Masters gets underway tomorrow, but the Par 3 contest going on. Really cool to see someone with local ties uh, do something pretty special. So Gary Woodland, Par 3 contest, just had a hole in one. And the backstory there, uh, he had brain surgery in like, like a year ago? August. Oh, yeah. Not even and a year ago. here he is in April uh, acing a hole during the Par 3 contest, obviously playing the Masters tomorrow in round one action. But Very cool. uh, that's, that's just pretty wild to, to think about. Uh, what he's been through recently also uh, just has ties to the Topeka area, went to KU. He's won a major before. Uh, so that was just really cool. We, we both watched the, the clip during the break. I think all three of us probably saw the clip yeah. during the break go out as the Masters put that out. And it's a fun week, man. Even people that are, like myself, very casual golf fans, Masters week is great. Yeah. I, the majors, no matter what, it's kind of like tennis mas- you know, tennis major tournaments for me. But mm-hmm. it's the Masters. It's the well, it's also the course is just, I mean, you've been there for a practice round, so you can yep. speak to it from firsthand. Like, the, in general, majors, yes. Like, I went to the PGA Championship. Majors have new energy. Augusta's a bucket list place I want to go to. The, fu- the visuals are just sensational. It's cool. <laughs> it's a very cool experience. Even though I didn't get to go there when they were actually playing practice round, but you know, you're there. You know, they weren't playing. Oh, no, I'll, look, I'd go I again. Guess it's supposed to Someone rain, Someone be a practice round again, I, I'd go again. I guess it's supposed to rain, at, so hopefully it doesn't impact things too much. I mean, we were doing, we were building our Masters show betting car. We didn't factor in the precipitation as much. Mm. Uh, we'll see. Hopefully it doesn't mm. screw us over with anything. I hope not. Which uh, one of the betting sites got a little bit of hot water not that long ago because they voided oh. out a bunch of bets because a, rounds, yeah. a tournament got called after three rounds. Which is a completed tournament, in my opinion. I don't know. It seems crazy, but got to check the house rules. Got we we we've got to check the house rules, man. There's always look if there's any edge that they can get, they're gonna get. So you got to. It wouldn't matter where you're betting, whether it's ESPN bet, FanDuel, DraftKings, wherever. Got to got to keep an eye on that. All right, let's talk some Chiefs football a little bit because you you and I actually uh, were mentioning this during uh, the Chiefs red half hour, just kind of casually about how you approach the draft and are you better off just stockpiling and how, does that mean you sure. don't want to trade up? Because there's cases for both, even with this general manager, Brad Veach. When they traded up and got Trent McDuffie, home run pick, Worked. he's best corner in football. Uh, trading back is something that we, we thought maybe they would do last year. Uh, they did not. They stayed in round one. We've talked about the circumstances around that, both uh, the the venue, but also I think teams weren't willing to trade with them. Uh, and I think that's going to be an ongoing problem. And so what do you do if you're the Chiefs? Are you more likely to trade up or trade back come Thursday here in about 15 days? I think it has been very clear that part of Brett Veach's success has been volume. And if you look at the last three years and the amount of success they've had in the draft, volume has been a big part of what, and he's doing such a good job finding talent in all rounds. I don't want to trade up. I don't want to give up extra picks that Brett Veach might find something. So last year, look, Rasheed Rice was the big hit. 
Connor also did a nice job. And you could argue Wanye Morris, for what he was asked to do, did fine too. Okay, maybe for the first year, didn't get anything out of Felix. We'll see. B.J. Thompson, Coburn, whatever. Okay, didn't hit. The previous year. All right, he didn't hit on Sky Moore or Kennard. Watson, Pacheco, Williams, Chanel, Carl Loftus, McDuffie. That's part of the reason they could trade up. Look at how many picks they had outside of that, man. You can trade up if you get a million other picks. The year before that, way less volume. He was bang on for the first two picks in Bolton and Creed Humphrey. He's gotten some quality play out of Noah Gray. But, but, you know, like a little bit less. The year before that, when they had like a little bit less. You miss on Clyde. Well, you get Willie Gay right. You get Sneed right. You get Dana right. But it's just like, I mean, you can have these levels of success, but the odds of you getting more players right is volume. I just, he does such a good job finding talent in all levels of the draft. I don't know that I really want to be burning picks trading up this year. So I, I hear you. And look, you give any general manager, especially Brett Veach, more picks to work with. Naturally, you're yeah, more, more likely bites of the apple. Yeah, you're, you're more likely to have some hits. I, I, I think one, there's an argument like, okay, well, by that logic, do you just do you, if you can, do you trade out and just get more picks? The, the only thing I'll say in the one example we have in the first round of them trading up, they nailed it. It was a guy that they thought, wow, I can't believe he's here. we got to have him. Yeah. It was Trent McDuffie. So part the of only other like, time they traded it, up in the first round recently was Patrick Mahomes. Right, right. And, which was also it, correct. Right, and he, you know, we can get him. He wasn't the GM, but whatever. So, no. like, it, he's in the it, room. Right. So, if you're telling me, though, and we're sitting here on a Thursday night, we're at the landing on April 25th with everybody hanging out, and Brett Veach is pick 25, and they trade up to 25, I'll be honest, I have a ton of confidence in that pick because to me, when they, they have shown, when they trade up, it's someone they, they think it's like, can't miss. Like, and it better be if you're trading up. So you're so, like, well, if they do, like, I don't want them to trade up, but if they do, you trust they, them? I do. I think they've earned yeah. that a little bit. Um, personally, going into the draft, we, we've talked all the positional stuff, but knowing that they got an extra third round pick for 2025 with Snead, I know it's not this year's pick. But one, they could use that pick still to help them move up this year. But does that give them some more thought process and how aggressive they have to be? Look, you don't trade up just to trade up. It's got to be somebody that you think is uh, a can't miss type prospect, and you're like, wow, we thought he was going to be drafted at twenty and he or nineteen or whatever, and he's still on the board. Oh, we can't, we can't, we we never even thought he he he's our top player on the board, and he's still on the board. And we're not waiting for more picks. We didn't even think he'd be here. Let's go trade for him. It, I, look, they're not trading up from 32, if they trade up at all, to 20. That, that's way too challenging to do. That's giving up way too much. 32 to 27, 25, that's to me the limit. I think that they would actually move up from 32. If they were picking 27th, then yeah, I think they could get to 20. I don't think you're going from 32 up to 20. That's 12 spots. No, it's a but massive trade up. That's the, that's the whole point. He's on a heater. Mm-hmm. Like, why, you know, we were talking about this earlier, like when it comes to baseball, you said, like, why screw with it if it's working? Like, for the most part, it's not that they've never traded up. Again, you mentioned McDuffie. So for the time that they did it, it worked. And they've moved up another round, second, third, fourth, whatever. Like, they've moved up another round. They moved up in the second multiple times. Say like Sky Moore, McCool Hartman, then I go great. Would they have been better with two picks and another guy in the sixth? I don't know. I kind of feel like, yeah. That's not a knock on Brett Veach. He's done a tremendous job. It's just saying, I want him to have as many cracks at this as humanly possible. At his current hit rate, which is at worst could be described at I don't know, he's fighting a starter or everyday weekly player, six out of every 10 players he takes in the NFL draft, maybe more at the rate he's hitting right now. Why the hell wouldn't I want that man to have as many chances to take as many players as humanly possible rather than taking just one at 32? Wouldn't I rather just take one at 37 and then 79? Yeah, probably. I probably would be more in that camp. But the trade up is what gets me. I want them to use all their picks this year. The cost of the the cost of the level of drafting they have been doing gets more and more cost prohibitive by year. Because not only is he getting all these lower picks right, which he was for years, now he's starting to get the higher picks right as well, which makes him just even more expensive or at more premium positions. You get wide receiver or defensive end right. It's just more expensive than getting center right or linebacker or, you know, fourth defensive lineman, which all of those were right. But it's just getting more and more costly. Because here's what they have. They have round one, pick 32. Then obviously round two, pick 64. Round three, pick 95. Then they've got one fourth round pick, two fifths, no sixth, and a seventh. We were talking about this with Bank the other day that because of being able to start talking to undrafted free agents and things like that, that round they may not that round seven pick they might even try to use that to to get up just a couple picks higher in you know even the fifth round or whatever it may be right they, they try to get out of round seven uh, to to use that for a future year or whatever yep. it may be like so there's a good chance they that they actually get, have yeah. one less pick than what they even have like if they don't trade back if they don't trade back 
they might actually only end up with one, two, three, four, five, six picks this particular year. Which, you know, that I'd like him to have. I mean, I, you, can't, you can't have 10 picks every year. But in the years, again, in the years in which he's had success, and he's had success every year. I'm not trying to pretend like there's some, like, total. Uh, the first year is usually the ones we point to where you're like, well, you could have done a little better in that Breland Speaks year. He didn't really find a, he didn't find a single starter in his first year as a GM. That's not uncommon. And in his second year, I would say it was a mixed result. Like, he got good play out of Allegretti. He got good play out of Fenton or Colin Saunders or Juan Thornhair or McColl. But, again, no stars. Since that moment, since 2020, when he still used a first-round pick on a running back that wasn't that good, but he found Snead in the fourth, Dan in the fifth, Gay in the second, and then just went on from there, I just think he's kind of, I think he's found it. Whatever their scouting process is, as it relates to the talent that they need on the team, they have found it. And that's it. the key for us to keep talking dynasty and windows being opened or closed mm-hmm. and all that. It's it's not necessarily just the first round picks. It's really rounds three and four, two, three, four. Yeah, that, so, that's where you're you're extending out the dynasty even more than just the obvious, which is you need star players. And Trent McDuffie, you hit on that. He's a star player. Yeah, like 2021. Let's go non-premium rounds. So after the third do you think these guys made a factor in the Chiefs winning Super Bowl? Noah Gray did a little, right? Trey Smith, Isaiah Pacheco, Jalen Watson, Joshua Williams, Shamari Connor. Those are the guys who have had the biggest impact. That's just rounds four through seven. Notice that that is a pretty good amount of talent that plays for you in And matters. Pacheco might have been one of the four most important players for much of the season on this team, maybe three, based off of where the yeah. offense was for a majority of the season. I mean, I could argue uh, Trey Smith is, I mean, the top 10 or 15. I mean, he's part of a great offensive line. Legereus Sneed the year before, you know, like, I mean, he was one of the five best players on that team. Like, you can, I mean, you start going with the rounds lower. It is not hard to find all the talent on the squad. I think it's when you, where you really separate yourselves from, like as you like as you were saying, gold. You find those gems. You you separate not only what you do in free agency, but also and also how good the players are that you currently have. But in terms of building the depth, where if something happens, you have guys that can step in, guys that can develop, getting to the you know hitting home runs on the four, five, six, seven round guys are the things that keep you around in terms of being a contender for a, a whole lot longer. I'm team trade down. I mean, if I'm not against it, I, you know, I'm, I'm definitely not against it, especially if you see that uh, any, whoever the, okay, we don't know what the names are for them, but whatever the, the, their names we think are like, okay, they might be interested in if those guys slip off. Like this year, is it easier to trade out this year than it was last year? Maybe so. We'll see. You know, it takes another Teams team. don't want to trade with the Chiefs. I think they actually, especially don't want them to trade up anyways. It, it's harder it's anyway. weird because like you want as many quarter quarterbacks to go off the board before you for obvious reasons. But at the same time, let's say a Bo Nix isn't taken yet, and he slides, and he slides, and it's pick 32, and Bo Nix... His over-under in Vegas, I think, right now is 32 and a half. So, so there you go. Like They literally if, are if, like, is he a first-rounder? Is he that's not? where, to me, you may be... Does a team that's picking high in the second round, they didn't draft a quarterback, you know, uh, sure. they went back in because they want the fifth-year option opportunity. Uh, and, and is that an opportunity for a team to say, all right, we're trading in to go get, go get our guys still? Uh, that kind of stuff could be beneficial to Kansas City if, in fact, uh, they think they can move back and get a guy, either the same guy or someone with comparable value, plus pick up, let's just call it another third or fourth round pick. Especially if that run, like Bink is talking about, where offensive line and wide receiver just are flying off the board, why not just... If you Play back and get the second set. Don't draft Kingsley Sua Mataia at 32 if you think you can get him at 45. You've mastered that name now, man. I'll give you credit for that. You've mastered the name. We've said it enough. We've, we've talked about it. It took this. me so long to get Felix and Yudika Uzama. <laughs> I don't... Mataia. Look, is that how it is? Mataia? We'll pick that yes. up quick. If he gets drafted, pick it up. By training Sua camp, Mataia. good to go. Sua Mataia. We already got it. Drafted. Sua Mataia. I guess we could We're just ready. call him Kingsley as well. We're ready. <laughs> King. That's what I'm with. King. King did really they nice today. King Sua Mataia. Although King when they got tackle. fun names to say, you kind of do it. Like, I don't like saying, you know, NUD. I like saying Felix and Yudika Yuzama. Mm-hmm. I like the whole thing. Sua Mataia. It's way more fun to say <laughs> than Cody Tapp. That has no vibe. Well, that's where Bancroft comes into play. Bancroft's a different vibe. Much <laughs> older vibe. Feels like we should be in smoking jackets. But, you know, hmm. other than that. That's true. People are still giving their answer for the video game, by the way. Someone says, Madden 17. I played a total of 150 hours. It, it is funny to look at to look at the game like for instance the 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 call of duty game that came out not this recent one but in 2020 2020 2022 
You'll say. I looked the other day because I was playing it and it said my stats are like I've played for four days or something like that. A total of four days. Four days of your life. It's kind of depressing. Like really? Four days of your life. But yeah, I mean, it, yeah, we've all. I think about life like that sometimes. It's not healthy. You shouldn't think well, about it's it. It's the same thing. Even on your phone, you know, the screen time thing at the end of the week. It'll That's be like, very concerning. I don't like, like getting oh, those your updates. Screen, your average screen time is down, you know, one hour this week or whatever. But you find out how many hours you your phone was down there for you were looking at your phone. You're like, oh, oh, oh. I don't look at it. Oh, oh you, I used you to it do it. I, nah, I turned it off. I can't. The screen time update or whatever? It'd just be anything. Like, like, I wouldn't see. want to know how daily many. average nine hours and 23 minutes. Nine hours? Plus yeah. the time. Why do you find that? Screen time. <laughs> well, no, and, and that's oh just God. your phone. And that's just your phone gold. That's not that's your laptop. Bad. That's not oh, the TV. Not uh, sometimes gold has both of the same time. So M- most you same fair, screen time. Yeah. In fairness, so like most use X, which is Twitter, uh, five hours, 29 minutes. You can guess what the second most popular app is. <laughs> sports betting app. Mm. Oh, sports betting app? Yeah. <laughs> the way that you said it. I wonder. Uh, what did you think it was? <laughs> the way that you said Holy it, cow, you were opening up the range, be, the range of the realm of possibilities. Do you, do you, uh, Drew, is Drew, pull, like, up, pull up the number of hours you're on your phone. Because I thought I was on my phone a lot. Like, I've been telling myself, I got to get off my you're, phone. You're, you're, I'm you're on, on less my, than the both of us, I think. I'm on my phone. I, I yeah. feel what like I'm on my phone way too much. Yeah. People are. Te- by the way, the, the, the website Drew was thinking in the text that someone sent in, I don't think they have an app. I think it's just Safari, okay? I don't, th- I don't think that's <laughs> I an agree. app, okay? I, <laughs> I, don't, agree. I don't think they have an app. Safari was <laughs> the most common app. It's, not, uh, it's not. Safari is the seventh <laughs> most popular on mine. I'll bet they have an app. Um, uh, I don't know, man. I, why don't you search for me? Let me know. <laughs> search the that app is store. Hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. How much are you on yours for, Drew? Uh, so it's weird. So this this week, I'm averaging four hours and eight minutes a day on my phone. Yeah. But that's, again, just this Majority week. of mine was was a betting app is the problem. I that's think where mo- really scrolling through apps. Especially this, the last week or so with March Madness. Yeah, ad, I'm just ads. under four hours, and I'm like, man, I feel like I'm on my phone all yeah, it's not the good. time. Thinking through the notifications, I think mine tend to be like seven hours-ish. During the okay, week, like 10 to be seven hours around so yeah, that's where it's been. Daily, seven to eight hours daily average down 25 percent from last week, seven hours and 20. Which means you run it for oh, okay, yeah, yeah, but yeah, it seven, says nine hours this week, seven. Yeah, I don't know where the nine was. Yeah, seven hours and 21 minutes. That, that, that's the range I tend to be as well in the nine to eight or seven to seven to nine range. Still, then it, it you is go, very scary. Further down, it says how many times you pick up your phone. Are you kidding me? Like, where you like you turn yeah. it back on? What's your number? Oh, 111. Really? Oh, mine's way like half of that. This is why I don't it says it it's down thirty uh, percent. Usually turn it. Well, how about two hundred times Someone a day? Says there's a lot of people saying five, six hours. That seems to be the the sweet spot. Notif- what about what does it say on your notifications? How many notifications? Daily average two oh one down thirty four percent. One fifty three. Okay, so that's a little bit closer. Someone says doom scrolling is fun though. <laughs> My notifications are fifty three. Again, fifty three seems. Oh, must not get email notifications. I, I, That's a I huge chunk of I, I, I yeah. hate notifications. I do not get I notifications. I just delete them. I, I, I get them, them but I delete them. Yes. No, I, 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 I can't stand the the red bubble on, yeah, on the side of the I app. Get, like, I hey, you have I don't have a single one, but yeah. yeah. Red dot. Forget that. I just, I have them on there. I just get rid of them. That's all. Hmm. I checked That's interesting. I hadn't looked at this in a long time. It's it, it, the, the most depressing one, though, is the email. Like, if I turn notifications on for my email, I would have 13,000 or something in my inbox. 13,000. Drew, I just cleaned out my personal email, and I got it down to seven emails, and I have my work one at 61. What I are you doing with 13,000 I emails? have not, at least to my knowledge. You I got to burn it to the ground. You just got to I have not, break the phone in half. I have, not, day. I have not cleaned out my email. I don't remember the last time I did it. It's been at least five years, probably. Man. Looks like a lot of people are at five hours. Four to five hours. Four to five. So you're a little heavier than average. I would, I would love heavier. to be at four to five hours a day on my phone. I think my wife would be too. <laughs> yeah, if you combine the work email, like all the folders, which include like st- junk, it's an insane number. Now they're not yes. on red. I make sure it's not on red, but it's between my personal email, my work email, everything. It ninety four thousand. Oh my emails? goodness! Notifications or emails? E- emails. emails. So that yeah, says nine four zero seven three. If Gold had I have notifications 68. on, Cody. Yeah. If Gold had notifications but I don't on, have notifications th- on, that that number would be at the bottom of his phone, ninety four thousand. But it's that. But I don't, yeah, no, I correct. I would not have it on. Forget yeah. that. But like right now, I'm going through. I'm just. I just deleted eight, eight or nine emails that just came in. It's just all junk. Like, you know, this is you know, I can ninety four thousand emails. That is crazy. For whatever reason, I get an email from Travel Zoo. I've never used it. I don't even Travel Zoo. I'm a big whatever. unsubscriber. Well, that's just what subscribe I from one more. this morning. Felt good. 
Someone says you guys have to be on your phone more to see what's going on. Not really. You don't have to. I like to be up to date. You don't have to, yeah. But uh, that explains why I'm on X, like which is Twitter. But yeah, <clears throat> interesting. Eight hours is a lot, man. You should probably cut that back a little bit. This is a little bit like, oh, man, it turns out I spent $72,000 at Chipotle this year. Maybe I just down a little. Oh, that's gone down big time. I don't know. know. You guys think think it's crazy. I I barely go there anymore. Wow. Is it because they're they're Mm. cutting you on the meat a little too low? No. Where are you even going? Because I know you're not cooking in replacement. <laughs> that. So what is taking up yeah, your said, food budget since you stopped going to Chipotle? Mul- I think multiple places to answer the question. Like I, but in general, the the three times a week, four times a week Chipotle, I haven't done that in over a year easily. Okay. Um, so it's just it's a done, mixed bag. Yeah, it's it's it, some of it is Chipotle's gotten more expensive. I think the other part. Uh, Overall, I think I got upset about the whole. I thought I won free burritos for a year, and they screwed me. They did screw you. Um, they sent you an email that said you had free burritos. Like for it's a, year. a real email, yeah. That yeah. that soured me. So yeah, I, I think I've just divvied it up across multiple places now. Okay. Mm. Someone says Cody you said he's dead. I didn't say mine was down twenty five percent this week. I said mine was. I thought. Yeah, yeah, I didn't. yeah that was you, Gold. Some says Gold's got to be on his phone to find the trash of the day for the show. That's right. You know, it's just it's I all it's all just looking for trash of the day. That's, that's exactly right. <laughs> for just me, a uh, constant search. For me, a majority of it is I we I go like go to bed, but you're on your phone and you're just scrolling. And, and, and at, at random, you look up at, at the time in the corner and you're like, "Holy cow! I've been on there for I've been on my phone for an hour and a half." Yeah, like scrolling Twitter or checking emails or watching a game, the end of a game on my phone. Yeah. 36,000 email notifications. Notifi- yeah, that's Red dots? <laughs> There's nothing you can do about that. It's over. You can't <clears> fix that. Delete the I account. Can't fix that. <laughs> delete the account. You're done. Again, I thought I was upset that I had let my email get out of control. And by out of control, it means I had like 300 in my personal inbox and like 800 in my work inbox. Yeah. And so I spent an hour and I got them down to in the 60s for my work email, and in the single digits for my personal. That was why I turned my notifications off for email because I hadn't checked it in a while, and I, <laughs> I just don't have it on because I don't want to see the number. Yeah, I'm not. I don't, I don't know how any of you guys. So 123,000 unread? Unread. I gave up years now, did ago. You yes. just leave, did you click the button that says keep, you know, Mark is unread, or did you just ignore that many emails? Because some people will purposely put a few back to unread so they, they check it again. Like, you can read an email and then click Mark is unread so that you it reminds you to yeah. go back. But 120, that's crazy. That must mean... We they, have they, no plan to talk about this today. Now we're really yeah. deep. Yeah. That, that might be like a separate email that they have, like a bunch of random stuff going to. Mm-hmm. Crazy. That's wild. You got to unsubscribe from some stuff, man. <laughs> that's, and I swear I have. That's what's, that's what's wild. I swear over the, there'll be a random day where I will. And I swear, you hit unsubscribe, and I feel like they come back three months later. Uh, sometimes, yeah. Like, I, hit unsubscribe unsubscribe again. Again. I was like, I hit unsubscribe. 172,000. Depends on what you do for a living, too. Some people get more emails. I mean, some people just flat out get way more emails. Take the junk part out of it for their job. They just get an insane amount of emails. And it's we get just, like two a day. Yeah, ours is not crazy for work. All right, coming up next, we'll get to what's trending. And I, I, I've tried. I've tried to prevent him from doing it. But Cody says he's going to do it next. Hey, it's Brady Singer. You're listening to Cody and Gold. Weekdays starting at 10 on 610 Sports Radio and the Odyssey app. Brought to you by Heartland Men's Health, the leader in men's sexual health. Thousands of men have been successfully treated for low T, ED, and more. All with discretion and compassion. Make your appointment at heartlandmenshealth.com. Baseball season's here, and it's time to spring into action to get into shape and feel great. Hey, it's Bob Fesco inviting you to discover Johnson Fitness and Wellness Stores. Their expert staff will find the best home fitness equipment for your unique fitness goals, space, and budget. Buy top-rated treadmills, elliptical, strength equipment, rowers, exercise bikes, and mention 610 Sports Radio to get a free hit a massager with the purchase of any massage chair or matrix equipment. Hit a home run with in-home workouts and find the nearest location at johnsonfitness.com. Twin Peaks is the best in the game. Here, your favorite drafts are poured at a frosty 29 degrees, and rare barrel-aged whiskeys are served just the way you want them. It's bigger game days and bolder fight nights. I mean, where else can you find a scratch kitchen that always comes in clutch? Every day, from lunch to late night. Only at Twin Peaks, the number one sports bar. Stick around after the sun sets. Twin Peaks is open really late. Wind down with bourbon and late night fights. At Shane Company, we believe everyone deserves a personal jeweler, a friend to guide you, to help you find jewelry that feels like it was made just for you. 
or a gift that will spark joy for that special someone. Shane Company's jewelry is crafted with the greatest care and held to the highest quality standards so it will last a lifetime. We're passionate about bringing you the most beautiful gemstones, exquisite diamonds, rubies, and sapphires in every color of the rainbow so you will always shine your brightest. Our jewelry is designed for you. With so many styles and endless ways to customize your piece, you can create a necklace that's meaningful to you, an engagement ring to tell your love story, or a stack of bracelets to let your personality shine. Discover a more personal jewelry experience and modern heirlooms as unique as you are. We're all made to shine. Shane Company. Fine jewelry since 1929. Congratulations to the Kansas City Chiefs. Another year, another Super Bowl. Did you know that the Chiefs won the Super Bowl in their first year of their partnership with Window World? And here we are, five years in. The Chiefs are a dynasty, and they're still going strong with Window World as the official window of the Kansas City Chiefs. Window World windows are one of two windows with a good housekeeping seal of approval. Ranked number one in number of windows sold in the country by Qualified Remodeler Magazine. In just over 20 years of business, they have improved the look and thermal efficiency of over 54,000 customers right here in Kansas City. So be sure to call this number, 816-799-0820. Learn more about the double-strength glass that gives a strength that's not commonly used in replacement windows. Learn more about their products that are not only durable, but offer security, beauty, and energy efficiency. Give my friends at Window World a call. That's 816-799-0820, 816-799-0820 to learn more. Or also go on the website, windowworld.com. Gas, groceries, utilities, you name it. The price of everything is going up. And if you're stuck in a bad timeshare with rising maintenance fees, the financial burden can be crushing. It is time to get your finances in order and get the real facts about that timeshare that you are stuck in and your options to get rid of it. Chuck McDowell, founder of Wesley Financial Group, has been helping families out of horrible timeshares for over 10 years and has put together a complete timeshare exit information kit that he will send you absolutely free. To date, over 30,000 families have trusted Wesley Financial Group to help them out of financial hardship by getting them out of bad timeshares. Get the facts about how the timeshare industry works and your options for cancellation. Simply call Wesley now for your free timeshare exit kit and see how you can become timeshare free. Call 800-462-3333. That's 800-462-3333. Once again, 800-462-3333. Is switching your wireless service to Total by Verizon easy? Totalmente. And you get unlimited 5G data? $25 a line for four lines on the unlimited plan at an amazing price with no contracts should you switch to total by verizon definitely uh, i mean Totalmente. find a store or switch suavemente at totalbyverizon.com monthly rate when you activate without a pay plus taxes and fees discount begins the month after you enroll additional terms apply see website for data management practices you're in hot water, mister. What'd I do? I told you months ago our utility bills were getting higher because of that old outdated tank water heater. Maybe it's time we finally switch to a Navian tankless. Learn about Navian's high-efficiency tankless water heaters, endless hot water, all while helping you save on your energy costs. Hey, look at this. Our utility bill is lower since we got the Navian tankless water heater. Who's in hot water now? We are, all the time. Learn more at tanklessmadesimple.com. A lot can happen between falling in love with a house online and owning it. Between imagining living there and breathing in your new home for the first time. Having an advocate who can help you navigate the complex world of financing, inspections, negotiating, analyzing the market, and talking through any anxieties that may pop up, that can make all the difference. That's what the expertise of a Realtor can do for you. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors and bound by a code of ethics. Because that's who we are. Sponsored by Robert Half. Robert Half Research indicates 9 out of 10 hiring managers are having difficulty hiring. Robert Half is here to help. Our recruiting professionals use proprietary AI to connect businesses with highly skilled talent. At Robert Half, we know talent. Visit roberthalf.com today. What's trending? All right, let's check in on the hot topics. Trending, trending, trending. Number one on what's trending the Royals in action again tonight. They're going to try to make this a six-game winning streak. First pitch is at 640 right here 
on 610 Sports Radio against the Houston Astros. Seth Lugo gets the nod for the Royals. His .71 it's pretty good. ERA. He's going to be going up against an Astros pitcher making his big league debut. And we have settled in on Arigetti. That's what we're going with. I, we're pretty sure that's the name of the So individual. Jake Eisenberger pronounced it on the radio tonight. Uh, yeah. He'll... His call was great last night, too, by the way. Can I play that? Sure. Salvador Perez's walk-off. This was, I think this was Eisenberg's call. Suero delivers. Salvi rips it. Left center field. Down into the gap. That's a base hit. Hampson takes off for third. He rounds the bag. The Astros don't even bother to pick it up. Hampson scores standing. The Royals win the game. El Capitan comes through in the clutch. Great call. Great call. I just want that in October. Yeah, of course. Give me that call in October. El Capitan. Then we're really talking. Next up on Watch Training, Scott Drew Rule reportedly take a meeting with Kentucky. Arkansas and John Calipari have made it official, which means a Kentucky job is officially open. Scott Drew scheduled to make $5 million at Baylor this year. Has spent 20 of the 21 years he's been a coach at Baylor. Will he actually take the job is next. Because if he doesn't, then I think the search is really wide open. Four or five, six different names might be in play. Next up on what's trending, we kind of knew this was going to happen. It's now official. The Eagles going to play in Brazil to open up that Friday of the NFL season. They're going to play the Packers in Sao Paulo, Brazil, the day after the Chiefs host somebody at Arrowhead Stadium. Texans seem to be the favorite pick and make a lot of sense. Can you bet on that offshore? Yeah. Actually, Ooh. you can, yeah. In fact, I think even DraftKings maybe or something had it at one point. So. Oh, okay. And the Texans are the favorites for that. Makes sense. Uh, I think still there's an outside chance Cincinnati uh, based off of uh, like the return Texans of Burrow from the injury. And Mahomes, Stroud have never played each other, but do they think that that matchup is going to be there later as well? The same thing we sure. said it's the same thing we said about Cincinnati's chances of playing on the opener last year. We're like, oh, they might save that game. I wonder if they'll save the Chiefs in Texans game. They've also had Burrow Mahomes a number of times, so getting it for round one versus saving it for week 10 doesn't necessarily make sense. Lastly, on what training, former Ravens star Terrell Suggs has been arrested in Arizona on assault charges. That, according to TMZ, he reportedly threatened a fellow customer at Starbucks hmm. in line with a brandished a weapon, according to the reports. Okay. Over a coffee. Well, we don't know, I guess, the argument. Could have hot chocolate like you. Or yeah, a little hot chocolate, bowl. a little medicine bowl, a little green tea. I know those ones yeah, you green get. Tea. I, like, I, like a, I like a black tea. Yeah. Unsweetened black tea is a common drink for me. Yeah, the, uh, the medicine ball is clutch when you got, like, a cold or something. Yeah. Starbucks. That's the other thing. That's what's trending, by the way. But that's the other thing. And someone reminded me on Twitter because we were talking earlier today about, obviously, the Royals. There's a lot of excitement right now. I don't know. I was like, how can you not be excited? And I got a lot of responses on Twitter. I shouldn't say a lot. That's not, that's a It's a like few people. people. Okay. Most people. But other people mo- in the tech side have been mo- sending mo- it in for a year. Most so. people are, are are excited, I think. But a few responses are, how can I be excited if I can't even watch the team? You can watch. You said to pay money. Uh, but someone pointed out, uh, yeah, $6 for your coffee, but you the nineteen ninety nine a month to watch the Royals, you know? Look, you I, gotta, people are addicted to the coffee, man. We all have our thing. People, yeah. are, people won't give up that $6 coffee. Like someone said, look, but if I pay for Netflix, I get all the different shows and all the different movies. And I would say, if you're into the Royals and want to watch them a lot this summer, you'd be watching them just as much as you would that streaming service. So... I know it's a singular thing versus oh any show or any movie. To, it, to me, it's usually about choices. One, I think you can share with someone that's ten bucks a month. If you, if like I know, if you first, if you want the Royals, free right here, six ten Sports Radio, the Odyssey app. It's free in market, whatever. But you know, like if you want the visual version of it, you can split it with one person. It's ten bucks a month. I mean, I, I don't know, ten bucks a month. Look, I, w- I more than anything, I wish the app was more reliable. Yeah, that, I wish that's the Valley's the, that app part. Just, I it should be. Uh, somewhat affordable and reliable i think it lands in the somewhat affordable camp it's not that far off especially when you consider splitting it reliability is a bit yeah, of the issue. app sucks i mean that that i'm not going to argue with whatsoever yeah, i think what? if you're going to ask people to pay 19.99 a month yeah your app should be stable and there's also some other people if you have an older samsung tv some people have had issues letting the having the app update it won't like it won't work no. so like that kind of stuff, like support your app now i know the i think i think bally they're going through court right now and eventually maybe amazon becomes an option yeah, it could be that's anywhere. next year and yeah look I, I would love to go back to 2005 where it was basically just free on your cable provider that's just not the world we're in in, in television rights for baseball Yep. And we, the blackout restriction stuff, we're all on the same page. That's they something should that should that. change. But the current system, the idea, though, that, well, I can't watch the Royals. That's just not true. Like, the app, anybody can da- anybody in, in, in the world can download the Bally Sports app and pay 19 
we may not like it, but the notion of like, yeah. there's no way for me to watch the game is just not true. Yeah. And if you're out of market, MLB TV was always a choice. It's just costs. And I'll be honest. I don't love it for everything either, but that's the way it's going. Yeah, someone points out too. Every single sport is going this direction except for the NFL. It is the only accessible sport on network television consistently. And even they are putting games on Peacock and Prime and a million other services. Someone brings up a great point too. If you don't want to pay the yearly thing, you do the month. And hey, if you're just, hey, prove to me that you're going to be competitive. Yeah. If it's June and the team's not what we, we hope it is. This month, and if they then, stink, you can just move you, on. You can delete the app. Like, or unsubscribe from the app. I mean, that, it's that simple. Someone says, that's why Suggs got in the fight. They were arguing what we're doing about the Valley app. Arguing with people so, about Suggs, the app. Suggs, you can download the app. Other person, but I don't want to pay. Suggs, draws weapon. Why do you make this so difficult? Stop buying coffee. Download the Valley Sports app. No. I don't know. It'll be an interesting interaction between the two of them. That's for sure. All right, so look, I, I understand people have asked this show probably more than others because we have a good relationship with Vinny Pasquantino. He is hitting third today, just like he's hit all year for the Royals. And he's hey, struggling. what's going on with Vinny? Struggling. No doubt he's struggling. I had offered earlier in the show to do a live rendition of Pasquantino to break him out of the fuck. Yeah. You didn't seem interested. I've tried, guys. 80% of the text I, line did not seem I, interested, I, but Vern is, and he's our Royals insider, Yeah. which means he gets final say. I have not sung this song since I recorded it two years ago, which can't be great for me. Normally, in those cases, I try to warm up a little bit. Another thing I haven't done in this scenario. So I got to be honest, I'm a little bit nervous. This rendition is going to be a whole lot worse than the recorded one. But that's the risk you get with live. I still I'll just say this before you start. We've tried to stop you. I think the Royals are on a five game winning streak. Mm hmm. Team's doing well. They just need he's, one player. He's struggling right now. No yeah. secret. I think it's bad vibes to mess with the team. You're, you know, you're conflating some baseball God stuff while the team as a whole is doing well. He's struggling. I think he'll figure it out here at some point. You're trying to correct his struggles with this song. And I'm just telling you, be prepared for the backlash, man. Be prepared. Because Will if you... this spins the Royals as a team so in an opposite Roy direction. If Vinny plays great moving forward from this, but the team doesn't play as well. You're saying I have to bear I'll, some yes. of that blame? I'll give you like a three to four day window here where it's your responsibility. If they struggle next week, it's That's not on you. Yeah. But if starting tonight, starting tonight, starting if all tonight of a sudden we see a performance that we haven't seen all oh, year man. from this team, it's your fault. Yeah. I want Vinny to get going. I think he will on his own. I think this is a couple weeks too early, if you want to know the truth. I think we need to let this play out a couple more weeks. I tried to stop you. But you didn't. You didn't stop me. Unsuccessfully. He's going to be end. fine. I don't can think I, he needs your singing. Can I listen to just the first 10 seconds uh, of this I, one time? So I could just hear it in my head one time before I, for the first time ever on this show, do a live rendition of a song. I'm not a good enough singer to do live vocals. I have to, you know... The, the versions of the songs you don't like take me a while. <laughs> Give me just a, let me hear the first 10 seconds and then I promise I'll do it. Turn his computer off, man. Do it while we still can. Just turn okay. the computer off. Okay. Just, just okay. shut the computer down while we still can. All right. I'll be honest. I <sighs> The whole world thing I get, but I, I'm actually <laughs> oh, I'm on the burn side of things. Oh, 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 all right. Goodness. I haven't heard the whole thing. Uh, I tried, guys. I tried. I haven't heard the whole thing. Okay. This is this is dangerous, dangerous territory. <sighs> I think you're messing with the winning streak. The other part about this is I don't know how many of the lyrics I remember. All right. All right, here we go. Uh, <sighs> One live rendition of Pasquantino. I'm turning my mic off. Oh, hold on, let me, for the people who might be watching this on the video stream, I guess I'll just put it on me so that, well, you know what, actually, Gold's reaction is probably better for everybody. <sighs> okay. Nervous, you know? Butterflies a little bit. Get a call up in my direction. Thankful for that bat, it's such a blessing, yeah. Turn every situation into heaven, yeah. Oh. Italian breakfast you always slay. Got me dreaming of wins all day. Make me want to savor every moment slowly, slowly. You hit the baseball hard, know how to pour it on. Need Vinny on the roster, just put him on. They let me whisper in your ear the only words I want to hear. No need to take it so you can play along. This is usually when like a play-by-play -play thing happens. Oh, can you God. give me something here? I can't believe this is happening. Hold on, just give it a second. I thought we were done with this. 
Again, this is where like a it says and gone. Uh, I think it's Jake Eisenberg actually saying it. Okay, yeah, minor league would have been the minor league call. Pasquantino, I want it now. It's time for Pasquantino. What else can he do? He's the great Balbino. It's a jackpot at the casino. Pasquantino, think of the kids, all the little ninos. It's like a shot of cappuccino. Give us what we want. It's Pasquantino. Quiero beber la tubat, quiero sa tubat, boy. Que las enseñas a tu ritmo. To be Calio su favorita. Dejo me ve Tokyo. Muchos home runes. Hasta provican mis gritos. Y olvidaré tu nombre. Pasquantino. I want it now. It's time for Pasquantino. What else can he do? He's the great Balbino. It's a jackpot at the casino. Pasquantino. Think of the kids, all the little ninos. It's like a shot of cappuccino. Give us what we want. It's Pasquantino. Pasquantino. That's it. There's a, I don't know if that's in the right way, but that's how it Someone ends. says your Spanish is better than the English. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all in particular. Well done. The Spanish is Drew always better. Drew hadn't heard it before, I don't I think. I hadn't heard it before. That is, uh, Very that good. is that I got is a little better. off rhythm there for a minute and had to try to recover. Difficult. I still, I uh, just, it's okay. A little offbeat. It's a very catchy song. Despacito is also it was a very popular song, obviously. For, for uh, a reason. To say the least, it's, a great, it's very catchy. I, I just think... It's not the song because I think it's one of your better songs, if not the best. I just think it's it's something you shouldn't be doing this early you in the think season. It's too early. I think That's it's fair. too early. I I think the team is playing well. I don't like mixing the team success, trying to 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 push one player's success. You know, I think he's going to figure it out anyway on its own here pretty soon. This to me is something at the end of the month I would have been more on board with. If they if they <laughs> perform badly tonight, but Vinny goes four for four. <clears throat> mm-hmm. 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 Nope. Not good. Okay, well. I will say it, it would be. That's what it not, is. If they lose tonight, obviously that's not what we want. But if Vinny does go four for four, including a home run, that, <laughs> that's, that's pretty, pretty, nice. pretty incredible. Woo. Well, that happens, and then we will incredible. be feeling great tomorrow. Yes. I, look, they're they're going up against the pitcher making his debut. I mean, if there was an opportunity for the bats to get after a pitcher early. <laughs> First at tonight, bat, Homer. That's not going to be my bet for the on-deck show, but you know. Man, oh, hmm. man. So if, we, if we lose four or five in a row after this, exactly. That's Someone said, was Vinny listening? No idea. Probably not. He's probably doing stuff. I'm guessing he's got more important things to do. I than listen to this show on a random Wednesday. They play at 640. Uh, are you driving in the ballpark yet? Uh, Clubhouse opens at 3. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he's probably, probably. There. Vern yeah. brings up a great point, though. I think while Vinny steps up to the plate for batting practice, while he's taking BP, they need to take – well, forget it's what, played in the stadium for, for, before. They, they, they they play it. It has. I think they should play it j- j- just to maybe get him going a little bit, get the juices flowing a little bit more. <laughs> Either that or he's just going to start hitting I'm ground balls during BP because he's laughing. Yeah. I hadn't sung that song in two years. <laughs> so, eh, like, an old, like an old hat, you know? See, someone says it could go the other way. We've never done a live version on this show before. It was a risk. It's a real risk. I thought it was... Not for, bad for yeah, live. I thought, yeah, Not I bad. It was fine. Some some slip ups and some offbeat stuff, but eh, it's done worse. So it says, started don't expect, rough. Someone says, "Don't expect any winning anymore. Don't mess with the baseball gods." That's what I say. I don't like doing wow, it. Wow! Don't, don't mess with the baseball. I think it's dangerous gosh. territory, man. Well, Things are going well right now. I will say, in, in your defense, there, really there's nothing, watching them play. There's nothing in everything. the song that says the Royals are going to do this, like the team's going to do this. Like it's all about Vinny, so it's not a mm. necessarily a Isolated. Royals curse. Hmm. We'll see. Time will tell. You know, history will decide itself. It's starting tonight. Which song are you looking for now? Are you looking for a different looking song? F- looking for your uh, Oystermen r- ripoff. <laughs> you think we're going to get stuck with one more win? That's what I'm worried about. I'm worried uh, this could, could lead to that. Drew, we one time did a song and, and on this show. that song. What was that called? I think that was the one this, where I went and I found the song. This is where yeah. this performance today better not lead us down the path of needing a song like this. You don't want to do this again? No. I got to go further ahead. Do I need to collect stuff, Ken? Because you're dead without a win. Mm-mm, Just mm-mm. one win. No, we don't need these anymore. How long ago was we that? Don't, we don't need these anymore. It's a new, it's a new era of Royals baseball. We, yeah, don't need, we don't need that. You playing that might have actually just, just cur- that That might have been. No, I was curse. just gold I'll be honest. That was, that was earlier. I know, but I, it, uh, it popped up again. 
Okay. If they lose be tonight, tonight. And plays great, I, then we can blame I, I the game one game very game very close. I think it is a. I think Golden's right. It's a three to five game sample in which we decide if the live version. I, was I might go out to the K tonight just to just to make sure this doesn't go down poorly for our show. <laughs> you're gonna, just to, I, you're gonna go support. I, I'm gonna go make sure we All know right. that this this is not something that was intended to disrupt the winning streak. Doesn't okay? represent that's the right. collection. That's of right. Us. Because this I was an I don't want, thing. I don't want to go down on the clubhouse after the game and have to explain why things went poorly to anybody else whatsoever. I'll tell you this. I'll promise you this. If I go to the game tonight and Vinny does go four for four, just for you, just for you, I will ask him if he was aware of you redoing that it's back Pasquantino, out? his song, and if he, if he happened to catch that, if that's why he got out of the Remember, song. Remember, originally... To be a good big leaguer, because Vinny's a pro. Someone says, Gold, it's your fault. You have final say. I do not have final. This is a team show. I don't have final say. <laughs> I, will say yeah, I got overruled is what happened. <laughs> you think Gold just gets, like, voting majority? <laughs> no, I, got o- I got overruled because Drew was on board with Vern. <laughs> I got outnumbered if it was the opposite. Vote lost. There's no final say. This is a, it's a team show. This is a team effort here. No final show. Could you um, imagine if we just, like, vote. sold voting majority in the show? <laughs> just came about in different ways? What were you yeah. saying, Drew? I was going to say, in all technicality, you both have computers where if Gold didn't want to play it, it wouldn't matter because you could have easily pulled that up. But you are the person who could actually you, stop it. I know. That, I, I'm, I'm the I would have had to unplug it. Could I'm, you imagine? I would have got to <laughs> crawling across the table to try to rip the computer <laughs> That's out. That's how badly you did not want. Yeah, I, I yeah. guess ultimately I, I, I could have uh, muted the mic. I could have. You could have shut it down. But, I, I, I again, I was with Vern. Okay. No, I, I, I look. The, the Royals... Right now, I, I still think the momentum, the, the confidence is a real thing, and they have all kinds of confidence, especially after a win last night. And you got to feel good. Seth Lugo, I know, as Vern was saying, look, eventually starting pitching is going to balance out. You're not going to be as dominant. But Seth Lugo's been really, really promising. This is a guy that we talked to JJ on opening day, and there was a real chance he was going to be the opening day starter. Mm-hmm. And his first two outings have looked like, oh, I mean, <laughs> he's been great. Now, look, he had, he had some hits in the first one, but or the second one. Mm-hmm got around a lot of that i'm excited about every single starter right now is like another test of how long can they keep this going they've had two in my opinion mediocre starts that would be the alec marsh one and the cole reagan's one from last night in both of those starts they were out of the fifth inning having only allowed in one case they needed two outs for marsh but both teams were out of the fifth inning having only allowed three runs in a bad start dude you'll take that every time i said every bad start for the royals was five innings pitched with 10 hits allowed and only three earned runs then great. That's what makes it exciting about Lugo. And he's going up against a rookie. I actually think some runs might get scored tonight. I think this might be one of those games you need to win 7-6 or something or 8-5 instead of some of these lower scoring games. Because every jump Royals on game the... is not going to be 3-2, to which seems to be the case here in the early going. Also, just like there's no film, and so there's always the chance that in the debut, the young, the young kid for the Astros pitch is great. But also... It almost feels like get on him early because he'll, he'll build some confidence as he gets the nerves out of the first inning or two and his first big league start. First inning seems like the, the great the opportunity to get right on the on the kid making his debut where naturally there's going to be some nerves. Some big that's their I think that's a top five prospect. For Is them, he Eric their top Eddie. prospect? He's or? one of he's okay. one of their top three to five prospects. I can't remember if he's their number one. Not like the how you know holiday kid for number one overall prospect Orioles. in baseball. Yeah, a mm-hmm. little bit different vibe. You see how young he looks in those clips? He's 20. Like, oh, my He just God. turned 20. He can't even go to the bar the kid with his tonight teammates is, after his debut. He's Matt Holliday's The son. kid tonight's 24, so he's still young, but he's not 20. Like, yeah, he was a six-round pick out of Louisiana. Uh, this is arguably the top pitching prospect in the Houston system, according yeah. to Baseball America. Top five, yeah, top five talent. Well, they, just system, always have, they just always have talent, don't they, man? They just keep churning out player after player after player is Houston. Hey, if you can keep your Don... Uh, Alvarez in check. That's the. I would. I mean, honest to God, key, he right? might get like in a two game series where I don't have to play him that much. He might get the Barry Bonds treatment. I might just mm-hmm. put his ass on base every time. Is he more or less damaged to he's you? Got four home runs on the season. If you already. just put him on first, feels like he's less damaged to you, Gold. If you just put him on first, depending on how the game's going. Like later in the game, maybe you're not gonna do it in the first inning, but yeah, later in the game, <laughs> just doing the, like, yeah. he's not getting that treatment. Get or, point, you know, sure. Maybe later, not, he's not getting that treatment. Uh, but if he has another four for four start and there's a big at bat in the ninth inning, yeah, oh, man. maybe if maybe it was so. Like, if it if it were like first and second, two outs in the third inning, and I got two outs and Alvarez is up, I might be like, let's just load this up. I'm gonna try to get the guy behind him. I'm not, I'm not trying to get he's, this guy out. That's his crazy. last two games, including the Royals and then the Rangers game, he's got let's see, yeah, seven hits and ten at bats. And one home run and five RBI <laughs> in two games. I mean, 
pretty good player. Yeah. But also, that's something we can say about the Royals right now. Have you seen all the metrics on Bobby Wood Jr.? He is hitting the ball harder for as much power as any player in the entire sport. He's hitting like the player we're gushing about right now in Alvarez. That's how good Bobby Wood Jr. is doing. He just also happens to be playing some elite-level shortstop. Because that's the part about the game last night we didn't even talk about because it's not playoff baseball. Bobby Wood Jr. saved them from having to go to 11 innings. True. That diving yeah. stop prevented a run from scoring. They would have still had to get another run, hypothetically. Know, Salvador Perez would have been second base, but still, they would have had to do more than just get that Salvador Perez. Well, let's make it six in a row tonight. Tomorrow, we just have a two-hour show because there's some day game baseball going on. So only a two-hour show. We'll talk some more Royals. Also, uh, another scenario for the Chiefs and why a left tackle could make sense in one particular trade-up scenario for the Chiefs. So that's coming up tomorrow from 10 to noon. Up next, though, we hand things off to C. Don and Rob on the draft.